Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. Welcome, Welcome to Ron's, Ron's Gaming, Gaming Table. Table. I'm, I'm Ron. Ron. I'm Mel. And, and we're going to be starting, starting our epic, epic adventure, adventure campaign, campaign playthrough, live, blind, blind, all the tag words, words whatever, <laughs> all the, the buzz, buzz, the buzz, the, buzz, the extreme buzz words, words. Um, mind, mind blowing, blowing, whatever, whatever. Uh, adventure, adventure through role player adventures. adventures. Oh, Echo. We have Echo. Oh. One, One sec. sec. And I'm, I'm having technical, technical difficulties, difficulties like crazy, crazy today, today. Uh, uh, which is why we're starting late, but maybe we'll restart. restart. One, One sec. sec. Weird one. How about now? We're just making sure you're all awake. <laughs> Robin, surround sound. That's not stereo. That's like surround. How about now? How about now? How about now? I'm like running around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to get this stream working properly. That was good. Okay. I have a feeling in the next scene it's going to be messed up too, which I'll try to fix. Yeah, everyone's wow. saying it's fixed. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I'm like, yeah. The best part when you set up a live stream, I see Kanji's in the chat. He knows. Uh, maybe he knows. I don't know if he ever has this issue, but uh, I've had this issue for like 10 years dabbling with OBS and XSplit and all these other softwares for streaming. And uh, for some reason, Windows and when you plug in like 65 cameras and microphones like I do, which I don't know why I do that. Um, yeah, sometimes some of them freeze up and lock up and the streaming software then freezes up and locks up. And then you have your whole stream set up and you're trying to adjust one camera and then you have to restart the whole computer because you can't find which process of the 4000 processes running in Windows to properly kill. So, yeah, I had to restart the whole stream and set things all back up. So super annoying. But yeah, that's why we're a little late. Not that you care if you're watching later. I appreciate you being here and hopefully you scrub through all this crap. But <laughs> anyways. Yeah, it's Scott knows too. Yeah, it's Scott knows too. Scott says every time there's a Windows update, OBS is dead. Mm -hmm. Or an OBS update too. Like I'm always scared whenever anything updates the day I'm streaming. I'm like, oh no. An update's installing and I go live in half an hour. <laughs> I shouldn't install this update right now. Too late. <laughs> it's already installing. Oh no. <laughs> Oh man! All so, right. so your intro was probably pretty dramatic with Echo too. Of yeah, like, yeah, Epic yeah. campaign, epic, epic. <laughs> so one sec. I'm just gonna try to fix it before I get going here, just to make sure. Uh, yep, 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 yep. All right. Hopefully. Hopefully. Live troubleshooting. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Uh, should be good on all the other scenes. I hope. I hope. I hope. We'll find out. Hopefully you sound okay. Thank you everyone for watching live and helping us with this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but if you're new here, we play live streamed medium-ish to heavyweight games mainly. Uh, fantasy theme, sci-fi theme, adventure theme, legacy games, campaign games, the whole deal. Uh, and when you're watching this episode, if you clicked on this one, 99% uh, of the time, you'll find a playlist down in the video description and you'll find future episodes scheduled live. You'll find maybe they're already done and we play through the whole campaign with most games 99% of the time. Sometimes we put them on hold. Sometimes we don't come back to them. Uh, but usually you can find here on this channel, uh, what we do differently is we kind of like spend more time on one game. Usually, depending on the game, depending on what the audience on the channel wants to watch and that kind of stuff. Um, but for roleplay adventures, we're not just demoing the first scenario or playing just through the tutorial, which we will today, but spoiler warning, of course. But about halfway through this episode, we're going to go into Adventure Book 2. So what I would say, I haven't looked at Adventure Book 1. We're playing completely blind. So hopefully you have all the rules okay, but we're going to learn some as we play through the first adventure. So if you're interested in this game and you're not sure about it, watch through Adventure Book 1. Yes, you'll get some spoilers for that, but literally there's like 11 or 12, 12 adventure books or something like that, including a finale and a side quest, uh, which if you just stop watching the series after that first book, you'll have a good idea, I'm sure, how the game works and whether or not you want to go further with it. But even spoiler warnings from this point on, because we will, like, we don't know we're going to be spoiled because I've never played anything. Uh, I know nothing. I just read the rule book twice. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we understand it. It doesn't seem too heavy of a game or too complicated or crazy. It seems more story than game. Um, and that, we don't usually play games like this uh, that, are, that are more story than game. We usually play ga games that are more game with story. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is like a... 
Yeah, it feels like, um, based on reading it, I'm getting the vibes of Sleeping Gods. That's the kind of level, but Sleeping Gods a little more gameplay, I feel. But yeah, I feel like I, there's more story in this one. I don't, yeah, maybe, maybe. But we'll see. And it's not like, Tainted Grail is another one I would compare ish to, but Tainted Grail is more half game, half story, I feel. But you're still holding a giant book or in an app, reading story a lot, making choices. So it has a lot of that adventure, choose your own path and tests and all that kind of stuff and reading through a storybook. Uh, so that's the main focus here, I think, is going through these storybooks. So that, that's what we're getting into. But because of that, lots of spoilers, lots of spoilers. But uh, yeah, the first book, I'm sure we'll choose options that maybe you wouldn't choose on your next playthrough. But I mean, you've got to see the game to understand. Like I, I watched a couple turns before I was like really into it and read the rules and everything before I decided to get this game. We purchased the game with our own money and money from our awesome uh, Patreons and YouTube members. Thank you for supporting the channel. Money goes back into the channel, of course. Let's just buy games like this. Um, and you're gonna get our full feedback on it. Uh, at the end of the series, we'll probably do a kind of our thoughts after playing it. And hopefully I can cut that out into like a separate video like I've done recently with some other things so that people don't have to watch through all the spoilers and I'll do like a spoiler free little recap. Uh, so that's the plan. But yeah. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be playing through the whole thing, I assume. And if for some reason we stop and don't play it anymore, that means the game went really bad and started becoming horrible, and we just don't want to play it anymore. But we'll find out as we play through it, because again, we're playing blind. So thank you everyone for joining us live, thank you to watching later, and thank you again to everyone supporting the channel. Uh, much appreciated. And if you like what you're watching, hit that like button at some point. It would be awesome and it helps the channel. Alright, uh, so yeah, roleplayer adventures. We are here, we are here. Uh, let's just look at the live chat, any, any questions, any things? Questions so, that are unrelated. So John but... says, if you're going to be playing blind, are there going to be scarfs over your eyes? Uh, uh, not today. We're just going to turn all the lights out, actually. <laughs> I was just going to play in the pitch black. That's the best way to play blind, I think. <laughs> then there's no chance you, like, peek through, you know, or, like, see underneath the blindfold, you know? And then, and then you ruin it. Uh, oh, yes. Also, to answer your question, so I am on vacation, yes. I'm on holidays. Is today a weekday? Yeah. Ah, okay, Monday. that's why they're asking. Yes, yes. Yeah. Today is Monday? Yeah. It's a Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> Happy Monday. <laughs> yes, yes, Mel is with us. She is off uh, for the week here on vacation, so she's joining me during some daytime streams, uh, which is cool. So we already have the second episode for this scheduled. Again, look down in the video description if you want to see our playthroughs uh, after this, the next episodes, and want to follow along. Uh, you'll find them down in the video description as I schedule them or as we complete them, and you can set reminders for the ones you want to see. Best way not to miss a future live stream is hit the subscribe button, turn on uh, the bell, hit the bell, turn on notifications, and you'll get notified when we go live. Um, and I don't know what else to say. We have also played on the channel. I know we've played a role on player. The yeah, have we I'll played on the channel? Yes, and yeah, I've also okay. have a link down in the video description for our role player playthroughs. If you're curious, uh, this is in the role player universe. Uh, this publisher's made many games in this universe. Uh, well, I guess a few games with many expansions. Um, and this is another one of those. It's in the same world. So if you ever played role player, or I think Locked Up is another one that probably nobody's played because I don't think it's that good supposedly, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, but this one's in that same universe, uh, and it takes some of the mechanics of role player, but adds more story to it. So it's like trying to add like a role playing game, and then the if you'll notice, role player is a play on like role RPG, like role playing games, but you're rolling with dice. I don't know, you roll dice in that game, but this is more of like a dice manipulation, dice placement game, um, if that makes any sense. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this because I really did like role player. As Shadow game, Service so. says Lockup is amazing. I love that game. Yeah, that's we like a very that, yeah no no we never uh because I looked into it and then a lot of people were telling me that's like very meh. It's like not very great and didn't sell very well and stuff. So, but I mean there is obviously there's going to be someone who likes every game because the person designing the game thought it was a good game. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. Usually, I mean we've seen some crap get pumped out just because they're like trying to meet deadlines and they don't play test stuff and whatever, but. That game, for some reason, when I asked about that game, we're playing role player. I think it was in the role player streams. People were like, "Ah, don't worry about that game. It's, you know, it doesn't really hit with many people." But uh, yeah, yeah, which is, but it still gets like expansions and stuff, so it must have sold decent. But anyways, uh, John says lockup is the kind of thing that some people love, but and generally is considered fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. That's, the, that's what I got from it. Yeah, yeah. 
So it'll be the kind of game that if someone pulls it out and says, you want to play this, sure, we'll try it, but we're not going to yeah, try yeah. it. I, I yeah, I would definitely try it, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I just remember, that's why I don't have it, is because of, like, there's so many great games to play. It's, like, sometimes you just got to cut games based on, like, some people's, like, general opinion and stuff. You're like, okay. But hearing that it's fine, you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I'll it's pass. fine. If I find it on sale somewhere, <laughs> yeah. I'll buy it and try it. Will I ever play it on the channel? Probably not, but... <laughs> Maybe I'll love it, and then I'll want to show it off and think it's really cool. Uh, Matt does have a great question for you. He says, Rob, I realize you haven't played this game at all, but how do you like it so far? So, so far, <laughs> pulling it out of the box and writing on paper and putting <laughs> cubes in trays, I mean, it was an amazing experience, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you, pulling the shrink wrap off of all the books, realizing that I bought over $100 Canadian of basically paper books. And... You bought a $100 book. No books. Like a story. It, it's like comic books. <laughs> like it, it's like I, like ninety percent of the weight of the box it, is booklets. It's just books, and then there's a little bit of game components included <laughs> with it. That's when I realized, oh crap, they're getting me into a story game with some gameplay, and that's why I was like, uh oh. And there's a game that I was always interested in. Uh, like you guys know, most of you know, I'm a fan of Fantasy Flight games since I got into the hobby. Yes, they're not the same Fantasy Flight they used to be. Um, but at one Gen Con, one of the things they announced and showed off was this game called Legacy of Dragonhold. And at the time, I was like, oh, that looks cool. I love everything they do. I love fantasy. But then when I realized it was like, oh, it's just like a storytelling game with like not much game in it. I kind of stayed away from it and was like, ah, uh, I don't really play role playing games. And I like the story in some games, but I like it when it's like kind of like an added thing or like it's very interweaved. And that just seemed like you're just sitting around reading from a book and, and, and having a good time. And. I don't know, our play group, I don't know if they're really down for that and that kind of thing. So I decided to pass on a game and I was like, maybe someday I'll play a game like that. I think this is as close as I'm ever going to get right now. This is this is that kind of game it feels like. So I don't I don't know. But uh, anyone in the chat know Legacy of Dragonhold by Fantasy Play Games? It's like a storytelling game, right? Is this considered like similar to that? You know, would this be in the same category? Because that's what, it, just based on a high level view, I've never played both, but they just give me like that kind of vibe. Do they still make that game? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, of that was an amazing review, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's my initial impressions. Lay, you didn't yeah, yeah, laying things on the table. The art is cool. Uh, the components are good quality. The trays in the box are decent. It's way better than just some cardboard air insert that we usually see in board games. Uh, this How game, did it smell? Smells great. Yeah, yeah it smells great. Stuff from Thunderworks games. Man, the smell is great. The components okay. are great. Yeah, yeah. This is all quality stuff for sure. Yeah, definitely the price is like quality of components you're paying for, plus all the work that they did on the story, I'm sure, coming up with the story and the choices and all that. So yeah, you're paying for a choose your own adventure kind of book here. Like, uh, that's what I get from it. But again, let's see what my impressions are after playing it a bunch. We'll find <laughs> out if they change, right? Yeah. Panji says, I played and liked Legacy of Dragon Holt. It, it, was it comparable, though? Rob, give us an unboxing review from your unboxing of this game. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's all I know from the game so far, is just unboxing it. How does it taste? You didn't oh, taste it. Did you I, taste it? I didn't taste anything from this. Yeah, like, please don't put these cubes in your mouth. Yeah. It could be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Choking hazard. Choking hazard. <laughs> I, I shouldn't do it. I want to, but... Yeah, you want to lick the cube. I but... would lick the mini, but Mel painted it, and oh, now it's got paint and varnish yeah. on it and stuff, so I, I don't want those chemicals in my mm -hmm. in my mouth. This game will That's make good. you hate dice? Uh, uh, I think there's I th other games that make them hate dice. I think most people, like, already hate dice from playing, like other games that are more general games on the market. You know, you grew up playing Candyland, Monopoly, and uh, Life, and all these other games, you're just rolling and moving. Like, I'm sure people hate dice already from those games. So. I love dice in games. Yeah, yeah. But I guess I have a different rolling skill than you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> those are funny. All right, uh, so yeah. Let's uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's play it. Oh, before you do oh. that, Dan does say, just for the record, Candyland does not have dice, Rob. It does cards. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sorry. Sorry. We hate the game that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a roll and move, technically. It's a flip a card. But then, but then I remember house ruling it with my daughter to flip two cards and make a choice. That's right. Oh yeah, because you gotta right. you gotta start them young at making decisions in games. Yeah, last time I saw Candyland, uh, 
Let's see how old she oh, is. Oh, the game now. of life doesn't all, also doesn't have that. I don't know. You know what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> I like I, that was like like see I've I've rep- suppressed these memories. I don't remember those games very well. Obviously, I had them as a kid. The joke fell flat on that one. <laughs> no, what's the other one? The Popomatic one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry yeah, and yeah, trouble yeah. and sorry trouble. Those are ones I had as a kid. You pop the little Popomatic thing in the middle that flips the dice in there, and you kind of like move your little pegs along. Those are the kind of ones that I had as a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I reported my parents for child abuse, of course. Yeah, I had to. It was the only way Candyland could be played in this house. It had to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, but then as soon as my daughter was not playing anymore, I got rid of it. It's out. Yeah. So, yeah. But that was like eight years ago or some. No. Six, six years ago, maybe, was the last time Candyland was here. But yeah. Sorry is the national game of Canada. <laughs> yeah, I definitely grew up playing that game. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You can continue. Yes, Sorry. let's get started. I want to try to play two adventures today. That's the plan. So, and already I'm <laughs> off to a great start, being delayed by technical difficulties, and now I'm like confused as hell where to where to go next. All right, let's do this. Uh, all right, we got role player adventures. Uh, yeah, people have been rating it. It looks like an eight point five, whatever that's worth. Who knows? Uh, it's rank over all the time of filming here. It's 2000. We'll see. Is it going to fly up? Is it going to r- rip up the charts? Are people going to love it? Is it going to reach the heights of like role player? Who knows? Who knows? Where role player is? I don't know. But that is something I actually would like to know. So let's find out. Oh, for comparison? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious. Role player from 2016. Anyone doesn't know? Uh, the, you could play this game first. So role players, like, I think the publisher is probably most famous game, most successful game. They've come up with multiple expansions. It obviously have spawned spin-off games like this one. Uh, but you could play a game of role player, which is just kind of a pretty basic dice placement game with a fantasy theme of building a character sheet, kind of like you do in a, in a, in an RPG, I guess. Um, but then you just end the game with a score and you're done, right? They eventually added expansions to have little monster battles and stuff. Well, now it's like the next evolution where you could play role player, create a character, and at the end, save your little sheet, and then you could start this game we're playing today and import the character you created in this game. Uh, I'm pretty sure 99% of people will never do that, but it's cool that they did that as an option. Uh, I wanted to do that on the channel, but then I just didn't really want to do another role player stream, to be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. I like didn't want to pull the game out, figure the game out again, play it, and, and I just wanted to try this game. And since they already have pre-generated characters in this one, and there was 4,000 of them, I figured we just grab ones and, and start. So this one reached 203. That's good. Overall, out of all board games on the site. So that just shows you. It's not ranked as high either. It only has 7.5. Yeah, but so these ratings, I know like, it's, people just yeah. get, you know, tank them and stuff yeah. based on having a bad experience in a Kickstarter or something or just liking another publisher more and stuff. It's weird. Yeah. Anyways. Um, but yeah, Role Player Adventures, what we're playing, just came out in 2021. Uh, arrived at retail here in Canada like a couple of weeks ago, a week ago maybe, a week ago. Um... At least in our neck of the woods. Uh, but I know Kickstarter people have had it for a bit. So some of the people here hopefully have played and won't be spoiled because you've already played through some of it. Um, but if you're interested, like I said, tune away after Adventure Book 1, which is a shorter, I think, uh, kind of tutorial adventure. So you can get an idea of how the game works before we get into real heavy spoiler stuff. We can try to remember to give another spoiler warning at that point. Uh... Actually, I've decided we're not going to stream it today. Supposedly, it's best with no players. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Uh, we're done. No, I'm just joking. Uh, one to four players is the, the the player count. So, you can play this true solo. Um, all the rules are the same, whether you're playing with one to four players. It just scales on the amount of, like, cards and dice and that kind of stuff you play. So, it like it's kind of like a solo game spread out amongst players is how it's designed and and when you design games that way usually you don't have to make like separate variant rules for solo and extra components and stuff which i like because it's a simpler game it's you can do that kind of stuff and the weight is supposedly only a 2.29 so i thought that, it was higher before but people but are, people are, are rating people are and adjusting and, yeah. yeah people are live rating it like that's how it works right i thought it was like 3.1 or something when we first looked into it so yeah but then people played it and realized really like it's probably so way more simple they probably rated it based on like role player and then like played this and maybe it's more simple because more of a focus on story we'll yeah. find out yeah. but um and it's got a 90 to 150 minute playing time i'm assuming 90 is like the intro book because one adventure per session but again we're going to do two sessions today so if you're watching this later and you're like why the hell is your stream six hours long for one adventure i'm going to hopefully update the titles and thumbnails so that people can understand that when they come in but we're going to try to play two adventures per episode is the plan right now. We'll see how that goes, how long they take and stuff. 
but it looks like it could take up to 150 minutes for some of the longer adventure books. Um, plus streaming time, chatting time, choices, polls. And if you're watching along, uh, when we get to points in the story where there's making choices, sometimes we're going to do a poll with the audience if you've never been here before. So make sure in the live chat and you can vote uh, and help us break ties. Even if you know the game, uh, please don't spoil anything, but feel free to get involved on the polls and recommendations on things, especially if you want to kind of tweak us in a way that goes some other way that you haven't seen mm -hmm. or, you know, that kind of thing. Feel free to mess with us a bit. It's all good. We're all yep. playing along together. So, um, yeah, yeah, just yep. don't spoil no things. Yeah. Don't, don't just spoil things straight out. Like, for example, be like, everyone vote for this because obviously this one's very bad. I've done it before. We're all going to die. You know, yeah. just let it happen. It's all good. We're, we don't care. Um, we're just going to have fun playing through it. Uh, okay. So that's that. All right, uh, so here's some of the components. Uh, Mel, if you just want to pass me the card trays, I just want to show off these trays that kind of came in the box. They have clear lids, uh, but there's these decks that are kind of like, don't look through them. Don't, you know, like we've played in some legacy games and stuff that are like, don't change the order number. So as we pull cards from here, they're numbered and we got to put them back in that number order. Okay. Uh, but there's titles, discovery cards that I think put maps and items into play based on reading the rules. Uh, there's some rare card deck. We are playing the retail edition, so I don't have any of the fluff. Don't really care to have any of the fluff. I heard the fluff's not that good. Um, but uh, I got my familiars, and we just throw our other characters here. I don't think we'll ever need them, but they're just here. Um, and then, yeah, they just give me these trays, so they got trays to put models in. I just want to show this off because not a lot of companies, if they don't put game trays in, they usually put just, like, cardboard garbage and a bunch of baggies and stuff. Uh, but this game actually had everything kind of like there's a spot for everything. There's like, and it's labeled. Uh, so there's like labels in the bottom of that tray there telling me these cards go there, which is cool. Yeah, I like that. So you can literally pull this game out and play it pretty quickly because all the components are there. I did move a lot of the tokens to little game trays, uh, which I linked down below, just because that one tray is like super huge and awkward. And I wanted to spread some of the tokens out around the table for streaming. Um, but you don't need to use trays with this. Uh, if at least a retail game, I'm assuming the Kickstarter game has the same stuff. Um, yeah, you don't need trays for this because there is a tray. I just don't have it near me that holds the gold, the experience and all that stuff. So it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, so we created characters. Uh, the character I chose is, uh, I don't know the, oh, right here is a better, better name. I chose Pip Flint, Flint Knot. Uh, after searching through about half the characters, I went, all right, I'm just going to pick one kind of at random. So I just picked one that, that sounded kind of cool out of like two or three that I narrowed it down to. But I uh, mean, you go all day reading these. Like, can you pass me the I deck? Can. I don't know how many there are, but like. I think I saw 41. <laughs> what? Like, I think there's 41 of them. Yeah. So there's like this many characters. I'm, start, I'm like sitting here yesterday looking at them for like probably 20 minutes and realize like I'm spending way too much time choosing like a. A character I, I don't know if it matters that much in this game 41 actually might be including the if you import a character i'm not really oh, sure maybe. so maybe that's like total but these are just but even so pre-generated characters uh for the game there's so many like it, yeah. it's overwhelming and yeah. there's so many cool art and stats and item names and stuff so i just picked one um that is a, a halfling it's an assassin and its focus is on the black die i guess is its color class color whatever um, and then it starts with weapons like jewel dagger and thief's tools. That sounded fun. Sounds sound like, like uh, you're up your alley. Yeah, yeah. There was other ones that had sneaky stuff too. It was, um, I get some chain tunic, move silently, disarming traps, my traits, cunning and malicious. All those are, if you've ever played role player before, it's just like st the cards you get. So this is cunning. It's a trait card that just changes dice. I don't know all the symbols off by heart. We'll figure it out as we go. But this is take any color of die and turn it into a black or a blue is what I'm assuming. Uh, and then it's got like a card cost. And if I were to sell this card back, I get six gold, I think. And then uh, if I buy this card and again, and I have a, am I, I'm a frog kin uh, race, then I get minus two on the cost. So it only costs four. That's how I understand that. Uh, this little symbol on the cards, when I play a card, it goes to a spent pile. I can't get them back till I rest. Uh, but these cards without that symbol, I can get them back after every skill check or every combat. Uh, they can go back to hand, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I chose. Uh, the class is Assassin. All it means is you get this little one-time ability you can use between rests, uh, which is Adept. Add three stamina to your fatigue box. Stamina are these little clear cubes you see down here on my player sheet. Uh, and we have like strength, dexterity, uh, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So you have these stats, and they're just matching up to the colors of the dice in the game. So there's like dice that match these colors. Just, it's kind of like a set collection dice placement game. And then that you got cards that are all of these colors 
that can match colors and manipulate those types of dice and you get better with those dice and getting specific colors. And then based on doing a lot of stuff in the game or bad things happening or whatever, you'll add fatigue, which is literally you just moving fatigue to your fatigue box. Um, our health starts at 16. If you ever hit 16 fatigue in your fatigue box, you are instantly exhausted. Uh, and until you remove a fatigue from there or more, you will then recover and come back and play the game, whatever kind of idea. Um, that's how I understand it. So in here, uh, it's kind of neat, is uh, we have paper and pencil action here. So I'm getting a little bit of Hexplore kind of vibes, um, which I did. Uh, hopefully we can get dry erase going, but uh, I don't have a laminator at this time. But uh, I feel like that would be needed because I don't know about erasing in these little spots little squares it could become annoying well i think you use this one in oh, the square yeah, yeah. and then the big one that well, I got. maybe it's fine maybe it's fine. yeah the big one that i got will be for like erasing keywords yeah, maybe it's stuff. fine i just thought it would be annoying but uh we'll figure that out in future episodes uh but yeah you just write on here your stats so we'll be changing these stats as we go we could get more health and you just write all your stuff in here uh thank you mel for writing nicely in there for me <laughs> and then you just slide it in so if i can you just super easy <laughs> super easy you just it's gonna get stuck to on those cubes Oh, no, it's not. No way. Oh, look at that. Those are pro cubes, man. They got <laughs> curves on all sides. So, yeah, you just throw it in there. You throw your class card on a little spot. I love it's. Oh, oh. Did you notice what kind of component this is? Oh, it's my, my new favorite component in a game. So, instantly, I love the game uh, because of one component. We got dual layer cardboard, if you didn't notice. So, you can shake it a little dual, bit. Dual layer cardboard. So, this little fatigue is like indented. I love dual layer cardboard. It keeps things organized. So, a good. So, I can't just sneeze or something these cubes aren't going to move they are they are in this little slot here which is very nice and uh yeah the only problem is they're clear hopefully they come across on camera okay that's the only part i was a little worried about but you got the colors behind them to show you like what color cubes they kind of are um and yeah so nice way to organize a little class ability down here and if you use your class ability you just flip it over uh there's little organizational slots down here for your hand of cards that you can play from during skill checks and combats as you play cards, they would go to your discard, but if it had the spent symbol, like I was saying, it goes to your spent pile. So you know like where cards are in, in certain states of the game. And that is my character. You have, who'd you pick? Jada Blackbrow. Blackbrow? Blackbrow. Oh. She has black brows? Blackbrow. Did it before you forget. Uh, and you, uh, the other thing is, uh, you can't have the same character color of class or whatever. Uh, so I, I chose a uh, black character class. So Mel could not choose that. She would nope, have to choose, I, uh, I guess, purple, white, blue, green, or red. Yep, I went with the red. A warrior, dwarf warrior. And then I start with the incest, ancestral blade, the war lance, the chain leggings, entrap, intimidate, foolish, and relentless. I do start with three in the strength, which is good. And her class ability is warrior prepared. Return any amount of stamina from your strength attribute row up here uh, to the supply. Flip an equal number of dice in the dice pool to their opposite face. Little air elemental action. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> so yeah, big chunky dice, fun times. Opponents are good. All right. Uh, what's next? What do we talk about next? I don't know. Just maybe a campaign setup, kind of a bit about the sheet. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You want that or? Uh, sure. You just hold it up to here. Uh, so we have this party campaign sheet. It looks like there's a spot on the left here for items and something about active. I don't know what that means. Um, but we have a campaign track, so you could play uh ten adventures and a finale. There's a side quest book supposedly. I don't know if we'll play that in this playthrough. It just to leave some stuff for people to want to play later. Um, but maybe we'll be convinced later in the playthrough uh, to play it at some point. And we'll see also how we're doing for time. And if we feel like we want to move on to another game instead of playing more of this game, that may just happen. Uh, and then here we have our death track. So each time you die in the game, you kind of check it off. Uh, but it's only when we both die at the same time, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So not if one of us... If the scenario tells us to go to the encounter book or whatever to read death entries, you check them off here. Then we have a mastery track. This is how we're going to uh, spend XP at the end of a scenario and gold and stuff to uh, upgrade these stats, which is why they're in pencil and we can erase them and change them. Uh, and they, they start increasing in costs as you go and we check those off. 
Uh, our XP is shared amongst the party. Our gold is shared amongst the party. We're going to earn titles throughout the game. You'll see that as we play. Uh, play limit is the amount of cards each player can play in a skill check or a combat on a turn or whatever. Uh, so we're each allowed to play up to two cards. But if you're playing solo, I believe that would be like a four just to kind of even it out. So it's like four is the magic number there. Uh, dice Combat dice limit is three on two player? Uh, yeah. Is that the, the thing? I, I don't I know. I think it's three on everybody. Oh, to start. okay, okay. Um, really? Then how does that work? At... Yeah. Three for everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, but it's it's the whole party together, I think, right? It's not times players? No, it's for the whole party. Yeah, but this one's per player. Yes. Which is kind of confusing. Yeah. All right, anyways. Okay, then we have bonus play, which is a token you can spend to play extra cards. I didn't get that Beyond out. Beyond your limit. Those are those uh, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. And then uh, we have keywords that we'll write in during an adventure, but they get erased at the end of an adventure. So an adventure is a single book, which we're doing adventure one today, Battle at Black Lake. And we'll get keywords during it to help us uh, when we're unlocking choices. Again, if anyone's seen Tainted Grail or played Tainted Grail, it feels very much like that kind of idea. Or Sleeping Gods, writing down words that lock you out of, you know, entries when you get to specific locations and stuff, or opening up entries. Uh, this rest token will just let us know when we can rest. You're not allowed to rest, like, so many times. Uh, back to back, you can't do it ever back to back. So if we've rested, we put this to inactive, we're not allowed to rest. But once we do a next skill check or a combat, once you're done it, part of resolving the combat uh, is flipping it over and showing that we are allowed to rest again. So you can't rest like two times in a row to try to get your fatigue back. You have to determine on that rest how much XP you want to spend to try to get fatigue back, uh, which you'll see as we play. Most of this stuff will make sense as we play through it. I'm just giving a high level overview of what's kind of on the screen right now for you. Uh, but you'll see it as we play it, it'll make way more sense. Um, and again, I've only read the rules. I don't know much about the game, so I'm just going based on what I read. Uh, so we'll see things surprise us, I'm sure. Uh, there are three tracks, three different factions in the game. King's Favor, Starlit Door Favor, and Dragul Favor. These are the favor tracks for those factions that will have little black cubes on, tracking them, and you can write in them when you want to save the game. You just kind of mark where you were at. Um, but you can go up or down, and based on that, different things will open, just like kind of like the keywords, I assume. Uh, different story choices and, and re like responses and conclusions and things will happen based on where we are with each faction. So that'll be kind of fun. I think that's what helps make it different between playthroughs and things uh, based on choices. So that's our party ca campaign log or something. So we're keeping that on the screen because that's where like we'll be storing. Normally we keep those things on clipboards off screen and who cares, right? But because uh, that's where we need to see this these stats and things. It's like it's it's like a gameplay uh, component really in this game because uh, that's where we'll be storing our XP or gold and titles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep that nearby. Uh, let me just move this because I just realized it's kind of like a spot to put. Oh, items, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't realize. I that. guess I don't know, but anyways. All right. Okay. Uh, so, we also have a map that I just threw out there, I assume we're using map 01 today, Battle of Black Lake. <laughs> so I just threw this out here, but I think the setup is in this book. Yeah. So let me just quickly rip through the campaign setup uh, to make sure we did it. We filled the dice bags, we prepared the party journal, that's what it's called. We took our character sheets, we took our pre-generated characters, we filled out their values, we got our starting 16 health. Um... We recorded attribute scores, okay? We filled our attribute rows with, with tokens. We found our class cards. We built our starting hands of items based on the back of this card, okay? I uh, didn't do this. Oh, yet. we didn't take our starting goals. See, I knew there'd be something we missed. Well, I, uh, yeah, because it was just on your side. So. How dare you? <laughs> All right, uh, no, so okay. consult the chart below and take the amount of starting gold based on the number of players. Place a number of gold coins equal to that number in the corresponding space on the party journal. We're playing two players, so we're gonna get five gold. Campaign setup is now complete. If the party is now ready to start the first adventure of the campaign. So I guess that setup would have been so like sloggy, I guess, that you'd be like, all right, we need a break. We're not yeah. ready to play their adventure yet. <laughs> We're like, setup was so intense. Back. We need to take a break. But we are ready. We are ready, I think. I think so. So we're going to shoot over to, we're not importing a character. So there's separate rules based on importing characters from their other highly successful game, Role Player, okay? Uh, and that's all here. A whole bunch of different setup steps. So adventure setup. Once the setup's complete for campaign, start here. So prepare the party journal, create a supply of stuff that's all on the table. Discovery, title, and rare decks. We already showed those. Those are in trays off screen. 
Uh, we got player aids, character sheets, player aids. We got a combat and a skill check player aid, uh, which I can show on the screen shortly. As we go through our first skill checks and our first combats, we'll get down to that stuff. We'll go in depth on that. Uh, storybooks. We got our storybook. And we can begin the adventure. So there is an aspect to this game of a storyteller and a encounter book holder person, <laughs> which are supposed to be separate uh, if you're playing more than solo. We're going to treat it kind of like we're playing solo because we're streaming. Uh, we've got a new subscriber. I can't read that. I'm so sorry. But thank you so Welcome. much for subscribing. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of like what we did with um, uh, Sleeping Gods. Yes. Where we just kind yes. of play together, making the decisions together. So hopefully I don't lose my voice being the main reader. But since the there's no PDFs that I could find, uh, there might be available now, but mm -hmm. I couldn't find PDFs earlier. Um, so we'll just be reading out of the physical book. So because Mel doesn't have to read off of a screen across yeah. the room, uh, maybe she can read some from the book. Yeah. And, We're hearing from that one too. Oh, and that one. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I don't have to read so much, but <laughs> we'll find out. Hopefully I don't hack too much into the microphone. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, anyways. Uh, I think we're ready to begin. Yeah, so we're just going to, whoever wants to read, reads. And we're not, we're not, when we get to a new location, we're not going to pass the books around. We're, we don't care about that part. I think so, that works if you're so playing I, with four or five players. So I don't want to hear about we're playing the game wrong because we're not <laughs> doing that. Oh, delete that comment. Delete it. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah. Point out any other mistakes, leave them down in the comments below. That does help other people watching in the future learn from our mistakes. Also helps us if we see it uh, shortly after the episode. We can fix it in future episodes if we're doing something completely wrong, uh, which can happen. Can happen, of course. Dan says there's a big super chat coming if you lose your voice, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I don't know, it's probably not the best game for me to be playing right now. I, I don't know, but anyways. Oh, Brian S. wants a turn reading. <laughs> probably works. Wouldn't that either. be funny if you had someone just like in on Discord and they just are reading it to us? I mean, it's totally <laughs> possible. But then what if they like go take a break for a minute and they're not there and I'm like, all right, go ahead, Brian, read. Yeah, and Janet's saying... Crickets, crickets. <laughs> Janet's saying that uh, Janet read the scenario book and her husband read the adventure book and never switched back and forth. Yeah, yeah, I think it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying that there's a rule but... in the book about it. I'm saying we're ignoring a rule. I'm just getting it out there. Yeah. You do whatever you want. It's your game. I think it's because it does say that uh, for breaking ties, like you try to break the ties, but then I think if you really can't yes. the storyteller... But here's the cool but... thing. Uh, we have the chat to help us break ties. Exactly, exactly. So whenever I read that now in a game where it's like break ties, the this player breaks it, and it's like, oh, we don't really play that way. Uh, yeah, we always have the chat that can totally break ties, uh, which is awesome. Thank you for the help on that, by the way. Bob Chapman is here. Says thanks for waiting for me to get home from work. You may continue. Oh, about time. I was I was making up technical difficulty <laughs> excuses and everything. Waiting I, for Bob to I arrive. Even, I even faked an echoing mic uh, situation <laughs> just to delay for you, Bob. I'm glad you're here now. <laughs> Dream Alchemist says Mel wins ties. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Well, those ones I don't even do polls for anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, exactly, Darren. Then we can blame it on the chat if something goes terribly, terribly wrong. Yes, yes. Agreed. Okay. Uh, so, I, we're not going to go into through any other rules. You'll see this stuff as we play. But the rulebook is not bad. You can Google uh, Role Player Ventures rulebook PDF if you want to look at it as we play along. It's only like a 20-page rulebook or something like that. It's not big. There's not a lot to this game, it seems. It's more just reading story and having fun making choices and stuff. Uh, it definitely feels on the lighter side for sure. Uh, but we'll go through all this stuff about gold, XP, items. I'm sure we'll see all that in the first adventure book. And I learn better by seeing it done or by doing. So um, I'm just scrolling through here just making sure there's nothing else we forgot I don't to so. discuss before we get into it to make things make sense. Uh, no, okay. But yeah, like I said, we'll go over the combat uh, and the skill checks, which have a nice reference uh, when we actually get to those points. Uh, okay. I think we just go to set up in there, yeah. Let's, so let's go. We're map. ready. Oh, yeah. And for those that care, uh, here's Mel's <laughs> painted. So I told Mel to paint this one with, like, I said do bright colors so it pops out compared to, like, dark fantasy backgrounds and stuff. Uh, but she's still kind of... I, I, even, I did do brighter than I wanted to. You did to. brighter. I said, Mel, pick some silly colors, make this token like bright so it stands out on the board. We always know where we are from the, the camera bird's eye view. 
Um, and she still kind of made it. I tried to do like some golds and. Yeah, but I thought I meant I thought it meant, like uh, yeah. neon yellows oh, and oranges okay. or something. I didn't I know. Don't... You... Yeah. So Mel painted it, uh, but then I took the gloss varnish to make it shiny. So hopefully the lights in the room will shine off it, and we can always tell where our miniature's at uh, for you watching at home. I just did a nice quick table quick and ready. Dirty, table ready. Yeah, very quick. But it looks great. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming we start somewhere <laughs> over here, but. Thank you. Anyways, all right. On on location A, I would assume, out of B, C, and D. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, I just noticed something. This is awesome. Okay, oh. uh, welcome to Roleplayer Adventures. Welcome, welcome, welcome. everybody. Roleplayer Adventures is a narrative-driven cooperative game. You play as soldiers in the King's Guard, tasked with protecting the kingdom of Nalos. So, you guys know when I read along in games, I don't know how to pronounce a lot of stuff. And then when I get to it, I stumble. Um, and they could tell who, whoever playtested this game... Uh, knew that people were stumbling, or I guarantee you the writer of this game watched my stream at some point. Um, because look what they did. Or Brian S. Maybe Brian S. worked on this game. Sorry, one second. Yes, okay. Maybe Brian S. in the chat worked on this game. Uh, but look at right after Kingdom of Nalos, they got what's that called? The phonetic, yeah, the phonetic, the phonetic spelling. spelling. So it's like, we know you're going to read this on stream, Rob. We're going to put this in here right for you. So uh, whoever, if it was you, James Ryan, you, thank you so much. Or whoever else, whoever else did this. Where's the rule book? Uh, right here. Is there a, uh, a play tester list or something? Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it might have been, it might be, uh, we got John or Brenna who are developers who, you know, kind of work the game to what we see in the final run. Or it could be one of these four bajillion people who had a uh, play test or feedback throughout development. Or one of the editors so even. Somebody, yeah, or an editor. Maybe yeah. it's an editor. So <laughs> any of you on this sheet, whoever did it, I know you watch the channel and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, also Janet does say there's some crazy words coming up in this game, so. <laughs> I'll still say We're gonna them say wrong, them though. totally wrong. But I appreciate you putting it there. <laughs> and I don't. Oh, Brian S says I cannot take credit, but as a teacher, it makes my heart happy. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, are you an English teacher? I thought of you, Brian, as soon as I just saw this. I was thinking of Brian right away. Uh, the story will walk you through your first game. Please read the rule book before you begin playing. Call out boxes like the ones below will refer to the relevant rule book sections or even introduce new rules during play. So, like I said. This first adventure book, I think, is a little thinner than the other ones, uh, and it's just like a good intro. So again, it is spoilery. There's spoilers in here. I'm sure we'll see choices that if you're going to play, you'll know the answers to. But to see how the game's going to be played, I recommend watching this, and, and we'll learn from it. You'll learn from it. And then once we go to adventure book two, halfway to the, through the stream-ish, uh, then I would say run away if you don't want spoilers for sure. Rupert said that was only added for Canadians. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So uh, we got symbols. We got symbols like the uh, yellow exclamation point below are action indicators. An action indicator gives you instructions that you must perform. Prepare for your first adventure. Follow the campaign setup. Oh, so we could have read this first, oh, I guess. Oops. But we did the campaign setup. Yeah. Each storybook will begin with its own unique setup text explaining how to prepare the map for that adventure and providing details for any adventure specific rules. So then we have set up. Adventure map. Place the battle at Black Lake adventure map in the center of the table next to the party journal. Oh, I even did that. Wow, I didn't even know. look at you. I didn't even know. I was just trying to fit it all on camera. So this is our adventure map. Okay, we'll put it, I don't know, like this or something. Uh, okay, <clears throat> exploration XP. Uh, place an XP on each lettered location on the adventure map A, B, C, and D. Okay. Is that okay? I think the locations are like this whole art. Oh, you could just so it should go it like that? Oh, okay. Yeah, don't sure. cover the names of sure. things and letters. Sorry. I'll get confused. You're right. What's you're right? right. Look, you got this token on the A. How will I know that's A if you you're, put the token on it? You're so over right. It? I can't see through those tokens that well. All right. Uh, party journal. Place, place bonus play tokens on the party journal equal to the recorded value. I already did that. Okay, we have one. Okay. Character sheets. Place each player's hand of cards on their hand space, which is this down here, Done. Uh, which we already talked about. And then it says, place each player's class card face up on their class ability space. Uh, or this one. Class, this one? Class card? Class card? Class is this, yeah. Yep. Uh, fill each attribute row to its maximum with stamina 
from the supply, done. Find encounter tokens one and two. One and two. Okay. Okay. Oh no. We can put these here so we don't bump the thing. There we go. Use it like a border. All right. Okay. Um, the remaining encounter tokens are not used in this adventure, so they can be returned to the box or kept aside in your game trays at the side of the table and don't touch them. Mm -hmm. uh, encounter tokens. Place encounter tokens one and two on the table and create a pool. Flip them face down and randomize them. So you shuffle them. I'm not looking. And then I'll just pick randomly. When you look away, I'll do a little shuffle. Okay, there you go. Okay, you look away, then I'll shuffle. And then I assume they go in these two boxes. Uh, flip, uh, fill each individual available encounter space on the adventure map with a face down token. Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess we, we look at those when we bump into them, right? Like mm -hmm. when we're going along little paths? Yeah. Your adventure begins. As a Kingsguard soldier in the regiment of Commander Zalik, a dark elf, you have fought a long war. The Dragul, a coalition of northern tribes, invades Nalos, your homeland. After many battles, you have driven off their hordes, but rumors spread through the camp of a new Dragul plot. One night, you were summoned by Commander Zalik's tent, or to Z Commander Zalik's tent, where you find him arguing over a map with General Grick, an orc. A gold coin marks the southern city of Sabic. A vial of elixir marks a swamp to the west. General Grick raises an eyebrow when you enter. So, you're Zalek's best, he asks, looking you over skeptically. We have a special mission for you, but first, a question of strategy. Zalek wants to take your regiment south to investigate a threat to the capital city, says Grick, pointing to the coin. Then, points to the vial. I think we should push west and capture a powerful Dragul agent in the swamps. What say you? So, based on the little story... We get our first choice. So if there's ever little question marks there, that's a choice for the party. We could side with General Grick. We could learn more about the Dragul plots and go to begin dash one in the book. Or we could side with Commander Zalik and investigate the threats to the capital and go to begin number two. So here is our first choice for the chat. Because this seems like one, I have no clue, but uh, which option? And we'll do a quick little live poll uh and it is go one was dragul plots yeah so we're gonna learn about dragul plots or investigate threats investigate threats to the capital good mm -hmm. so i'll just put that in the, in the live chat so there's a live poll i'll leave it up for like a minute and you guys can decide which way we go here in this playthrough. So if you've already played yourself and want to see something different, pick the other option. If you've already watched, I don't know, a beginning of a playthrough or something and you've already seen this uh, and you want us to do something different, go nuts. Vote, vote however you want. We'll go with whatever way you guys want to go. And there's the text in the meantime, I guess, if you want to pause the stream and just make sure you uh, scrub it back forward so you're caught up live again. But um, there's the text I was reading if you're curious. And then based on that, we go. So this is how the storybooks go, I guess, is like we make that. And then based on encounters we run into or things that happen, we might be told to go to this book, uh, which is a giant encounter book full of stuff based on things that are happening. And that is for the whole entire yep. campaign yep. where this is just for one scenario. Yep. Yeah. So there's like 12 of these little comic book kind of or RPG little adventure books that are included. But you're always playing with this. And then there's like a skill book. Uh, for when we do skill checks or skill tests or whatever, uh, that we'll be opening up this book and placing dice, doing little checks on that. And then there's a whole enemy deck full of enemies that are similar to this, where we're doing a little dice placement manipulation game on those to try to win combats. Alrighty, so I'm going to close the poll. Thank you everyone that voted, and we'll go with whichever option uh, won the poll. Letting the chat decide might make it harder for us. That's fine. I, that's They're probably totally going to pick the harder option. It definitely makes it more fun. <laughs> For sure. They make and you can feel fun. like you're involved too, right? Uh, so Dragul plots 51%. Okay. So it's super close. Wow. wow. Okay. So we're going with, I guess, begin one. So I'll go find begin one, uh, which is just another entry in the book. So you see begin one and begin two. 
Uh, you point to the vial of elixir, and General Grick laughs, patting you on the back. Yes, exactly, he says. Zalek nods. I'll leave you to it, he says. He collects his coin and exits the tent. Recording keywords. So here's like little rules text kind of helping us as we learn in this one. The action indicator below instructs you to record a keyword. To do this, you write the keyword Grick in the keyword space on your party journal. So it's telling us, pencil, pencil icon, record Grick. Okay, you keep the vial, the general says to you, rolling up the map. You need it where you're going. Leave now and travel due east until you reach a small enemy encampment. A special operative of King Teron will meet you there. You collect the elixir from the table and drink it down. With a nod, the general sends you forth. Gain one XP. Oh, sweet. Good choice. You make haste under a crescent moon, crossing burnt and abandoned farmland in, into open prairie. At the top of a bluff, you look over and see a dark lake to a wooden outpost. Place your party marker at location A. Oh, we cheated. Oh, we already did that. Oops. Read entry A. Okay. So whenever you enter a new location, supposedly in a rule book, it says you just go to the entry. So this is location A. Uh, so we would go to A. Uh, so it's just kind of walking us through that. But in the future, if we were to like move down to C, we would just go to entry C and start reading as soon as we arrive there. Uh, so I was talking about action indicators are always read and result in order from top to bottom. Sometimes an action indicator will direct you to another story. When this happens, immediately turn to that entry without reading and resolving any more action indicators. So based on this, it looks like it has the whole check, kind of like Sleeping Gods and Tainting Grail and stuff, uh, where it's like, if there's no XP, go read this. If you're already, you know, you, you've already been here, basically. Uh, but we haven't, so there's still XP here on the board. Um, so otherwise, collect the XP from this location and continue reading. As you look out over the lake, a voice calls from a thicket behind you. Care to join me? You turn to discover a friendly halfling roasting apples and hares by his fire. His name is Bilbo. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you like hair. Or, sorry. <laughs> you look like you could use a meal. You disregard the halfling, and he chuckles, then stands to salute you. Tarek Nowlin, special operative of King Teron, confidant of the immortal knight, and bearer of bad news and terrible secrets. Now come, eat and rest, for we have hard work ahead of us. As you eat, Tarek speaks in a hushed voice. The lake below is dark, for the Dragul filled it with blood and ashes of their dead. Our mission is to secure the outpost. The northern shore is guarded by an encampment of goblins, weak but many. Knolls, stand watch to our south. We need to eliminate both camps, so take your pick. You go one way, and I'll go the other. Burn down their camp to signal your progress. I'll do the same. Tarek pulls something from his pack and tosses it at you. We'll need this at the gate. So discovery cards. When instructed to re reveal a specific discovery card, do not shuffle or examine other cards in the deck. Only find and reveal the card referenced by the text. The discovery deck is organized in numerical order and cards are numbered on their backs. Okay, so it says reveal discovery card 65. Oh, we can uh, change the order of that. No, no, that's it, fine. Yeah. Because it's in descending order. But it's yeah, fine. I don't know why. Yeah, they always do it the other as way. As long like, as I know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they do that. We'll, we'll fix that later. Oops, sorry. Using items. Oh, did you want to reveal it? First? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. What do we get? 65. Oh, this is one from the rule book. Uh, yeah, so 65 is basically uh, when you're looking up how to use this at a location, you look up letter and number in the book to see what happens when you use it. This is a stamina cost per player. So we could spend two stamina, I think as a party. So I think I could spend two stamina if yep. I wanted to, or you spend one, I spend one, whatever, um, to use this bluestone fireball. And then once you've paid the cost, you open the book and the location you're at. So if we were at this location we're at, we go to A65 in the book and read it and see what happens if we try to use this here. But like that sounds like a waste of stamina. So but you have to wait until it gives you the option to use an item. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So you can't just use it at every location. Which it looks like right now they're about to get us to try oh, to okay. do. Probably to, for learning. So it talks about uh, using items. Items can be used at locations. When using an item, each player places stamina in their fatigue box. Oh, it says each player. Yeah, but I think in the rule book it does say that. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that's only for buying dice. Let's just read. Uh, items can be used at locations. When using an item, each player places stamina in their fatigue box from the supply equal to the cost listed on the card. Because like... What I'm worried about is if one player is exhausted, how does that work? Are you not allowed to play the item because that player can't spend? Or now is the reduced cost on the item? There is an FAQ on this game, which I probably should have looked at more in depth, but maybe the answer is that in there. 
Um, to use the blue stone fireball item 65 that Tarek Nowlin handed you here at Borland Prairie, location A, each player places one stamina into their fatigue box. Then combine the location letter with the item number and turn to that entry in the storybook, A65. You cannot use the same item twice in the same location. I think it wants us to do that, right? So here, no, no you just take one from the, you take one from the supply. Oh, so yeah, it's not getting it's us not, to no, spend. No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's being nice, I see. So now we have the option to either use an item or move to another location. So we could skip this if we wanted to, but let's just well, do it. Well, let's do it because it's telling us to do it, so it's probably going to give yeah, us more direction. Yeah, it's probably, probably saying, like, you know, just to see what happens. So I go to find A65. Uh, A65. If you have either keywords alarm or clear, go to A2. No. We don't. To Tarek's alarm, you casually begin to uncork the blue potion. Not here, he cries, grabbing your hands to stop you. Any exposure to air in the fireball will explode, which could be very loud and could easily kill us. Let's try to stay quiet and alive. Save the fireball for the gate. So we could try to now use another item or move to another location. So that's the entry here. Okay. So I guess we have to move to another so, location because we don't have any other items. Yeah. So we and spent I think the that cost. Goes here. Uh, let's just throw it up there somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, resolving encounters. In a multiplayer game, the player to the right of the storyteller reads the Tome of Encounters. If you move along a path that contains an encounter token, flip the token face up and place your party marker beside it. Open the Tome of Encounters and turn to the entry in this adventure with the same number as the encounter token. Then return the encounter token to the box. For example, in this adventure, to resolve encounter token 2, turn to adventure 1-2 in the Tome of Encounters. Okay, so that's that. So, let's so which to direction do we want to go? They said so it was we, our choice. Yeah, we could go to the Goblin Camp, number B, uh, uh, letter B, or the Knoll Camp, C. Hmm. And this is goblins were like weak, but, but many. many. And, the and they didn't really say, they just said gnolls were guarding the camp. I say we go, what do you think? I, I, I know what I would choose. I want to hear what you say. I think you're going to say the Goblin Camp? Sure. Is that what you would have yeah. said? Yeah, okay. All right. Are you good with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's, let's go along the way. <laughs> So it's like we stop and find a road event? Is that what's yep, happening it's, here? Yeah, it's ripped off right from Gloomhaven. No, I'm just joking. Uh, Gloomhaven got that idea from other places I know. Uh, all right, so we're stopping an encounter. What do we get? Two. Number two. So we're just going to leave that there. We'll throw it away in a sec. Yeah, I guess it didn't really tell us what to do with it. Yeah, so that's it when you want to go. Instead of remove it from oh. the game and put it back in the box. I just read that. Uh, you want to go in that one? Oh, yes. Encounters. That's right. Different book. Okay, so we're A2. Mm -hmm. A, or sorry, A dash two. Adventure one dash two. Oh, one. Not we're not on A anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's not based on location. <laughs> this this book I think is based on the adventure, like ADV. Okay. Now that you've found an entry that matches your encounter token, remove that token from the adventure map and return it to the box. Cool. By the faint light of the crescent moon, you make your way through the grove of ancient trees. You discover a thin line of twine across your path and up a tree where rusty pots and pans hang from the branches. The forest around you is located, or is, sorry, is laced with these trip wires. Any false move will alert the Dragool to your presence. The choice indicators below offer a choice between two skill checks. Each shows which attributes will be used to resolve the skill check. Once you have made your choice, turn to the corresponding entry here in the Tome of Encounters. So, we have to choose Disarm the Trap, which is a dexterity and intelligence test. We go to Adventure 1-5 in this book. Or carefully sneak through it, where it's a dex and wisdom test, and we go to 1-6. I have zero in intelligence. Well, no comment. <laughs> uh, I, I'm good with dexterity. Okay, dexterity is both. I have one in intelligence, or dexterity and wisdom I have one in. So both are like equal for me. So maybe do we do the, the second wisdom? one, because I have wisdom and don't have intelligence? Or... So carefully that... sneaking? You think? Or no? We well, can do know. whatever, but if and you're going to do the other one, then... I, I don't know if we're supposed to be super familiar with all of our cards, but maybe we have cards that help do things. Like, I have Disarm a Trap card. Oh, so yeah, maybe that's but it. But I, I think these are very abstract, like in Role Player. Like, it says Disarm a Trap, but it's not really disarming a trap like you'd think of in a, in a normal game. It doesn't really the theme to the uh, effect. It's just like, literally, they want to throw art and a name on a card just for a card yeah. that flips a black die to another side. Or, yeah. Two black dice? Two black dice, yeah, yeah. two black dice. So I don't know. I have thieves tools, like, move silently. We can try that one you know and I mean? see if we can just make it. But you think, like, I've moved silently, which 
I'm assuming it's all related to dexterity. So yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, so both are dexterity. Each player returns two stamina from their fatigue boxes to supply. Oh, that's which not terrible. Doesn't really help us on a check of moving silently. So it's like there's a little disconnect there in my mind, but I mean it's more of a lighter abstract game, right? Uh so let's sneak through because of wisdom, you're saying? No, we can try to disarm nope, the trap if you're fine with it. Through. No, we're sneaking. Okay. okay. Uh and uh so one dash six. All right, you do your best to creep your way past as the many tripwires that the Dragool have set up on the path to their encampment. So we're doing a skill check, and how skill checks work. So this is a stealth skill check. So there's a little skill book here. We're gonna keep flipping until we find it. I'm assuming they're in alphabetical order. Please be. So we don't have to like every time. Oh man, we got us going. Right oh, it might be like the freaking last page. Second to last. All right, so stealth. So I'm just gonna roll this to the side. So we are doing a skill check. The box below indicates a skill check to complete a skill check. All players will work together to cover every dice slot on a skill check row with a die that matches the indicated color and number. You'll first build your dice pool, then play cards to manipulate your rolled dice. See the skill check section on page 12 of the rulebook. So this is a skill check stealth one. So we're on the stealth page uh, and we look at number one. So it has a dice limit of four. We need a black die of two a white die of one, and a black or white die of six to pass the skill check. If any one of these is not covered, we fail. But if we cover these spots, pass or fail, we could earn some experience. Okay? Is that middle one white or is that any color? Oh, no, that's white, white. Because any color is this one. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, the color will gotta, actually yeah. be there. Yeah, I just gotta get used yeah, to the colors. So, yeah, yeah, there's different colors. So like you'll see this one's green or let's say just use like different borders. So there's all the different borders. Yeah, so that's any color. Okay. Yeah, yeah just the first time looking at it, I just want to make sure I understand what dice I need. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we do skill checks. So we can talk about skill checks. So skill check. Each skill check lasts only for one round. Set up. Open the skill book to the indicated page in row. We just did that. Assign the indicated modifiers from the modifier deck. There is no modifier on this one. I'm assuming they're trying to keep it super basic. Uh, build the dice pool. So we're going to spend stamina to add specific dice. Each die costs stamina equal to the player count from the attribute roll of that color. So we know we need black and white dice. So if we don't spend any stamina right now, we are going to pull our four dice at random from all the colors in the bag. You know, so many colors all in the bag there, right? Yep. So we would pull four random dice. Okay. This is the example we're not doing. This is the yet. example. So I just pulled four random dice. Uh oh. How are we going to do this? We need black and white dice. Well, you would roll them up. And oh, I got a white one. Okay, perfect. But these aren't the color I need. So we could do it this way. And then we can play cards from hand. And remember, our play limit is two with a bonus play limit of one. Once one player uses the bonus play limit, we're done. So we can play technically up to five cards uh, each. Uh, or sorry, two cards each. But one player can play a third card using that bonus play limit. So based on these cards played, we could manipulate. But if we rewind, before pulling the random dice up to our dice limit, we could spend stamina at a cost of... So this is where your colors and your stats matter. So if I wanted to grab a white die, to be for sure we have a white die, uh, we could spend two stamina from Wisdom amongst us, because it's per player, so I could spend two if I had to, but I don't. So we, in this case, we each spend one. But if you didn't want to spend one of your wisdom for some reason, I don't know why you would do that. If you didn't have it, I guess, you could spend three cubes from anywhere else to make up for one cube, a three to one ratio, to get uh, that die. So you still have to cover two wisdom per player. But again, you could spend, I could spend like one strength and two dexterity to count for one missing wisdom if we needed to get a white die. So... I could spend right now. I could spend like two black. I could do two black, or I could do one black, and you do one black. But I'll just do two. Okay. Okay, just for example, and that means we get a black die for sure. I don't know if I should be doing this right now. I have no idea. Again, I've never played the game, um, but I'm just going to do it for showing off how it works. Even if this is dumb, what we're doing and not efficient, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. So I move that to my fatigue box. I get a black die. Okay. Okay. Um, do we think we want to get a white die as well, or do we just take our chances? Again, I can turn, I, if we yeah, can get yeah. a red one, we I can should, turn it to any color. We should probably look at the cards we have. Uh, I can also turn any color to a white. 
Looks like I can change a one or a three to any color. Okay. I, I don't know. I could change any color to a black or a blue. Okay, so we do have two options. Like, I have the red and you have... Oh, the black, though. Oh, any color, yeah. Hmm. I could re-roll a white die. Um, I can increase or decrease the value of a black or a pink. Um, Stop, because we can only play at most three cards if we play the bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So we'll see what happens. Do we want to try for one more die specific? Sure, and let's then... do the wisdom. Okay, I'll spend one. One each. And okay. then we're going to grab a white die for sure. Yeah, and then we'll take our chances on a black, because we have a black or white as the yep. other okay. option. Okay, so now I pull two random. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to shake the bag up, and we're going to pull our chaos token, I mean our <laughs> dice from the pool. So bag we'll... was included in this game. So, yeah, the, the, the game came with a bag. If, if it wasn't obvious, uh, <laughs> this game came with a bag. Uh, let's see here. So we decide to spend. Now we're going to add random dice until the dice limit has been reached, and then we're going to roll them. Okay. So in this case, we're pulling two. One. Okay, that's not good. Oh, that's two. okay, because I can change a red to any color. All right. So now we're going to roll them. Here, you can roll them. Oh. What the hell Whoa. is that? That is... I was about to make a joke here. If we need high numbers, I'll give you the dice. If we need low numbers, I'll roll it. I think we can do this, though. And I didn't want to say it, because I don't want to jinx it, and then you just rolled all ones. No, but this is okay, because I know that I have some that can increase dice well, like, by odds? one. I know. Can we get can we, somebody <laughs> in the chat, can we get the odds on four, four ones being rolled on four d6s? Yeah, it's a Yahtzee, right? On the first right? roll of the game? Like, isn't, what the hell is this? Isn't Yahtzee only when you roll all sixes? <laughs> but yeah, it's still... Uh, but uh, I think this actually might work. Okay. Because... So now, we're on to manipulate and play dice. So step three, play cards to alter the dice in the dice pool. Each player may play cards up to the party's play limit. Spend bonus play tokens to play more cards. Activate player's class abilities. And then place your dice on the slots. So I forgot we also have our little abilities. So oh, I yeah. can spend three stamina to your... Or add three stamina to your fatigue box from the supply. Play a card from your hand as a copy of a card in your spent space. Oh, that's so cool. So I could dual use a card. That's cool. And I have return any amount of stamina from your strength attribute row to your supply. Flip an equal amount of dice to the dice pool of the opposite face. <laughs> Mel has been conjured. <laughs> no, but this is not a bad die just, in, just in this case. A 1 in 1,296 chance. Holy moly. That's crazy. Wow. Oh, so is Pontus. Pontus had it too. Uh, um, yeah. th <laughs> this, this is not a bad roll, and I'll tell you why. Ones can be flipped to six, which we need. Oh. And ones can also be increased one to I, make I, it two. I could do that with a black die. Okay. But no, I think you need it, to just change the color. Yeah, but so, it's fine. I can... Um, but I can change... Look, I can change any one to a black. So, and, it, and this, you don't actually go replace the die from the bag. So if I want to say this red becomes a black, we just have to remember it. So we'll just play our cards out, you know, and we see what we've done, right? Mm -hmm. So I could change any color to a black, so that's a black. Or or should I do this one? I don't know what you got. Uh, going I can change any color, any red to any color. So either way. But let's see. Maybe I need you need to do it so that I don't I don't play more of the cards than I should. Is there? Hold on. Is there any way? Do you have something no, that? No, watch, can... watch, watch. Okay. Uh, yeah, you might need to do it. No, but I, know. I have the jewel dagger. Yeah, you need this for this. So I, I could play this to increase a black die. Well, this is black now. So I could just do this one. You know what I mean? If I uh, did that, I'm just showing an example. I know, I know. So you change the color of it. You change Hold on. the color. Well, I know, I know. I'm just. But we have to show like the order we're doing it in so it all makes sense. And we're not I know, confusing ourselves I know. and other people. But I'm just saying, so this white one, so, I think, is going to stay as it is. Yes. But I, I but could then, flip a black. I could flip this to a six. Or if we turn this to black, I can flip that to a six. And I also have the way to manipulate it up or down on a black. So I can do that if you can change one of these to a black. Okay. I got us. Okay. So I can only change the red to a black. So the red is now black. Okay. Ignore the purple. We don't care about it. Okay. We got a black, a white, and a black. Okay. That's yep. how the. I know you might have to adjust the color of your screen, um, <laughs> but this is a black. Trust me. It's not the red dice you're looking for. Okay. Uh, so now that it's a black, I'm going to play Disarm the Trap. Oops. Let's get this one off here. Do it like this. So I'm going to play Disarm the Trap, which can be used on up to two black dice. I can flip them to their opposite side. So I'm going to take this black one, 
and I'm going to flip it to a six. Okay, I could have done this one, but I'm just trying to show. And then I'm going to play this one, which can increase or decrease by one a value of a black or a pink or red or whatever color that really is. Red, I would. Red, I think. Uh, no, purple. I think that's purple. Yeah, that's purple. Yeah, because that's okay. red. It might Holy. look a little weird on the little green screen thing here, too. Um, so this one, I'm going to increase this one to a two. Okay. Okay. So these two blacks, uh, these two blacks right here are taken care of. And then we have a white one. Which is perfect. So now we can go to dice placement. And we put this black here on the one that's white or black needed. Then we put this white here. And we put this black here. And it's completely covered. So now, if I go back to our reference, uh, we go to resolution. So we gain, first you gain rewards on all covered dice slots. So this is, we haven't even decided if we passed or failed yet. You just still gain rewards. Which is 1 XP because this is covered, 1 XP because this is covered. Okay, so okay. two. Yep. And then uh, we return all dice and modifiers. There was no modifier cards, but all these dice are going to go back in the bag if you could do that. Then we return all cards from discard spaces to hand spaces, which where did all our cards go? Oh, mine is here. Right. Yeah, sorry. We gotta, oh, yours are right here that you used. Yeah, yeah. We got to put the cards where they go. So sorry. I, I was laying them out here so we did them all in the right order, but uh, both these cards. Both these cards have the spent icon, so instead of going to my discard pile, they need to shift to the right. I don't know, I guess the arrow doesn't really match that, but uh, it still shows you the arrow right here to go to the spent. So I've spent these two cards. I can't get them back until I rest, but I have my class ability that I could reuse a card if I needed to. Uh, then the rest of the cards I'm just going to keep here in my hand space. Oh yeah, I should do so that. So I don't get any of my discards back because they're spent. I got mine back because mine is not... Mine is yeah, just yours discard. doesn't have that symbol on the top left. Yeah. Okay. So then we flip the rest token on the party journal face up. Oh, it, is it already is face up because we've never rested. But you have to do at least another check, a combat test, or something to flip it again, so you don't rest back to back. And then review the current storybook entry and resolve the outcome of the skill check, pass or fail. Okay. Well, so to pass, pass, if all dice slots are covered, you fail. If not all dice slots are covered, so. It says, pass. You sneak past the trap. It, uh, go to uh, Adventure Book 1-11. Uh, with great skill and precision, you pass through the tripwires and head toward the Dragul camp, prepared to take them by surprise. You hope that the rogue is having as much luck on his side of the lake. So we must record the keyword clear. Okay. This might be a slight issue, but... So recording the keyword clear. Tarek is handling his side of the lake. Remove the other encounter token from the adventure map and return to the box. So that's him going through here. He's already done this encounter, I guess. And he bumped into it, so he cleared that way for us. Hopefully it went okay for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it says, uh, continue to adventure 1-14. Well, so it's not distracting. Oh, yes, thank you. No, you're fine. What's on the back? Is it cooler? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's That's cool. definitely cooler. Yeah. That's definitely cooler. All right. Uh, before heading forward to the camp, you take a moment to catch your breath. The crescent moon reflects eerily off the glass black, glassy black surface of the water. Now it's going to show us rests. So, uh, the first choice indicator below gives you the opportunity to rest. You should rest now so that you can learn how it works. See resting section on page 11 of the rulebook. So, we don't have to. We could pick the option to move to the next location and be hardcore. Mm -hmm. But we want to demo this game to you guys so you can, you know, decide if it's a game for you or not. Um, before we get into heavy spoilery stuff. So, uh, this is cool. Yeah, so we'll pick rest. So we're going to rest. So, so, uh, we don't have a reference for resting. So I will just bring it up in the rule book. So we also can learn from it. I can't find my mouse again. Uh, hmm. Where is it? Probably scroll by already. Red Sting found it. All right, resting. During an adventure, the party will need to stop and rest at times. In the storybook, the party will often find this choice indicator. Question mark. In a circle. A little tent. Rest. When the party chooses to rest, the rest token on the party journal must be face up. And the party must have at least one XP. Complete the following steps. Spend one or more XP and return the spent XP from the party journal to the supply. 
So each player then draws dice from the dice bag equal to the amount of spent XP. So if I'm looking at it, we have four fatigue. I have four I, fatigue. I have two. You have two? I'm good with just one die I, each. I think so. Because I, I, so. I don't want to give up too much XP. Because you I, might roll well and... Maybe not. Okay. Sorry. All right. So if you want to spend one <laughs> spend XP from our sheet, yep. we'll just each grab one die. There's one for you, one for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then not it yet. says each player rolls your dice and returns stamina from their fatigue box to the supply equal to the result and puts the dice back in the dice bag. Go ahead. Three. So I return all of it. Perfect. Fuck. Yes. Yay. You all did my... roll good. Great. We're going to see this being real frustrating later in the, in the playthrough. <laughs> I can tell right now. Because I don't think you can use cards and manipulate that or anything like that. No, I like don't that. think you can. So this could get a little annoying. All right, we're back to fresh. <laughs> but uh, this is also why I think they don't let you do the rest back to back. Because we could spend one XP, see how it goes. And then immediately rest again and spend more XP. So, yeah, you got to kind of make the judgment call on how much XP to spend. You know, and kind of guesstimate, and you could waste XP because you could roll really well, or you could spend too much XP and then just roll a bunch of ones, and like, you know, Kanji would do, and then, or Mel did there on the first <laughs> one. But at least she did it at the right time, I think. I did. I think it was good. It was fine. So, yeah. Stay tuned for Rob to want to flip the table at some points, I'm sure, and, and not want to <laughs> play the game anymore based on rolling on recovering fatigue. But hopefully the rest of the game distracts me from this. Uh, each player fills their attribute rows up to their attribute scores, so we now get all of our stamina back. Uh, and Dude. if we had extra stamina, it says here, it gets returned to the box. So there are ways to get more cubes here, I guess, than what you have for numbers. Um, but you would lose that right now. So resting has that cost to it also. Um, and then each player whose class card is face down flips it face up. So if I had spent my class card, I would flip this face up, but we're not. And then each player returns all bonus play tokens from their fatigue box. So if we ever use that bonus play token to play an extra card, um, it would go to your fatigue box and you put it back right now when you rest. And then uh, each player returns all cards from their spent space. So I get my spent cards back to my hand. Nice. Then I flip the rest token from the party journal face down, please. So that it shows we can't just rest again. I know, it's weird. You gotta flip yeah, it like the other way. Yeah, that's weird. It's fine once you get used to it, I guess. Even though there in the picture it shows you flip it the other way, but that's fine. All right. I'll get used to it. Okay. And unlike most choice indicators, the rest choice indicator never directs the party to another storybook entry. After resting, the party must read the list of choice indicators in the current storybook entry and choose another one from the list. So we would go back to that book. So obviously resting didn't send us anywhere. So obviously we go here and what's the other option? Well, we're going to move, right? Mm -hmm. So let's... So we're going to move to there. Move to, to the goblin camp. Move to the next location on our path. Okay. So I'm going to close this book of encounters. Because we're not doing that. And now we've arrived at location B, the goblin camp. So then I go back to our storybook, I'm assuming. And I find B, the goblin camp. And I start reading just entry B with no number behind it. Passing storybooks. When the party arrives at a new location, the players holding the storybook and Tome of Encounters should pass them to the players on their left. Ooh, again, we don't care about this, but I just wanted to tell you guys we weren't doing that so you know. Uh, keyword checks. Some of the action indicators below check for keywords. If you have the indicated keyword, turn to the entry named. Remember to resolve the action indicators from top to bottom, turning to another entry immediately when instructed to do so. Now that you've arrived at the Goblin Camp, pass the storybook to the next player and read through the list of actions below. So, now, here's our list of things. If there's no XP at this location, go to B1. Well, there is XP because we've never been here before. Otherwise, collect the XP. So if you can grab that XP, throw in our party's sheet. So now we continue down. If you have the keyword null, B7. I'm assuming if we went to the null camp, that would have probably oh, happen. True, we do it not. It didn't. If you have the keyword alarm, go to B2. We don't have we that. Do if you have the keyword clear, continue reading. So Thank we're going to continue reading. The light of several small campfires flickers through a chaotic group of boar hide tents. Short, long-eared silhouettes move busily about, pulling up stakes and securing provisions. It seems the goblins are preparing to move, likely in retreat. While they are distracted with their work, you sneak around their perimeter, whittling down their numbers one by one and pulling the bodies away into the dark. It is not long, however, before a goblin sentry spies you. She raises a horn to rally her kin. You race forward to silence her. And Mr. Ace Bones, thank you for subscribing. Thank welcome, you so much. Thank welcome, you, thank welcome you. to the channel. Welcome to the channel. All right, combat. 
Well, now we're going to see some combat, I guess. Oh, exciting. Cover all dice slots on the enemy card with dice matching the indicated number and color. See combat section on page 14 of the rulebook. So it looks like we're having a combat against a cornered goblin, enemy number 22. So cornered is a modifier card. So if you want to pass me the modifier cards. So it's this little deck of modifier cards here. Uh, so there's a ton of them. And we're going to find cornered, which is going to change up the combat. Or if we were just fighting against a normal goblin, I guess. And cornered. At the start of the skill check, or each round of this combat, add a random die to the dice pool. This does not count against the dice limit. So it looks like we got the oh. jump on it. It's scared and cornered, so nice. we get a bonus. So they're not always going to hurt us, I guess. Uh, so you take That's those away. And here's the cornered goblin. Uh, oh, I guess he's uh, kind of like this. So it's a little dice placement, just like the skill checks we did, except for it's going to be three rounds. Always combat is three rounds. There's a little round tracker here. So we start with the cube here, and at the end of the first round, if it's still going, we're going to suffer one fatigue, I think is how that works. Yes. So we put from the supply of fatigue into our, so it's like a counter attack. And if we last three rounds, in the start of the third round, we'd get hit by two. And then if it goes to move again, we still haven't defeated and we lose. Or if we both get exhausted before that happens, we also lose. Any of these we don't cover, when the round ends, we also get hit. So anyone again, I'm getting like super sleeping god vibes here. <laughs> Feels like very similar to that. Um, you want to like specifically try to cover up things so we don't get hit back. And this would make us lose XP, right? So if we do not cover this, I think we lose XP, no? No, I think those are the are rewards. Those rewards. Yeah. So Let's double check. We can double check because this game has a cool little iconography in the back. So let's double check. Oh, yeah, because it's not a minus. It's not a minus. I was thinking of this one, return to indicate, oh. but it's this one. It's a reward icon because it's a positive number. Got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, easily fixed. Man, see, the, see, the playing lighter game is so nice when you just look up stuff. So, Mr. East Bones, who's our new subscriber here, says, Hello, eyes waving. Recent Hi. viewer, you guys helped me through my quarantine. You Aww. guys helped us through quarantine too, so I appreciate it. Yeah. I know what that means. I, I understand uh, how, how that feels. Uh, watching, I watched hours of Dune and Star Wars Outer Rim. Keep up the great videos, guys, no matter how long they are. Yes! Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and, and trust me, these playthroughs of roleplay adventures, they're gonna get they're gonna be long, I'm sure. They'll be they'll be long. Yeah, buckle in. Yeah, so and let's enjoy the ride. When we do combat, do we wanna put it on top of this? Yeah, 100 yeah, okay, percent okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because okay. you wouldn't be doing a skill check at the same time, yeah, exactly. I don't think as a combat. So okay. this will be our little combat enemy area, I think tool fit okay. or whatever. Perfect. Uh, worst case, we have room oh, around yeah, the room table. Everywhere. We can move stuff around. It's all good. I thought of that. I, I don't know how many enemies, how crazy it could get, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't remember where I was. Uh, you were talking about that guy. We're, we're, we're talking about... Um, we're on B. Oh, yeah, right here. All right, I'm like oh. losing my page, which could be bad. Uh, all right. Cornered Goblin 22. So we're going to go into combat. So let's throw our Cornered Goblin... Let's throw them down here. Okay, I'll add one token here. At the start of this skill okay, check, so or each round of this combat, so this is the start of a round, yes, we add a random die. So when we get to that point, we'll add a random die. Yeah. So after we've already spent our dice and stuff yes. like that, we'll just get another yeah. one? Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Okay, so now we spend stamina to add. So I'm thinking we need a white, a red, a green, or a black. Yes. So, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, that's a black, green, a white five, a red five, and a black or green six. Oh, we need some high up numbers. High on numbers, this one. high okay. numbers. And then we put our little round track, this little green cube here, to track the rounds of combat. Only three rounds, no matter what. Okay. I'm thinking that I would be okay to put in two stamina for a red die. Okay. You have, oh, okay, I see. Uh, I, I mean, I, I could do the two black again. Okay, and then we'll have... Oh, sorry, I'll get them out, sorry. A red, you want Wait, to Wait, I can turn dice to black, or was it any color? For me, I could turn... Oh, I can turn a one or a three to any color. Oh, I can turn any color to a black or a blue. I can turn any color to a blue or a white. So I think for the white, we're good. So if you want to do... We don't spend anything other than... I don't know. The red. I'm assuming we'll have to rest again. Yeah, I assume so as well. Because like intro, right? It's going to let yeah. us rest like right after this. And we're gonna again, take should we some, spend XP? We're going to take some fatigue here. 
right? Likely we're not going to cover it in one shot. Oh, no, we will. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, let's... Uh... If you can change any color, but again, we can only play three cards. So... Oh, yeah. Right? We can't... So this guy's obviously is super easy. I know. And we keep getting a random dice added. Yeah, so what we'll but get... I, I don't want to keep getting hit. So let's just do this. You're going to take a black? Yeah, we'll take a black. Okay. So now I, we would normally pull one more, but because we're cornered, we're going to pull two? Uh, yes. Wait, uh, yeah, our combat die is limited to three. So this is our combat die. Okay. Sure. Another and then now one. we get another random one. Oh, we got a white one. Okay, this is not bad. So we have all the colors we need. We just need to roll what we need. Um, okay. Do you want me to roll or do you want to roll? Uh, you can roll. Okay. I, I, I want to take it can't, it can't be that bad again, right? Take the stress off my shoulders. <laughs> oh. Okay. Better. Okay. So, so we did literally, need... before even manipulating, I'm just going to place yeah. for funds. Yeah. What well, we can. Uh, a black is covered there. Hold a on. red needs we to need be adjusted to... by one. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Let's... Oh, I can. Oh, I can only flip it. Hold on, hold on. Let's check. I can re-roll a red. Yeah, I can re-roll a red, but hold on. Uh, I can see. only up or down a uh, white. That's not enough. Yeah, see, once I get used to the cards, then I'll start pulling out black dice anyway and then changing them or whatever. You know what I mean? Once you know, like, the certain dice you're good with and you can manipulate them. But, uh... I could play, I could re-roll the red and see what happens. Not yet. But I don't know what we're going to do about the white. I can re-roll a white or a red with my chain tuning. Can you not do the same? Oh, red yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about the red one, though. But um, then do we have a way to manipulate it? No. I have a way to manipulate the white one. What happens to the dice we don't place? We go through the same process again of buying dice if we want, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So right now this one's locked in. If but we want it to be. Unless... If we want it to be, but it's, it's kind of terrible if you look at this because it's only covering a one yeah, hit we back. Yeah, we need five. to get So do we have a way to convert? Oh, actually, can, I don't. can you reduce a red? No, I can only reduce a white or a blue. Oh, no. Yeah. But again, I can re-roll this red and we see what happens. Okay. Okay, wanted to start there? Because then maybe sure. you re-roll it. So I'm going to spend yeah, let's just move my these first card. Here for now. Reroll this. We were hoping for a five. <laughs> I don't know. A four. Can you up it one? one? No. Oh. Otherwise, I would have done that already when it was a six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's on the other side of this? A three. Because I can flip to the other side, but... I can re-roll it. Okay, try. Huh. Four. Nope. nope, same thing. Doesn't help. Oh, so we played, okay. Um, Damn it. Hmm. If you can flip a white. I can flip a white. Then yeah, flip the white, it becomes the five to cover this three at least. Oh, flip. Uh, yeah, I can flip in any right? color. Doesn't it go to five? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to play that? Uh, well, it has to be, oh, a, it has one to be a one or a four. four. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Noob. Oh, or I can flip a red. And that would go to, that a, would go three. to a three. Yeah. No. Oh, I didn't even notice it was a one or a four. Can't we well, I, we can lower the one to a one. Oh, but then it goes to a six. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You can't lower past one or or. Above. No, if I if I lower it to one and then I flip it. Oh. It goes to a six. Which is not enough. Which is not enough. Then we have to lower it back down again. Why would you do that? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Not enough cards. <laughs> <laughs> we suck. I don't know if normal to suck on this one, but. I'd say we just do it. I just don't know. Does every player take this fatigue? Yeah. Yeah, you know for sure. Um, end around. Suffer counterattacks or uncovered dice slots. Yeah. Each player adds the indicated stamina from the supply to their fatigue box. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I get it. I get it. All right. So we can't like divvy this up. So we each we'd each put six fatigue in here plus one from the next round. Yep. Man, gotta be a way. There, I, I guess just because we're new, can you, we don't have all the cards. You can up or down a white die, though, no? Uh, a black. A black only. Yeah. But then you can change the color of it, maybe, right? Can I change anything to... No, to a black or blue. I can change a red to anything. So technically, I could change yes. the red to 
to a white, and then I can up, but I'd have to play that bonus play. That's fine. That's fine? Yeah. Okay, so I'll change this red to a white. Okay, so with it's a, a white card. four now. That's discarded. Yeah, yeah. I'll spend this bonus play. Yeah, it goes to your fatigue. Goes to my fatigue to up a white die by one. Okay, so this white five goes, goes here. This black six goes here. Yeah. And, and now I don't know how, but maybe we'll draw a red one. Right, because we're going to redraw dice. Okay, so now uh, you're saying. So, oh yeah. So we did the whole building the dice pool. We are trying to manipulate our dice. The same as the skill check, right? Same as the skill check. Yeah. Uh, activate. Oh, class abilities. Am I, I don't think. Uh, amount of stamina. Oh, mine's only from a spent space. I can play another card. Return any amount of stamina from your strength attribute roll, which I have one, to flip an equal amount of dice in the dice pool to their opposite side. I could only flip one. Could that have worked? Then the, That's what we're trying to do, is you just could have flipped the white with that ability, right? And then we didn't have to change the color of this and manipulate and all that stuff. That was all the waste. Oh, I see. So just undo do that if you want. Okay, so then... It's cheaper, right? It's yeah, like it's cheaper. So then I didn't need to spend these two cards. Okay, we're figuring it out. We're uh, okay, so return any amount of stamina from your strength attribute row. So I have one uh, to the supply. So this is like... Flip an equal number, I did one, of dice in the dice pool to their opposite face. So this is what we had after I spent my reroll, I got it to be a four, so I we just see, left I it see. as red. Mm -hmm. Then you did that to flip I thought I could this. only do it with red, but yeah, it's, it's any color. Yeah. And if we could only do that, but I don't, I don't have a way to increase. I can change it to a three, but that's not helpful. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's cheaper, right? Then you're playing a whole bunch of cards using up the bonus play. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I need to move that. I'll move it. I'll move it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're learning our cards here. Okay, okay. So I just played my warrior ability, and I spent one strength, my last strength that I had for my strength row. Yeah, because then we keep the bonus play in case we need it. Yeah, I'll put it over here, or I don't know. Whatever. I do like that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so then that would be the end of that. All right. Uh, so, back to this. Um, end of round, we suffer counterattacks for uncovered dice slots. So this is a three on this one. Okay. One, two, three. Three for you. Okay. And one, two, three for me. So sorry, what are the bigger denominations? It's threes. Ones and threes. Okay. But we also can, there is tokens. There's also tokens. There's tens and fives to help you with little clear cubes when you start running out. Okay. Uh, so I can put this in here to replace, oh, sorry, this one in here. To replace the five, for example. Okay, so that I could do like that, even though I'll be needing to make change anyway, but just to show that those exist in the game. Okay. Okay, uh, so that was that. We both suffered our fatigue. Okay, and then apply round track effect and advance the round track marker so we each suffer one more fatigue right mm -hmm. and you have one over yep. there okay all right and then return remaining dice from the dice pool to the dice bag and start a new round of combat so then we go right back up to building the dice pool okay so we need a red die but i don't have any stamina but I do have, oh, yeah. I do have where I can change any die to, oh no, any red to, oh no, I don't have that. So what we could do is spend three cubes from other stats yeah. to make up for it. Two, four, six. So uh, we'll just do that? that to show it. So okay. I'll spend one strength. I'll spend one in constitution. Okay, I'll spend one in. Oh yeah, you have less than me, okay. Constitution, sure. And then you spend one in some, I... I'll spend one more. Oh, I see, because, uh, oh, are you I sure? don't know. This is, like, very expensive. It might be stupid, but... I can spend one more. Sure. I don't know. Okay, and we get I'm a red die. Two, four, six, eight. I'm half. I'm at eight. Oh, yeah, because you have the five there. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. We're fine. We got a red for sure. We got a red for sure. Now you're going to pull the rest out for a limit plus a bonus one. We could have just, like, let it go. I know, but... Okay, one... Oh, there we go. We but we'll it. take two counterattack plus three more again. Another bonus. We did get, oh, we did get red. two reds, so we do have... It uh, just increase our odds, Yeah, right? we do have better odds. And a black I can convert to another color, I think. I can flip a red, so... 
All right. Okay. So I, I don't know if this will do it. Sorry, we got a six and a four of red. But we have white, uh, sorry, blue and black at one, which could be flipped to fives and converted if, or the other way around, possibly. Yeah. I can flip a one. one. You can flip a one to a five. But then we also have to change the color. And then changing a color to red. We can't, right? Because that's what we had trouble with before. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I have malicious. I can change a one to any color, including see through green. <laughs> uh, so I could change a, a one to a red. Okay. And then I'll do that by playing this to my spent file. And then you flip, flip a the one, one of any color. Mel's going to flip a one of any color to the yep. opposite side. Let me flip this one to a six. And this goes to your discard. Yep. And this becomes a six red. Oh, but no. then we have to lower it by oh, one. Oh, sorry. What was I thinking? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot about the manipulate in between. Hold on. Can I do a... Uh, I guess it wouldn't... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I forgot the, uh, the, the black one. Oh, you the, do black the black one. one. You need to so change it first. Before it's black. Oh, no, but then I can't change it. Because it needs to be a one to be changed. Oh, I see the dilemma so here. So messy. I see the dilemma here. Uh... You can't, don't have a way to manipulate reds? Up or down one? No. I can manipulate blues and whites. Up or down one. It's gotta be a way. Gotta be a way. Oh! What if you... Take your card back there, you rewound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you up this one, then can you change it to a red? No, right? Uh, no, only a I one or a three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Up the black one, then flip. We can't. But then we can't turn it to red, We can't right? turn it to red. Or can I? I can't. No, I don't think I can. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, yeah. I, that's like you're looking to. one, flip, then change to red. But then we can't flip it because it has to be a one or a three for Rob to flip it. You have... No, I have... This blue is not going to do anything, so let's just put it down. This white's not going to do anything. These are the only cards. I can change any card. That doesn't matter. These are the only cards that I can manipulate with reds. I can flip a red. So the moral of the story is we need to spend our XP and gold to buy a better card uh, <laughs> in the game. We're going to lose this combat. Blue plus one, flip it and change to red. Yeah, I don't think we have a, a change to red is the problem. Because like, I only can change ones or threes. And then once we change it to red... It, it, we can't manipulate it by moving it up or down. <laughs> Serenity now. I wish Get my trap back. Oh, I can't. No. You have a way? No. No. You have a way to get cards back. But only from... Um, add three stamina to your fatigue box from the supply. Play a card from your hand as a copy of a card in your spent space. You could re-roll the red. Oh, spent space. Spent space, yeah. It's only spent. Yeah. I don't know that we're going to get it this time. I think we might have to try one more time. Didn't Rob have a red minus one? No. No. I have this one to change blacks up or down. And purple. This is not a red, unfortunately. It's a purple. Yeah. It looks more pink, but I think it's purple. I mean, you can hold it beside that one, which is red. Just to see yeah. the difference. Yeah. 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 See, color is different. Yeah. Damn it. So close. So let's not waste the cards. Yeah, I think we just have to take our take the hits. Take our loss on this one. That's but so bad. that's terrible. This is, we're getting crushed by this guy. Hold on. What? You what can you do if it's a one or a three? Only flip it, right? Change the color of it. Oh, change the color of it. <laughs> well, yeah, we might not be able to do this because we won't be able to, it, like, we're running we out of fatigue can't. to get reds again, so we might throw those reds back in and not see them again. Yeah, we're going to be just taking our chances. So bad. This is terrible. We're going to lose our intro. We're going to lose on the back. corner. Who didn't use it. Who, me? Oh, me. I didn't use it. Oh, okay. You put it there. Oh, I didn't use it. I see, I see, because we, re we reround. Thank you, thank so you. So can you do it with that? Flip I can a flip one. a one or a four. I can flip the four, but it just turns it to a three. I can 
a one or a six. Yeah, we can't manipulate reds. That's a problem. Can't manipulate reds. Uh, yeah. So, I don't think we can. Yeah, I don't think we can do it. God, be away. <laughs> that's so horrible. And we already did re-roll the dice last turn. Yeah, we both, we, we we both used have... our re-rolls. Yeah, re-rolls. Yeah. And we can't get them back that I know of. <laughs> How do I do this? Do it to a red. Yeah. Yeah, like just flipping them doesn't help us. I don't know. Like we just, their numbers are just like bad. Yeah. We're going to be in trouble, I think, next turn. That's fine. Maybe we just lose this combat and we show what happens when we lose. Okay, hold on. You have a way. <laughs> To change a red into any color. Yep. But that's not really helpful in this case because we need the red. Can you... But... Yeah, but if you can change it to... Hmm. How do I do this? Oh, yeah. I can't change it back. I can only change any color to a black. We need a red. I'm trying to think of a way to change the color. Do then change it and back. Then change it back. Yeah. But we don't have that. That's okay. Like the only thing I could do, no, I is if I change the color to white, then I can increase it by one. But then again, we don't have a way to turn it back to a red from a white. Do you have a way? Only if it's a one or a three. No, it would be a five. I can change it from any color to a black or a blue. No, not helpful. <laughs> not helpful. Can you convert red to another color, tick it up, then convert it back? That's exactly yeah, what I'm just that's what we're trying to figure out. So I could do that because I can convert the red to any color, making it white. Then I could tick it up, but then we can't turn it back to red. It's okay. All right. No, I think we can't. Yeah. So we take the hits. Three oh, each. You have? Yep. And then I need one more because we're going to get hit by the fatigue of the round. This is our last chance. Oh, sorry. I thought you said you need one more. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I did Three, one six, more, but I have one in hand. Nine. Three, six, nine, twelve out of sixteen. I'm at. Okay, so we clean these up. I'm at thirteen out of sixteen. <laughs> so bad. Oh yeah, because we have to take two, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah for the sorry. round, that's why I asked for yeah. the extra. There we go. Okay. That's okay. Good. Okay. So, do we just take our? I can't spend to get dice to go because I would go exhausted, right? If I spent three to make. Oh a yeah, red. yeah. So we. Same. So we're just we're yeah. just pulling four and seeing what happens. So unfortunately, we're like back against the wall based on almost complete randomness here. We just need some red, okay? Purple or something we can change or something. I don't know. No. <laughs> and then we get a fourth because he's cornered. Oh, we didn't even get a red. All right, you roll them up. Oh man, I don't even think Roll I can turn it to red. <laughs> Alright, I can tick up the white. But I don't think we can change it to red. You can uh, only change the red to any color. No, I can't change it to red. So lame. Yeah, like, I can change a 1 or a 3 to red. But then we're in the same pickle. Like... Okay. Hold on. Oh, this right. is silly. Yeah, yeah once we, we just can't beat this guy because we suck at red, I guess. I don't know. Or a reroll sucked, or it's weird. It doesn't make sense, but it's early. We haven't got beefed up yet. I guess it makes sense. I, I do have a card to each player returns two stamina from their fatigue box to supply. So if that helps, oh, because they're getting... both going to die. Yeah, I know. Well, we're dying for sure, but also to play. Uh, to do abilities, like, I can't do this one, it, or else I, I would die, right? Can that help us? I don't know. No. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I can't do anything. It has to be black. It has to be a one or three. I could change any color to blue or black. Doesn't really help. We were in that same pickle last time. I can adjust a black or a purple. I could turn the purple to a five. Yeah, but then I can't turn it red. Yeah, it's just the changing things to red. It's like, why do we suck at that? I can only turn any color to blue or white. <laughs> and I can turn a red to any color. <sighs> but not the opposite. Yeah, turning things to red is like what we suck at. 
Spend the card, it'll reduce the amount of fatigue you have. Yeah, I'm gonna do this one. Both my spent pile. We both get to heal. Yeah, we return two stamina from our a little pool to supply. Okay. Okay. Does that that doesn't help you now, right? Help us win? No, because okay. I, I can spend three stamina and do it again, but then I just gain stamina out of it, but you lose, which is good, but I don't know. Yeah. Well technically we won't die because we'll just take three from him. Yeah, true. Because you just recovered us. Yeah, so let's just Unless, do that. Okay. Okay, so let's so, go. Let's just wrap this combat up. This is yeah. taking way too long for the tutorial combat. But, like, <laughs> man, I thought we could figure it out. Uh, all right. Just the, the dice luck is not there. We need more manipulation, which I know we'll get more. I see all the cards beside us in the, the trays. I'm sure there's more. Uh, gain rewards for covered dice slots. So we just get one so XP. So one right? XP. Okay. Okay. Return all dice. Round markers, enemies, modifiers, all where they go. So right. Put those back in their decks, and the, and the enemies have to go in, play, in that proper number. Mm -hmm. uh, return all cards from discard spaces to hand spaces. So I get back my chain tunic. Yeah, and I get my, my but move silently back. stays in the spent. Review the current storybook entry and resolve the outcome of the combat, victory or defeat. So again, to be victorious, all dice slots had to be covered. But they weren't. Oh, so. so did we? We didn't have to take that three damage, or did we? Uh, for the uncovered. Oh yeah, maybe. Did that, did that on there? Did I miss that? End of a round. Yes. Yeah, sorry. End of a round. Suffer counterattacks for uncovered dice slots. Okay. Apply the round track effect and advance round marker. Return any dice from the, yeah. So that. Okay. So we still take. Three, we already one, two, would have done that. Yeah. Three. So I take three more. Yeah. Three six. So I'm at fourteen. Four, I was sixteen. Same. Okay. Uh, then. Uh, where's this guy? We were on. B. B something. So, Vic, uh, defeat. You have set fire to the camp and flee. B6. Okay. B6. All right. The goblin sentry sounds her horn, summoning her kin, who quickly overwhelm you. Outnumbered, you set fire to their tents and flee into the darkness beyond. To your surprise, the goblins make no effort to pursue you or to put out your fires. Instead, they gather their meager belongings and begin to march to the north, back towards their homeland. It seems they have had enough of this war. By the light of the burning camp, you find something they left behind. Uh, reveal discovery card 95. The discovery card, 95. Oh. We found the ancient key. Which we don't need stamina to use. Yes. That's good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Put that with our items and boom, boom, boom. Uh, then record the keyword goblin. Another fire rises from across the lake. You trust that Tarek is making good progress and will meet you at the fortified gate ahead. If your entire party is exhausted, mark the death track and read the corresponding entry in the Tome of Encounters. See the exhaustion section on page 16 of the rulebook. Sorry, I just also have to reset this because that would have happened at the end. Yes. The oh, yeah, yeah, there was, yeah, yeah. Nope, that's okay. Yeah, flip the rest token on the party journal face up. Yeah, sorry, I said that, I think, but we didn't do it. Item combinations. When a choice indicator offers the opportunity to use an item, you may also use the two items at the same time. To do so, combine the location, letter, and both item numbers with the lowest number first, and turn to that entry in the storybook. Each player places stamina into their fatigue box from the supply, equal to the total cost of both items. You cannot use the same item in uh, combination twice in the same location. So now it's given us the choice of using an item, resting, or move to another location. Mm -hmm. I mean, should we rest? Because then if we want to use other items... I think we should use the combination item because it's kind of telling us to do so, but... Which would put us one away from death. But, I think it'll but do we rest fun. first? Sure. Just so we have more stamina? Yeah, let's rest. Or less fatigue? Okay. So how much fatigue do you want to spend? Two, four... We have five. XP? XP, sorry, yeah. Uh, XP, sorry. Uh, I would two at say least. at least two. Yeah, I would be down with two at least. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, we spend two. Yep. Now we'll get out two dice each. Uh, five. So I remove five. I should have nine in there. I also remove five. One, two. I want to yeah, really take some of these. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, uh, what's all the rest stuff? Uh, I wish they had a the reference token. for resting. 
your spent cards go back to your hand. Like any you, I guess you probably rest a lot in this game, so you just get used to it. Yeah. So we're gonna fill our rows back oh, up. Oh yeah, fill our rows back up. Okay, this card goes back to my hand. Um, flip this face up. Your class card. Oh yes, thank you. That. And bonus play tokens go back to the thing. We'll get used to it after we do it a few times for sure. And the rest token uh, is yes. now used. Okay. All right. Now you want to use an item? Yeah. Just try the combination for fun? Sure. So we're at location B. We have items what numbers? 65 and 95. Oh, we should have done it first. That ah, doesn't matter. We'll, well, we didn't have a lot of stamina. Yeah, I just yeah. was worried that if it makes us. So we both have to spend one stamina from the supply. Yeah. Take one fatigue. Or one fatigue. I'm so sorry. So boom. Now that's 10. All right. Okay, and then we can use them both together. So 65 I'm and looking 95. for B65.95. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I don't think I would always do this. I don't do think this. a fireball and a key is going to go together, but maybe. You balance the blue stone fireball on the end of the ancient key. Oh. It is a delicate and dangerous act. If the bottle should drop and crack, it would surely engulf in a powerful blast of flame. So you tuck them away before you harm yourself. Use another <laughs> item. Rest or move to another location. Well, we can't rest uh, unless we want to. Yeah, use we the... can rest again. I think no, because we're not. We're flipped. Oh, we I see. To, yeah. I see. It blocks you. I yeah. get it. I get it. But we could probably use the yeah, key it's by a new itself. List. I thought it was a new list. Yeah, yeah. Let's use the key. Sure. So just ninety-five. C ninety-five. Yeah. You examine an ancient key in the Knoll encampment, and you decide to look around to see if there's anything here it might unlock. Kicking through the ashes of the tent, you uncover a small chest. The key doesn't fit, but you manage to spring the lid open anyway with a bit of force. You find a diary inside. Oh. On the last page, you read of the poor creature's despair at the prospect of losing this war. Apparently, the northern lands have already been destroyed. The Dragul have no place to call home. Gain one XP. Oh, awesome. Now we can use another item, but I don't think we should because we're saving we the blue for the gate. But yeah, again, the intro book, I feel like it'll just keep letting us get away with it. But or we can probably move. later or not. Uh, or we can move to another location. I feel like we need to move then. Let's move to the outposts. All right. We're in D. Let's go to D. Outpost wall. Why are you reading C? He said. Am I reading C? Oh, sorry. I thought, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Thanks, Edgar. Thank you for catching that. So maybe that does change things. Yeah, completely wrong. Wow. So B6595. I think I read that. No, it is different. Oh, okay. oh my bad. My okay, bad. Let's sorry, go back guys. here. No, no, no. That doesn't change anything. Why was yet. I there? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I messed up. Uh, B6595. Finding no use for the items together, you decide to juggle the ancient key and the bluestone fireball. It's a risky act, but you juggle with great skill. Too bad the goblins aren't around to be impressed. When you're done, you feel invigorated. Nothing like a bit of juggling to get the blood flowing. Each player, uh, so we don't get oh, the we XP. Oh, we don't get the XP. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, at least I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Each player add one stamina to your dex attribute. Okay. okay. Uh, from the supply, ignoring the usual limit. So now we can use another item, which uh, we would do the key. B95. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's okay. And that doesn't cost any... The ancient key has a nice weight to it. You suspect that it must unlock something of great value. That's all it says. Okay. Nothing crazy. All right, then uh, we could use another item, rest, or move to another location. So now we move to the location. Now we move to the location. Now we're moving to D. And then D, yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm sloppy with it. Sorry, guys. I'm like a little overwhelmed streaming and playing a game for the very first time. <laughs> Not feeling comfortable with it at all because I've never played it before, but I, I will mess up. Uh, that was me being nervous. Sorry. All right, D, outpost wall. If you have the keyword open, go to D2. No. If there is no XP at this location, D1. Otherwise, collect the XP from this location and continue reading. You approach the fortified outpost as the moon sets, leaving you in utter darkness. Behind you, twin fires burn on either side of the shimmering black lake. You feel your way across the rough wood of the outpost's massive gate and can find no handle or latch. Yet the gate holds firm. It must be barred from within. Behind this wall, the Dragul are protecting a powerful artifact. Tarek Nolan, uh, Nolan the halfling, is nowhere in sight. So now we can use an item. We can rest, but we can't. Uh, or move to another location. So let's use an item. Okay. So here we're using... Do you want to use the combination? Or just a key? <sighs> what? Or do we I use... I feel like the, the bomb. The, instead, use the bomb oh, at the yeah. gate. Okay, so let's use the bomb. 
We could try the key for fun. Let's try the key first. Okay. I don't know. Hopefully it lets us. All right. The key doesn't cost any anything yeah, to Yeah, let's use. just try so the key. That's 95. D95. D95. Okay. Uh, you try the ancient key on the gate, but there is no luck for the key to... Uh, no lock for the key to fit into. It's a fortified outpost gate held in place by a heavy bar on the inside. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. Okay, so now we'll use the bomb, right? So which is which is D65. D65, and we have to spend one stamina. Okay. Uh, D65. Uh, you uncork the blue stone fireball at the base of the fortified gate and run for cover. The thunderous explosion tears, tears a wide flaming hole in the wall, giving you a passage through. Map cards. The oh. second action indicator below tells you to reveal a discovery card that is not an item. Some discovery cards will update your map. The bottom left corner of these cards indicate where they will go on the adventure map. In this case, place the outpost interior, discovery card 16, on the map coordinates, uh, dot four. Remember to add one XP to the new location from the supply. Okay, card so record the keyword open first. Okay. Can you not just reach and write? I thought you'd be able to just reach and write it. We're uh, going to erase that in an adventure anyway, so, so don't worry messy? if it's sloppy. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just write whatever. I thought you just reach up and write quick. I can, I can try, really yeah. Okay. You can change these to be there and move that down if that makes it closer and easier. Mm, yeah, that probably will. Okay, and you said, sorry, number 16? Uh, I don't remember where it was now. I was lost. Uh, yeah. Uh, keyword open. Reveal discovery card 16 and place an XP on it. Okay, XP on it. Okay. So it tells you put it on... <laughs> Oh, I see. So there is a four here, like the coordinates. And then, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of obvious, but. Uh, that's cool. Uh, return discovery card 65 to the discovery deck, which is the oh. bomb. So we blew it up. We blew it up. And then we could rest, which we, which can't, we can't, or move to another location. So we feel like we have to move to E. Yeah, so we're going to move to E. I'm going to go to E in the book. Outpost interior. If you have the title, Revealer of Secrets, go to E18. We don't have any titles if yet. If you have the title, Rogue's Accomplice, E1. If you have the title, Aid to Ogre, E17. You must have done something wrong. Yeah, we, we didn't win that fight Other against the goblin. Oh, so. I see. Otherwise, collect the XP from this location and continue reading. I get it. We're going to get some of these, or one of them, and then get to come back here. Okay. You pass through the smoldering hole and enter the Dregul outpost. Its massive wooden walls are solid but roughly constructed. They enclose an open space, empty, except for a single chest of white metal and a gray-skinned ogre who stands before it with an iron club. The ogre shouts in the Dregul language. It's gibberish to you as if he were making all the sounds, but none of the sense of Nalo's common. Between his angry cries, he smashes the metal chest with such force that it shakes the ground around you. But the chest only rings out a remarkably pleasant tone. It remains unbroken, undented, and firmly in place. Enraged, the ogre approaches you, shouting and swinging his club wildly. As you watch his outburst, you catch a glimpse of something moving in the shadows behind him. Eric Nowlin, blade drawn, carefully approaches the ogre from the other side of the outpost. Now it's going to teach us about faction tracks. At this location, the choices you make will affect your standing with the three major factions. Find the favorite marker and place them on the zero starting space of all three tracks on your party journal. When ready, make your choice about how to deal with the ogre. We could attack the ogre. Oh no. <laughs> we could attack the ogre with a fight. Go to E2. We could try to understand what he is saying using a test for intelligence and wisdom. Go to E3. And that's it. I don't know that a fight is a great idea when we're very uh, high in fatigue, right? But then also a skill check. Skill check. It doesn't hurt us. Oh, uh, what? The skill check? You think hurt if us? we fail the skill check trying to talk to this well, guy, the, yeah. he's not going to bash us with the club across the place? Come on. Potentially. Man. Try to understand what he's saying. Intelligence and wisdom. I have one and one. I have zero on one. Hmm. But I probably wouldn't. But we could spend cubes from other places. But yeah, then but we don't have a lot. So where am I at? I'm at 11. So here, let me move these. 10, 10, 11, same. I'm at 11 out of 16, so we have five to spare. I have a card that can help us get two back, but it's also a card we're not playing to help us in the test. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you if you think... I say try to understand what he's saying. Yeah, okay, I agree, because I don't know that a fight is a great idea. All right, so E3. Oh. As Tarek creeps closer, you try to understand what the ogre is saying. Ragul and Nalo's common. 
are not completely divorced. A thousand years ago, when all Ulos, or all Lulos, lived in peace, the two languages were a single tongue. But after all these creatures of, uh, all these, uh, sorry, but after all these centuries of separation, it is no simple task for you to comprehend the ogre's angry rants. Skill check, interpretation one. <laughs> oh, I see. There's a line here. Jana saying this. This lines up with the left. I see. I see. So it says fine row four, and kind of like you'll see the edges. I get it. I get it. Yeah. There's like little stars at the intersections. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So we have interpretation. Dice limit four. We need a white two, a blue four, and a white or blue three. Okay. Yeah, at least we can manipulate white and blues if okay. we can get the dice out of the bag. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, see what happens here. Okay. Let's throw that off do you want to spend any fatigue or do we think we wait and see? Oh, we can only do this one shot. Yeah. It's all here. Hmm. If we want to go for a white, I can put one in. Like, I can make something a blue. I can make I can a take red. a one or a three to a white or blue or whatever. So I can, if we get a three, I can make it the color we need there. Okay, I can, if we get a red, I can change it to whatever color we need. As long as we get a red. I, feel like I, I can also spend... turn any color to, red, to blue and whites. Blue or whites. So maybe we just take our chances. I have a question. At the end of an adventure book... Do we clear all of our fatigue? I have no idea. I don't remember. Does anyone in the chat know? Can I, can I like end this if we don't get to rest up too much fatigue? Like, do we start the next adventure book with bad fatigue or no? I don't think so. Or probably. do we start like full health again? I think it's full, but I could be wrong. I know these numbers can change, but the, I think of fatigue, like I don't think you save that value. Uh... It tells you at the end. Oh, okay, oh okay. okay. I believe you clear. Yeah. I read the saving stuff, but again, I'm like, we'll do it on stream. So I didn't really remember it. It was a, a bit ago, but. I think we could possibly take our chances, right? If I can make one, any color but, to blue or. Like but... I, I could spend, uh, what am I at? 11. I could go to 14, 15 myself to get us like a white. Okay. Or, or, or I could do the blue. We want a blue. I could do the same with the blue. Do we get one color just so we're like... But I have to do... Oh, yeah, you just did it all. I just did it all. Okay. I don't know. And we got a blue. Okay. Because um, I think I can manipulate... I can manipulate a blue. So... Yeah. Let's get a blue. Okay. Let's get a blue. So I'm unfortunately I'm at 15 uh, out of 16. Okay. We're going to draw three more. Green. Red. I can turn a red to any color. Red. Okay. Well, we got our blue. Uh, who's rolling this one? <laughs> Wait, I have one that changed any color to blue. Oh. Yeah. I can change any color to blue as well. So. Then we should have got a white instead. Here. Yeah, oh, yeah. instead of that blue one? Yeah, yeah. That's why I originally thought white. Yeah, yeah. It's white. Yeah. It's the harder one, right? Yeah. I don't have a way to change to white, do I? Uh, I can change. I can change uh, to white or blue. Yeah. So white is what we need then, because we have more ways to change to blue, right? Yeah, and I can adjust the white or the blue. So okay. yeah, I spent from here. I spent from here instead. So I need to put one back here. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to roll or do you want to roll? You roll. Uh, I'll roll. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. The problem is I don't have my card like in my hand memorized. I'm sure we'll get used to those. Okay. Okay. We did get a white three. But do we need to manipulate it to make a white too? Because can we adjust a red and then change it to a color we need? You know what I mean? Oh, I could. Can we change a four to a blue, or a red to a blue? Hold on. Yeah, right here. Cunning, let's say cunning. Okay. I turn this and we place that, okay? Okay. Then, uh, can you change a green to a white? Yeah, I can change any color to a white. Then this becomes a white, mm -hmm. and, and then this that. just goes on here. So okay. two cards spent, right? Nice. Yeah, that works. Boom. Boom. Okay, and that will give us two XP. Two XP. And then I read whatever happens, the good stuff. 
Then okay. my hand's just going to go here. Oh, it looks like you have 16, Rob. I can spend one if needed. Because if we're doing the white, I can spend one. What did I... I think you were... Oh, because I didn't take a, one out of here. Yeah, so I, I couldn't do that. No, so, but I'll spend yeah, the white. you had to do one. You yeah, I'll spend the white. Yeah, yeah, you have to do one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am at 16. But that yeah, would kill you. I didn't take all three from here. I think I was thinking I was going to take two from here, one from something else, and one from something else, but that's that would be too many. But 16 is still too many. Yeah, yeah, so this is not really here. Oh, okay. Right? Because I just took three from a... here. I was at 11, so now I'm at 14. 14. I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah, yeah. But then you did spend... Oh, yeah. Like, and then I, I, I spent... tried to take it all, but I, I yeah, just Yeah, you did one wrong. and I did one. Yeah, okay. You just no, put no, too many. No, no, but I don't think I... No, I did take it all. And it would have put me at 15. Oh, it would have put you at 15. Oh, you just put the wrong tokens. But then I messed up because I was switching things. Yeah. Okay. So I, I did. So I should have spent three from here and I should have spent one from here. I'm and at I 15. Didn't. Okay. But yeah, I definitely messed something up there when I, when I fixed this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're sitting at 11. Yeah. Sure. And you didn't play your card, right? Or did you want to play your card? Yeah, I did play my card. It's right here. Yeah, but you could have played your other card as well to reduce the fatigue. Oh, if we're going to clear, it likely won't matter. No, I will. I could play that. Sure. Yeah, if we got a play limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we still had play limit. Each player returns two stamina from their fatigue box to the supply. Yeah, that makes sense. I need to remember that. I kind of play it whenever we have a good turn. I don't know if I have other cards. So I'm at nine. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything like that yet. It's moving silently. Okay. And then uh, we were on E3. So we pass. You roughly understand. Okay, so it's passing resolution. Gain of rewards. Return all dice and modifiers. Return all cards from hand spaces to hands. Not spent. Flip the rest token. Done. And now the outcome. Okay, pass. You roughly understand the ogre's meaning. Go to E8. Paying careful attention to the ogre's speech, you can tell that the, it, he is angry about the chest and whatever is inside it. He introduces himself as Tog, and he tells you that the Dragul invasion was meant to bring home artifacts like the one at his feet. After all the death and suffering of this war, he finally reached his mission's end, but he can neither move the chest nor open its lid. As he speaks, Tog sinks into despair. His homeland is gone. The invasion has failed. And where will the Dragul go now? His are the complaints of an invader who killed many of your compatriots and now is disappointed in his own losses at war. But your efforts to understand him have kept his attention fixed on you, allowing the halfling in black to creep ever closer to the ogre. A moment more and Tog's life will be over. We could warn Tog so that he can escape, or we can wait and let Tarek do his work. Oh my goodness. I like it. I was just also thinking about something else while you're thinking about that. I think you did have one more in here because we got the extra one from oh, deck. Oh, yes. Because I was like, why do I have two? So, yeah, you should have one. So, I did do it. You did do it right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All sorry. Right. Okay. So, we can warn him or just let, <sighs> let it happen. <laughs> so, we can let him get possibly taken out by the halfling. Do we think Tark's a good guy? No, but... Do we trust the halfling? Melod is not a dog, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I don't know. I feel like maybe we warn him? I want to know both, but yeah, let's warn him, okay. Yeah, let's warn him. I, I want to let a little halfling try to kill him. and then Okay, the, we the, can do that. We and can the halfling that. probably gets killed by this guy, but then we probably tick this guy off. Yeah, then we, we have no, to him. No, we'll just him. warn him. We'll do what you, you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E9. Okay, let's warn him. But yeah, instinctively, I was like, yeah, let him die, but we'll see. Look out, you cry. Tog is startled and leaps backward, knocking Tarek to the ground. When he sees that you have saved him from the assassination, the ogre grunts his gratitude to you, climbs up the wall of the outpost, and leaps into the darkness beyond. Tarek stands and dusts himself off. Needless to say, I'm not impressed, he says. Warning an adversary of my attack is nigh treasonous. Nevertheless, your mission is accomplished. The ogre has fled, and we are here with the chest. See, what I also think, as we know from some other games, uh, is maybe saving this guy and he runs away. He could show up at a boss fight later and help us. Yeah. 
That's something I learned as a little kid playing Nintendo games. So hopefully it works out. The other reason I was thinking <laughs> about it is because right before we went into this whole entire thing, it talked about the favors, and I figured helping him is going to give favor to us. Maybe it oh, wouldn't. Be, that's maybe we right. would lose favor the other way. So that's part of what I was thinking in my head. Ah, but I, I don't know it. if that even has anything to do with it right now. Well, it did say all our choices in this location are going to influence our yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. And I thought it might give us uh, negative if we didn't help him. You examine the area around the chest and find that the ogre has left behind his coin purse. Gain four gold. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have the gold. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> I dropped all the gold. Got caught on the giant book. <laughs> Damn giant book. Damn you, giant book. Oh, yeah, I can. There we go. We our... did it. Yeah, this is better. We did it. There we go. Bro, when you set up a game, you're not, not played. I'm yeah. uh, just trying to get it all on camera. Yeah. I didn't even think about how to how play it. It's going to work out. All right. Uh, reveal title card one. Oh, it's a title. Title yeah. card. Title Oh, title. Card. Sorry. I, as soon as I handed I it to you. I discovery card no, one as soon as you I, messed up. As soon as the, I handed it to you, I was like, game. title card, title card. Sorry. The whole game was almost ruined. Title card one. Aid to Ogre. <laughs> Jumping over the <laughs> fence. <laughs> At Black Lake, you spared the life of an ogre in the crosshairs of Tarek Nolan. Nolan. This, this kindness will not be overlooked, neither by the ogre nor by the halfling. Oh, so throw that in our title slot there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so title cards. Find the deck of title cards. Do not shuffle or examine them. They should be in numerical order as their numbers are on the backs. Find the card number three. Three? Typo. Such a typo. Yeah. I don't know which one's a typo, though. Ah, uh, that's the right card for sure, right? Yeah. Uh, well... So in the official FAQ version 1.9, so... Ugh. Uh, Adventure 1, Paddle of Black Lake, Entry E9, which is what we're reading, has rules box entitled... Yeah, I gotta look through this and put the little stickers in yeah, all the books. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. Because just like Tainted Grail, I don't want to be bumping into this stuff, getting super confused and ruining our time and wasting our time. Uh, so Entry E9 has... A, and, and our viewer's time, of course. Uh, entry E9 has a rules box entry entitled Title Cards. The fourth sentence displays the incorrect card number. It should read, find card number one and place it face up in the title space of the printer. Okay. okay, perfect. Uh, favor markers. Adjust the favor markers on the favor tracks as instructed by the action indicators below. For example, dragon head minus one instructs you to move the favor marker on the space to the left of the Dragul faction track. See faction tracks on page 11 of the rule book. Okay. So first, uh, so we're going to go in order here on this side. So move that one down one, whichever one that is, the king's favor. Okay. Uh, increase the dragon head one, which is Dragul favor. Okay. If you have both the keywords goblin and alarm, uh, no, we have Goblin. If you have both the keywords Goblin and Clear. Yes. E13. So I'm going to flip right to E13 without even continuing reading. Now that the outpost is calm, Tarek relaxes on a tree stump and carves slices from an apple. Your approach to the Goblin clamp was impressively quiet. I didn't hear you peep from your side of the lake until there was a whole lot of screaming and dying. Nice work. Continue to E21. Tarek points to the metal chest with an apple wedge. All that's left for me, he says, is to figure out what is locked inside. Upon closer inspection, you discover the white metal of the chest to be Durgolium. Durgolium, in the second paragraph there. An ancient alloy forged to contain objects from other planes. No force will crack it. Its lid must yield some other secret. You find a pear-shaped incantation indentation above its keyhole. Tarek notices your interest in the chest. You can return to your regiment now if you like, or you can stay and help me open it. Adventure complete. Your mission here is complete, leaving you to f uh, free to explore the area at your leisure. Are there parts of the lake you have not yet visited or items you have not yet found <laughs> use for? From now on, when the choice indicator gives you the opportunity to move to another location, you may instead turn to the final section of the storybook entitled The End. Now it says if your party Entire party is exhausted. Mark the death track and read the corresponding entry in the Tome of Encounters. It's not. See exhaustion. No. Exploring the map. When moving around on the adventure map, you do not need to stop at locations without XP or other tokens on them. For example, you can currently move directly to the Goblin Camp or the Knoll Camp 
because you have already cleared the XP at the outpost wall. When you return to a location that you've previously explored, make sure to read the base text of the entry again. For example, if you return to Borland Prairie A, make sure to read A entry again. So now we have the option to use an item, rest, or move to another location. I don't want to end yet. No, because we have to, I was going to say, we need to use the item uh, the ancient to key get the key, because we have to do it here. Oh, okay. Because they kept talking about the you chat. You want to do that? Yeah. Item. Uh, and we don't need to spend e anything. E what? E 95? Yeah. Uh, you insert an ancient... Oh, do we have to spend? No. No. Okay. This one's zero. You insert the ancient key into the chest. It fits the lock, but will not turn. There must be some other mechanism at work. Oh, no. That's not even it. So we could use another item, rest, or move to another location. I think we rest. <coughs> okay. So you have... Spend an XP? Do you want to spend two? Uh, or just one, because uh, one, we probably... I think it will clear. Okay, so let's spend one. We're gambling, but... Yeah. Here's a die for you. I'll roll mine. Ah, uh, I get to remove three. Okay, that's uh -huh. okay. I did, you did have a tea there, but it's probably cold now. Yeah, yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah, we will go oh, to yeah, the Knoll cool. camp. Is, yeah? Is it gross? No, it's fine. I'll heat it up later. <laughs> Whoops. Let's put it over here. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, do you want to roll your die and see how many you recover? Yeah, sure. Four. Four. I should have just removed. I'm at nine. Okay. Out of 16. Uh, so then so we're going to flip spare. this. Do you have any spent cards? They'll go back into your hand. Cool. Done. Uh, we don't have any of those. Uh, and flip our, flip our um, classes. Yep. All good. I okay. think we're okay. Okay, uh, we can move to another location. Uh, yeah, uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go get the XP. So we're gonna go to C. Let's try to do this one quicker. Noel Camp. Okay, there's no XP at the location C1. Otherwise, get the XP. If you have the keyword Goblin, C5. We yes, do, right? We do. Uh, C5. Okay. Uh, burnt tents are all that remain of the Knoll encampment. Tracks in the soil reveal the frantic movement and sudden end of the three dog pod creatures. Those bodies are not in evidence. There are no, tra uh, no tracks from Tarek's feet and no drag marks to indicate what had become of these knolls once the halfling was done with them. If you didn't know better, you would have guessed that the knolls saw a ghost, ran about wildly, and then vanished forever from this world. Tarek is more, a more formidable operative than you supposed. In the ashes of the tent, you find something he overlooked. Reveal discovery card 86. Okay, and the only thing that we missed, thank you, Edgar, is we didn't put adjust oh, our stats. stats. Yes, yes, so yes. I just have to remove this one because I had an extra one in decks, but I think everything else is good. Yep. And you yeah, I don't know why there's not a reference 86. card for for resting. I'm sure somebody's already made one on Board, board Game Geek that I should probably print out. Uh, but yeah. Or I can just print out the text from the rule book. That's probably what I should do and shrink it down. That's an easy one. Uh, Discovery 86. What the heck? 86, no, no stamina. A code stone pendant. That probably has to be combined with the key. It's pear-shaped kind of, right? Yeah. That's probably what needs to go into the lock hole. Okay. But then what's the key for? Well, maybe the key has maybe to go to in be, too. Maybe, maybe this is the keychain for the key. Right. <laughs> But when do you need a certain keychain to open something? I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember where I was. It's free, so that's good. C5. Okay, I just want to make sure I don't start reading. Okay, so we now can use an item. I think we got to go back to the other place. I'd say we try the key here. Even though we did it, I read it by accident. I still think we okay, do it. Okay, let's I, try. I would definitely try the key it's here. It's free, so we're not, we're not using any... So I'm going to C95. Yeah. You examine the ancient key in the Nola Cameron and decide to look around to see if there's anything it might unlock. Kicking through the ashes of a tent, you uncover a small chest. The key doesn't fit, but you manage to spring the lid open anyway with a bit of force. You find a diary inside. On the last page, you read the poor creature's despair and the prospect of losing this war. Apparently, the North Lions have already been destroyed. The Dragul have no place to call home. Gain one XP. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I really wanted... I didn't want to miss that XP. Uh, but I still would have tried it anyway, for sure. <laughs> Uh, now we can use another item, rest, or move to another location, but we can't rest. No, so. we can't rest. I guess we just move to another location and move uh, back. Let's use the cobblestone pendant. Okay. It's no, no XP, right? No XP. No, it's free. So this is 86? Yeah. Yep, yeah, we can do it. Okay. So if ever you found an entry that wasn't there, you can't use the thing, is how I think it works. Uh, the lodestone pendant is exp expertly made. It's magnetic stone carved into a smooth shape. When you hold it by its chain, the pendant sways gently, responding 
perhaps to its invisible attraction to nearby metal, or perhaps to subtle motions of your hand. If you had something else to hang from it from, it, you could get a clearer signal of its attraction to metal. We could use another item or move to another location. Let's use them together. Okay, so that is 86, 86 and 95. 95. You hang the lodestone pendant by its chain from the ancient key, and it gives you a clear signal of its attraction to metal. It gently pulls you towards the corpse of a knoll. In the knoll's pocket, you find a gold coin. Gain one gold. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, use another item, rest, or move to another location. Move let's... to another location. Okay, move to another we... location. Yeah, and let's move back here and now use both. I well, think. we have to go to D first. Oh, yeah. No, you can skip through because you've We already... can skip through, right? Oh, but you, you're right. We should stop it. We don't care about the wall, though, right? No, we don't care about the, the wall. Or do we? Was there something at the wall? Yes. There was something at the wall? Yeah, let's stop at the wall again. Okay. I think, D. right? Oh, no. If you have open, go to D2, which we do, right? We do, yeah. You stand in the smoldering hole that you bl uh, blasted in the fortified gate. You can rest or move to another location. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. So I yeah. want to see what it, it did with, the, like, having it changed. That's cool. Uh, all so right. E, e. And we have already collected the XP. But we have a uh, title now. Yeah. Oh, true. If you have the title Revealer of Secrets, no. I wish. No. Uh, if you have the title Rogue's Accomplice, no. also wish. Oh, Rogue's Accomplice would be help the help guy the kill guy. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have the title Aid to Ogre, we do. We do. E17. Uh, okay, E17. Eric sits near the closed Durgolium uh, dur chest, eating his apple. Well, he asks, still irritated, did your ogre friend tell you the secret of his chest? So we could use an item, rest, or move to another location. Use an item? Yes. And we'll use a combination. Use a combination, yes. See, 86 and 95. Or, uh, E, E. e 86. 86, 95. 95. You press the lodestone pendant to the pear-shaped indentation on the chest and insert the ancient key. There is a click of mechanisms within, which allows you to turn the key. The chest pops open. Continue to E16. You guys know I couldn't just go to the end without opening a chest, No, right? not when we had the key for it, too. Like, obviously, like, this is, like, who ends, who ended, like, any of you play this and just, like, ended it right there? Like, I don't care to know what's in the chest. I, I want to know from someone who doesn't have, isn't wired like me and wants to get see every option and learn all the loots and all that stuff. Like, did anyone just go, yeah, I'm good. I'll just end. You're crazy. All right. Uh, unless this is about to hurt us. Uh, as the chest op pops open, the earth wakes and the sky crackles with strange purple energy. For a moment, you hear this screech of bat and you smell a briny sea. Eric holds forth a chainmail sack of the same white metal as the chest. Quickly, grab the object and place it in here. You reach inside the chest and pull forth a plain glass jar of translucent gray material. Strange, colorful images pass through the material as if it were displaying the dreams of another world. You place this curio uh, curiosity in Tarek's Drogulium sack. Immediately, earth and sky are still. A fine discovery, Tarek says, admiring the jar through the chainmail links. I've only seen one other like it. Then he pauses to consider you for a moment. Reveal title card two. Yeah, curiosity killed the cat, of course. That's the other reason. But like, uh, yeah, I'm always, <laughs> I don't care. I'm always like, let's do it. Reveal of secrets. In the Dragul outpost, you unlocked a Dragulium chest and took possession of a jar of translucent material. What secrets does a strange substance hold? Yeah, the, mm. like Sleeping Gods did this too, right? Where you like did quests, you earned cards, and yep. like you just keep. And yeah. you didn't know where you needed to use them. Yeah. Yeah. This feels so much like that game. So if you like this game a lot, go check out Sleeping Gods. Like for sure, it's like same same style of game for sure. Or I guess probably any of those games, right? Are they all like that? I never played like Above and Below, Near and Far, and all that stuff, but I think they're similar. I hear they're similar. Yeah. So I... it feels like that same kind of game, maybe. I don't know. Uh, okay, so title card two, done. If your king's favor is one or higher, go to E19. No, we're <laughs> minus one. Otherwise, E20. Tarek frowns. I'll be hanging on to this, he says, tucking the jar into his pack. But now that you've seen its power, I have no choice but to recruit you. He pulls several empty Dragolium chainmail sacks from his pack and hands them to you. There are Dragolium vaults hidden all over Nalos says Tarek. Each holds an object of great power. We cannot let them fall into the wrong hands. By the king's orders, we must gather as many as we can, and with haste. So now we could rest or move to another location. 
Well, I think we can only move, but at this move. point, do we just move and then go to the end? Yeah. yeah. So, so now we can just move to the end, even though, yes, I want to go explore A. But it didn't tell us to get rid of these. We still have these? It didn't say to put them back, right? Uh, you lose all, oh, all items, items at, at the, the end. end of, okay, yeah. So that's why. Okay. No, no. Wait. Do we lose items? We lose keywords. We lose keywords. We I keep don't know titles. About, I know we keep titles. We'll find we'll out find when we out. do the same. I'm not yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just not sure. Yeah, and I figured we go through it. All right, so let's go to the end. Like, I do, yes, I want to go back here and explore on this, like, you know, like, it's like, you know, playing Dark Souls at the beginning, you kind of wander around early, you'll find, like, a super powerful weapon you shouldn't have yet and all that kind of stuff. If you're just willing to peek behind everything or Zelda, you know, you're, you're going to chop every piece of grass and, and look in every pot. You'll eventually find something cool. Uh, but I'll just keep it going. <laughs> or we could be here all day playing the tutorial. Your mission at Black Lake has ended, and Tarek Nolan wishes you Godspeed as you return to your regiment. My own mission takes me elsewhere, he tells you, but I have a feeling we will meet again. As you travel back, you have time to collect your thoughts and puzzle over the things you've seen. Which titles did you earn? Read each section below that matches a title card you have. Aid to Ogre. You think back on Tog, the ogre who, spared, uh, who you spared from Tarek's blade. His look of gratitude is still fresh in your mind. Strange that, at the end of this long war, you have finally made a bit of peace. He complained that artifacts had been stolen from the Dragul city-states, and you wonder if their invasion of Nalos might somehow be related to this theft. In any case, somewhere in Nalos wanders an ogre who owes you a debt of gratitude. I'm telling you, <laughs> he's, he's going to show up in the boss fight. <laughs> Final boss fight. The finale book, ogre's coming, and he's going to help us. You'll see. Nice. Calling it now. Uh, all right. Rogue's accomplice? Uh, nope. No. Revealer of secrets. Revealer of secrets. You wonder about, uh, you wonder about the power of the jar that was hidden in the Dragolium chest. How could such a small object shake the earth and rend the sky? Strange images floated through the material inside it. The jar must be an illusion, or else from another plane. For nothing like those images exist anywhere in Ulos. Conclusion. Oh. Should I go to that? I think so. I don't know. Like, okay, so I'm here at the end. I read the end. But it doesn't have anything else, but then I see conclusion. Should I be reading conclusion? Because it doesn't tell me to go there. But it is the next thing on the page. Yeah. And, and it's asking about keywords. Uh, yeah, no. it'll probably tell us what ending we get. Okay. Conclusion. Uh, if you have the keyword Zalik, end one. If you have the keyword Grick, end two. We have Grick. We have Grick. Yep. End two. Upon your return, you find your regiment preparing to march. Orders to move to the west. A soldier tells you, General Grick is advancing on Bogroot Swamp. Yes, conclude. Okay, thank you, Dermot. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you report to the general, who smiles when he sees you. Just in time, he calls. General Grick hands you a letter from King Terran. It seems the king's hometown has been attacked by a giant troll. And he wants to bring him its head. My duties take me to Bogroot, says Grick. So when you're done with the troll, you'll need to meet Zalik in Sabic for your next assignment. Grick slugs you in the shoulder to bid you farewell. You head towards the coast. After a two-day march, you can smell brine in the air and hear the call of, gu of gulls. Soon, you will arrive in the halfling town of Jolev, where you must fetch the head of a troll for your king. <laughs> if you do not have the title Revealer of Secrets, end three. We do have. Each player, you may now advance your character. And then the next thing is clean up the adventure and save your characters. And then see saving. Okay, so let's do it advancing. So let's learn about advancing right now. Let's advance our characters. Which is the whole reason I want to play this game, is to spend XP and gold. Well, I do what I do. Let me just find it in the book. And then we can... Advancement. Alright. After each adventure, the party gets the opportunity to advance their characters by spending gold and XP before the next adventure. Complete the following steps. So, step number one. Prepare the market. Shuffle each of the five market decks. Armor, weapons, skills, and traits. Pass me something and... We'll do a little bit of shuffling, which I didn't realize I should have done this before. So we're going to grab one card from each one. We'll reveal them. Uh, 
Yes, we can just. Do you want to put the whole back or? Nope, just one? the top card. So just grab each one here. Just this one. Okay, here, throw that one back and then give me another deck. Do this quickly, just mix them up a little bit. And weapon. So it looks like we have armor, a scroll, weapon, skill, trait. So it's random. Obviously, we're shuffling. We're going to have them ready up in like a little market row, like deck building game style. And then we can spend gold, sell gold, but first I think we get to spend XP. So they have you prepare the market. So we're gonna reveal the top card of each, put them in the market. Uh, I don't know, we'll do like this. And then we will go through them first. If you wanna put that back. You need one of them, right? Oh yeah, sorry. No, nope, that's so, good. Weapon. Yep, yep, yep. So the weapon we got is the six cost glaive, goes to the spent pile and it can manipulate purple dice up or down by one. Okay. We have domesticate. This is uh I don't know what that means to a six. I think Turn it's anything? Uh hmm. let me look at the book again. Hmm. Question mark is a random die. What's a plus oh. mean? Uh, oh, probably... uh, plus is a draw. Draw a die, roll it, add it to the dice pool. This does not count against the dice limit. So in this case... And a question mark means random die. So in this case, you would draw a random die and change it to a six. You wouldn't have to roll it. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure. that's not bad. That's a scroll. Cost five. Our trait we see, uh, if we were a minotaur, we would have a discount on it, but we're not minotaurs. Uh, it's reckless. We can change any color die to a blue or a green. Okay. And then we have a uh, pickpocket where we can flip a blue. And if you, you can d deduct intelligence from the cost. So I have a one intelligence, so this would only cost me seven. Okay. And, and I think anybody, we can spend the gold on this from the party, and then we can pick a player to take the card too. Uh, then we have leather boots for our armor, which is re-rolling of a black or a purple die. Cost four. All right. Hmm. So that is our uh, market. All right. And then the next step. Uh, visit the Adventurer's Guild. The players now spend XP from the Adventure Guild uh, advent at the Adventurer's Guild to train their characters and strengthen the party in various ways. The advancements and their XP costs are listed below. So uh, there are there are, the players can spend XP on the same advancement multiple times. So we can increase a character's health by one. It will cost us 1 XP per bump as long as our health is 25 or less. Cost 2 XP if you're above. We can increase the party's combat dice limit by 1. The only problem is that's going to cost 3 for the current combat dice limit plus 5 XP. Do we even have 8 XP? We have exactly 8. Yeah, so we can spend our whole XP right now and just increase our limit and, and we can pull 4 random dice every time. Which I think is pretty I cool. I like that. Or we can increase the party's bonus play limit. So if we want to play more cards before resting, uh, it would cost current play limit, which is 1. Plus current, oh no, sorry, current play limit is two, plus bonus play limit is one, plus five. That's also eight. That's also eight. Or we can increase the party's mastery level, which would cost us three. Uh, and then we get to bump a stat up. And right now our stats are maxed out at four. So I could get like a fourth dex. You know, we could start bumping up our stats so that we'd have more ways of getting the dice we need. Mm. And to increase the party's mastery level, players must spend the amount of XP indicated. So for the first four times we upgrade it on the on the party sheet, it says three. So it costs us three for the first four times we get bumps and stats. And while we're in that first little section, we are limited to four per stat. So, uh, and then it says, uh, then you mark that box off. So you slowly work your way up so it becomes more expensive to upgrade that stat. Okay. Usually no player may increase an attribute score beyond the score limit. There might be instances of the storybook that allow you. The current attribute score limit is indicated in the tier. And then we'll visit the market. So how do you want to spend XP? I would be okay to spend all eight on another combat die. Or, or, or no, no, here's what I would say. Uh, I would try to bump these stats because 
it's not so much about getting more dice. I think it's about getting the right, the right dice. dice. Yeah. So for you to get like, let's say, bump you up, so you actually have an intelligence, <laughs> uh, you you could. Uh, it would be easier for us to just spend those two to get a blue die more often. That's true. So what I think is, if we bump some of these stats up, we could start even if we're only allowed to draw three dice or four dice or whatever, we're grabbing the specific ones we need at least. Yeah. But. But there will be enemies that take more than three dice. When we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So we do. But that just means more rounds of combat. But at least we get the right dice. So we could spend three on that. Because because here's the thing. Uh, bumping up this stat will not just help combats, but will also help skill checks. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather buff both, both. things, make us better at both things. Mm -hmm. But then there's also which stats to buff. Should we buff ones that make it easier to get the dice we can manipulate? Or ones that get the dice we can't manipulate? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we try to bump them so that they're all kind of going up yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So our weakness was obviously turning things to red. So like maybe getting more in the strength stat for me would be smart or maybe not because you already are good at strength. I say we just buff up things we're weak at. Yeah, I agree. So we could use three and three and do it twice. I know. We still have nothing that manipulates red or changes something to a red, which is so annoying. No, the only thing I do like is the um, the one where we can pull a random die. It just gives us an extra die and it gives us a six, which maybe we can manipulate to a one, right? If we flip it, it just gives us another die. Mm -hmm. So I like that. But anyways, we're not at gold no, spending yet. No, we're not there yet. But I, I want to have these displayed so we can see them, because it says prepare the market first, then spend XP knowing this info, mm -hmm. and then we'll get to buy cards after. Yeah. And we can sell cards. You can sell stuff back if it has a cost. You can sell it back if you don't like it to try to buy something better. We sell it back for two, I think, right? Oh, just two gold per? Yeah, I think so. Is it? I think it is just two gold. We'll read that yeah. part when we get there, but um, yeah, you don't get the full value back, I don't think. So did you want to do uh, the mastery two times? So we'd spend six, and then we can up our health each one? Health bump is just one? one yeah, it's for one, one for X. One. Yeah, sure. Actually, if we spend one, we both... We save XP, so we can save it for a future two, but I know. I'm down with spending it all. But we would spend one, we would both it's increase two, yeah, by Yeah, Jane is saying it's two gold work hard to sell back. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would actually increase our health by two. Uh, Unless it's one per health per player. Increase a character's, a character's health by one, costs one XP. Okay, so we could do the mastery two times and then each of our health by one. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to do my health first. Yep. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we both did the same thing. It slides around in there. Okay. So we're both going to 17 health. Okay, so that's, we spent two. Okay. And then we're going to do twice on this. So the cool part is uh, right. when you spend the three XP once, we both get a bump. Yeah. And then we spend it again. So you can bump up something, bump up two things or the same thing. twice. I'm definitely going to spend one in this one. I feel like strength maybe. Here's what I think. Like strength is obviously going to be related to combat. We're going to see reds happen a lot, I think, in combat. Yep, I agree. One. So I'm going to increase, oh, but maybe I should increase stuff that you're not good at. I think I'm going to also I'm, do... I'm going to bump my intelligence, actually. Okay, and I'm going to do my second, so I did one in intelligence. I think I'm going to do my second point in um, wisdom, in the white. There's a lot of white dice that we had. Yeah. I don't know if that's more for skill checks, I feel like. Yeah, I'm down to... But I'm going to do a white, going to two in... You do a green? Um, my green is two. Oh, Okay. So let me do, yeah, I'll do the same intelligence and wisdom. Yeah. And we just got to make sure we're taking options that are like related to that rather than fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless you don't have a choice. <sighs> okay, so okay. intelligence and wisdom I bumped so that I would get like this. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, again, I have no clue, but that's what we'll do. Okay, next. Uh, oops. Next is step three, visit the market. The players can use gold as currency to buy and sell cards in the market. The players can buy and sell any number of cards in any order. Buy, choose one of the available market cards, return gold from the cards, uh, equal to the card's cost from the party journals of the supply, then add the card to the buyer's hand. Sell, choose one market card from the seller's hand, return that card to the matching market deck. So you could see it come back again. Uh, this is another way another player could get that card too. And then it's like, uh, add it to the part. Oh, gain two gold from the supply, add it to the party journal. Only market cards with a cost can be sold back to the market. 
And then certain cards offer discounts based on the attribute scores, which we just talked about. So minus intelligence or could be minus the race. And then that's it. We'll be saving our progress after. Okay. So we have 10 gold. I do like this one. Do you like that the one? The domesticate? Yeah. Yeah, gold. You're just giving us an extra die. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, if we did that, for example, we, we sell five. And that would be this one. I don't know who we're going to put in. The leather boots might also be good for you. And it also does say that you can play an additional leather item, right? Yeah, but they're, they're the sets. They're like in, in uh, we only have chain, right? Yeah, we only have chain so far, but. But like, I could sell this back for two to get rid of this reroll. And then by that, and I'm trying to start building the leather, this goes back in the armor deck. And then I start trying it. to build the chain. Yeah, maybe. You can do that if you think. And they don't count against your play limits. So you can do them like multiple Yeah, that, so if you can get a bunch together. But I mean, I could just hold this and sell it later too. I don't know. These cards kind of suck. I wish there was a way to clear the market row <laughs> for like a gold. We can just save the five yeah, yeah. and build it. Like some things are very expensive. But I still think more cards is good, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, unless you think something is better than this one, I just like that having no, getting fine. an extra die. Oh yeah, I buff. I see. You can buff up a stat you're looking to get a discount on too. Oh yeah, true. Uh, how much we got left? We have five, but I don't need to get this. If you want to get the pickpocket instead, no, oh, I, I have a two discount on it. Uh, what's well, a six? But I could sell back a card, but I, I don't think I want to. Yeah, uh, so Jot, we can't exchange cards between each other. No, we're not allowed to trade in any way. And unless the, it says in the rule book, you can't trade unless the storybook gives you a chance to do so. So there will be a, a something at some point possibly. Yeah. Where we could. Uh, Keith is asking, did we pull the jar card? We did, but it told us to put it back after we used it. No, like the new jar we found. What but the guy it? kept it. The guy kept it. Oh. Yeah, like our little friend took it. So I don't Yeah, think... and then we just got this. Yeah. The title. Is that what you mean, or did we forget something? I don't know. I think if we probably did different options, we would end up with the jar thing, but he says he's keeping it for now. Yeah. And then he gave us and some And he sacks. gave us that, and he yeah. gave us that. Hopefully we didn't break the game, but uh, yeah, I could just get the boots just to have, but it's like, unless you want this, but then I could sell back this, but like, that's a reroll of a white and red, which might be nice. Yeah. Rerolls re suck, but I mean, they might get us out of a jam. <laughs> Maybe we just wait. Yeah, we can save the five. Or I start building up the leather set. Yeah, I'll buy leather boots. Yeah. If you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Or Just should we save for bigger, better cards, actually? I feel like we're yeah. going to... Yeah, if it's like, we'll buy, like the big ones are the ones you want. Yeah, so I'll... save I'll five? Wait. Yeah, we'll save five. It's fine. Okay, so campaign so, clean. Sorry, just this card is going to go into one of our decks. Now, I'm wondering, is it better for it to go in yours? Because can you not reuse uh, yeah, spent yeah, ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you could do it multiple times. <laughs> Yeah, for three stamina, I can if, I can play it again out of my uh, I can play it again out of the spent pile because of that symbol. So it's yeah. great grabbing a random die and it becomes a six. Yeah, but it might not be the color we need. But then we could manipulate it. We could change the color of it. It's just getting another die. I don't know how useful it'll be, but we'll, we'll see. We'll find out, I guess. And then if not, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't know. Okay, okay. let's let's do the, the save part. We are going to play another scenario today. We're just going to do the saving part. But it says even for the saving part to. Do it even if you're going to keep playing in the same session. So after each adventure, the party must save their progress, even if they intend to continue the campaign during the same session, which we do. So stay tuned. Complete the following steps. Erase all keywords from the keyword space on the party journal. Okay. Return all map cards and item cards to the discovery. You can just put it there. So yes, you do put all the items back. Okay. So we so. could see that key, we could see the lodestone thing again. They could do completely different things in a different adventure. Sure. Oops. 
Store, so we don't care about this part, but you normally store the party's title cards with the party journal and use them in the next adventure. Do not return the party title cards to the deck. Store each player's hand of cards separately, which we're just going to keep out because we're still playing. Record the party's current gold. We're not going to do that. Or XP. Return all bone. No. Okay. Mark the box that contains the favor marker on each of the three things. So if you're putting this sheet away where these black cubes are, you'd mark that down in the cube or in the square. But do we're you want not me to do, do it or we're just going to leave it? So no, fine. we're just going to keep going. Uh, mark the box on the campaign track that corresponds to the adventure that the party just completed. That again. So at the very top, Mel's going to check off one, so we're not going to play one again, because <laughs> you have to do it in order. And you can see an example in a blurry picture here as you play through. The adventures, which are linked through an ongoing narrative, must be played in consecutive order. When the campaign resumes again, the party will play through the next adventure as indicated by the next unmarked box on the campaign track. The side quest adventure exists outside of the ongoing narrative. It can be played at any point after Adventure 1, even after the campaign is complete. So we'll see how it's going, and maybe we'll play it later. And there's adding and removing players, so there is a way, for those who are curious, if you have players not showing up for game night, or a new player wants to join mid-campaign, you can totally do that. Uh, there are rules for it, which is super cool. And then there's all stuff about familiars we didn't see, and I think that's really all we care about. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're saying that we should mark the favors just in case it gets bumped. You're right. So I will do that even as we're playing. I'll but just do it lightly. The only problem is you're going to have to keep erasing and keep doing it over and over again. I know, but Don't I'll... Don't do it now, no. I'm just doing it lightly. We, we have the video. We can always go back yeah, in the stream. Yeah, sure. You're right. You're right. How many how many games come with crappy components like that where we sneeze and we ruin it? That's true. You have to scrub back and we find it. That's true. The, the advantage of playing on camera. But I feel like that will change The only less. advantage. The only advantage. <laughs> but uh, I just marked it lightly, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the other thing Dermot McLeod's saying. Uh, also, I write down the titles separately to look through easier later on. I was thinking oh, so you can that. keep them in a pile instead of trying to keep them there? Yeah, because there's like a white box behind that. You could just write them all down, then you kind of know them, or put them on a separate paper so you just quickly glance at them. But uh, we can just keep them in a side deck later, whatever. We don't need to keep them on that pile. Yeah, if it gets bigger, I'll definitely... Well, no, you're supposed to just keep them in a pile, and then every time you go to check it, you pick yeah. them all up, you sort through them quickly, and you find it, right? Yeah. Which is totally fine. Uh, numbers on the box to track the order rather than crossing them. Okay. Uh, no rocket magnet. We're not playing with an expansion. This is just the retail base box. Uh, that expansion, I did look at it. It's coming to retail later. But when I read everything that's involved in it, it did not entice me at all. Seems like it's not worth the money. But it probably was okay if you got it in a Kickstarter pledge or something. But it just adds like a 30 minute backstory little mini play thing that seems like it's not really necessary to get a feel and play the game. Um, there's a ton of content here. So that, unless there's some other expansion I don't know about. But I was I looked at it, it's coming in like summer 2022 to uh, retail. Which is like kind of sucky. It comes out six months after everyone's playing the game. Uh, who buys it later. Or who didn't back the full thing on Kickstarter. Which was probably a FOMO thing on purpose. But anyways. It's more story, more reading. Oh, okay. It's not even more game. Boo. All right. I'm just going to put these back in the decks. Yes. Shuffle those in. I'll put them on the top right now. I'll shuffle them in as we um, have time. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, we're going to take a quick little break so I can stretch, use a washroom, grab some drinks, all that kind of stuff, and get ready for Adventure 2, Teron's Trophy by James Ryan. So this is the next adventure book. So there's a whole whack of pages. A whole other adventure, number two out of like 11-ish that we'll play through, I assume. Um, and yeah, that's what we'll play shortly after the break, so stay tuned. Again, we have an episode scheduled for Wednesday. You can set a reminder for that. It is in the playlist down in the video description if you're looking for our other videos in the series. So if you want to come back to this later, watch it, whatever, you'll find it in the playlist section of our channel uh, or down in the video description of this video. You can always come back and find it in there. Um, and then we'll be back Wednesday playing, hopefully, depending on how long these adventures normally take, um, once we kind of know what we're doing and see how a full adventure is. Um, we'll try to play two per episode going forward, depending on how time works. Uh, so on Wednesday, we should be playing Adventure 3 and 4 if you're looking for that. So, um, but we are playing the rest of this one today, no matter how long it takes. So we'll see. Uh, anyways, we'll be back in like 10-ish minutes. I'm going to say I'm going to hope. Uh, so thank you all, and we'll be right back.
Oh, well, hello there. Welcome, welcome. We just got back from our break. All right, we're getting ready to start Adventure 2 uh, for a Role Player Adventures. For those that just tune in or are watching this later and decide to come back. Hello again. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, if you're looking for future playthrough episodes, again, they are in the playlist down in the video description. Thank you again, everyone supporting the channel, Patreon, YouTube members. Much appreciated. Thank you for supporting the channel and helping us afford this game uh, to play it for you guys on the channel. All right, we're getting into real spoiler territory. So I assume we never played it before, but uh, I know that first one was all about like just teaching rules and stuff. So I assume now it's going to like let us off the leash and kind of like do whatever. So if you don't okay. want spoilers and you haven't played this yet, I recommend tuning away. Unless you just, this game is not for you, but you just want to like see the story and watch us lose our minds. There was a couple of people that said that earlier, that they're yeah. not, it's not a game for them, but yeah. they want to watch us. I totally play. understand. So watch along, have some fun. It's all good. But again, I, I just, spoiler warning, of course, like, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't ruin the fun. I think a lot of the fun of this game, I'm assuming is the cool, how a playthrough is different every time you play based on choices and options and things that happen and you know, failing skill checks, passing skill checks, fighting monsters, you know, all that kind of stuff, losing against monsters, um, whatever. Oh, we did not grab the map. Oh, is it upstairs? Uh, no, it's over there in the box. Okay, I can grab it if you want. You want to grab it? All right. Mel's going to go grab the, uh, the other map because I left all that stuff in, in the box and didn't bring it over here. It's down on the bottom there. It should be the next one in the pile. Oh, no, it's on the other side of this one. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Come back. <laughs> I think there's two sides to these. Yes. Yeah. Never mind. It's on the other side of the map. It's on the other side. They're not one sided. Oh, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't. We're not looking yet. Oh, sorry. You can't even don't see it. Don't look at Jana caught it. I knew somebody was saying it. Like, <laughs> no, no, it's there. It's there. <laughs> yeah, like, I brain farted. That's why I didn't get out the next maps, because I knew they weren't ones we were playing today. That's why I did that. Totally forgot, as I was setting up everything this morning and yesterday. All right. Uh, okay. I guess we're ready to start the adventure. All so right. the thing I was going to ask you is, I guess we start with our rest token in the same state it was, or... Think you just oh, I guess it'll tell this. us in here, maybe. Oh, but maybe not. Hold on. There's setup stuff. Actually, just open it and see if it even... We'll find out. But there is a setup for adventure in the book, right? So we don't do the campaign setup again. Um... Prepare the party journal. Rest token face up. Yep, right there. Step number one. Yeah, so you don't okay. save the status of the rest token. Okay. Create the supply. Get your title decks, rare decks, discovery decks, whatever. Player aids, character sheets, storybook, and begin the adventure. And then... What? Our, our, our fatigue. We clear that? I mean, I know people yeah, were saying... Yeah, the fatigue was... Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. When Unless we saved it says it, it in there at the start No, when we the... saved it, it only said to save your hands. I don't, I don't think it says oh, save okay. fatigue. Okay, so that all reset as well. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we have the fatigue. Okay. Yeah, that would be harder. Yeah, like definitely. How, they they would have a, a spot like to write it somewhere, right, on the sheet. Oh yes, because if you were going to clean it up, you wouldn't know. Yeah, you're not saving those in a bag or anything. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fatigue, fatigue is cleared. Is okay, okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. I just want to check the FAQ for. Oh, for this scenario. Yeah, we don't have to worry about more until Adventure Five for errata and typos and stuff, but. There is stuff in the Tome of Encounters for Adventure 6 and Side Quests 1. And I guess that backstory stuff for the expansion has some typo stuff in it. Then for gameplay, there is stuff, but I don't think I read through this before, but we probably should. I think we'll just look in here if something comes up. But there's a lot of things that were not covered. The rule book's a little light. A little light. I'll read through again. A little too light, but uh, they've already started adding things in here. I saw in the BGG like lots of complaints about stuff in the game, uh, but it's like yeah, they they spend a lot of time probably proofing the books, but not so much the rule book, uh, the adventure books and stuff. Because you got to get that stuff right at least. Stuff in the rule book, cards. Oh, card sleeve info. <laughs> okay, cool. 
All right. Teron's Trophy. Set up. Adventure map. Place the Teron's Trophy adventure map in the center of the table next to the party journal. Boom. Exploration XP. Place one XP, XP on each lettered location on the adventure map. A, B, C, and D. Which are Jolev, the ancient chapel, the beach. I want to go to the beach. <laughs> and Dungrass Farms. Okay. Party journal. Place gold and XP on the party journal equal to the recorded values, but we didn't record them because we didn't clean it up. Erase the recorded values. Place any earned title cards on the title space. Place bonus play tokens on the party journal equal to the recorded value. Uh, place the three favor markers on the spaces on the favor tracks with the recorded values. Erase the recorded values. Character sheets. Place each player's hand of cards on their hand space. Place each player's class card face up on their class ability space. Fill each attribute row to its max value of stamina from the slot. Encounter tokens. Place encounter tokens one through four on the table to create a pool. Yeah. Oh yeah. I saw an FAQ. One of the issues is the uh, six and the nine don't have dots on them. So, uh, yeah, I guess you could just like put a dab on them or something. But uh, those are an issue. Oh, so when you start messing them around. Yeah, yeah. so like which one's the six, which one's the nine? They're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if they ever need it in the same scenario. I don't know, but I would assume so at some point. So there's one, two, three, four. Uh... Okay. Okay, you can mix them up uh, and do sure. your thing uh, with those. This one I didn't see what you did, but whatever. Here, here, and yeah. All right. Uh, your adventure begins. The Dragul invasion has ended, but your regiment marches north into the swamps, where the Dragul continue to plot against Nalos. While your fellow soldiers head to battle, you have been sent to the halfling town of Jolev on orders from King Teron to fetch the head of a giant troll. Off with his head! <laughs> the coast here is lined with grassy bluffs and sandy beaches. The light breeze carries the smell of the sun-warm sea. There is a slight smokiness in the air, and you recall, with keen anticipation, Jolev's reputation for producing the finest flavored hams in all of Nalos. Place your party marker on location A. Read entry A. Jolev. If you have the keyword Esther A6, no? No, we don't have any keywords. If you have the keyword market. Oh yeah, because we start yeah. blank. Yeah. Duh. I guess if you went back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we must go back. <laughs> so Esther or market. Remember those. Or Esther. However you say this one. I know there's a way to say it. I see this in video games. I don't know how to say it. Esther. Esther. Uh, if there is no XP on location A1, otherwise collect the XP from location, continue reading. Standing alone in the town square, the mayor welcomes you to Jolev. Sorry for this humble greeting, he says, but everyone is in hiding. He gestures around, and you see that the boards cover the windows of every shop but the blacksmiths. Several second floor shutters are cracked open so that curious eyes can watch you. Thank heavens for the king's god, shouts the mayor, hoping his citizens will hear. We place our troubles in your capable hands. The mayor exits. Windows close. The blacksmith's hammer rings out a lonely sound. As you cross the empty cobblestone square, you find an old staff sling. Reveal discovery card 93. Esther? Esther? No, I'm not trying to do the H. Esther? Esther sounds better. Or sounds easier to say. Discovery card 93. Ooh. Staff sling. So it's like a half walking cane, half slingshot or something. Yeah. Staff sling. Maybe we or is it a sling for like walking with like a broken arm, also slinging like the arm with the cane? I don't know. I'm not sure what this is. It is free to look at though, so. Oh, it's an item to use. If there's only one character in your party, A7. Oh, different oh, options playing different, different player solo? accounts. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> replay, replay. Mel, go away. Yeah, yeah. Mel, go away. <laughs> All right. You interview the blacksmith, Rose, and notice that she wears a ring with an eye shaped insignia. You recognize it as a mark of the Starlit Door, a secret group researching the ancient mysteries of Nalos. Rose tells you that the young Esther, Dre uh, Esther Dungrass has gone missing. Many fear that she was taken by the troll. The Dungrass Farm lies along the western road. Dungrass Farm. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Esther was last seen at the beach to the east. I am nearly done here, she says. Come back later and I'll have something to sell. Reveal title card 12. And now we could use an item or move to another location. Title card 12. Smith Hama. Rose, the halfling blacksmith, welcomed you to Jolev and offered to sell you weapons in her shop. She wore a mysterious ring with an insignia of the Starlit Door. Put that in our titles, madame. All right. So we could use an item or move to another location. Do we want to look at the sling? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, it costs nothing, 93. At some point, the game will slap us and stop us from just using items all the time, but uh, let's try. Uh, 93, sorry. I'm at A. A93. Yeah. See if there is even an entry. Okay, one time there's not. Yes, there yeah. is. You look around, Jolev, to see if anyone is missing a staff sling. The blacksmith rose, just shrugs. Go ahead and keep it, she says. So we can use another item, rest, or move to another location. I feel like we move because we don't need to rest. Yeah. We don't have any other items. So I guess there's only one the direction. <laughs> Go along the road. Boom, we hit an encounter. Number four. Uh, adventure entry. 2, Entry 4, oh, right? Yeah. If you have the title, Aid to Ogre... Uh, yes, we do. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Then go to Adventure 2, Number 5. As a trail crests at a hill, you are met by an ogre in the shade of an oak tree. You recognize the creature as Tog, whom you spared from Tarek Nolan's blade. He seems happy to see you. Though his speech is rough, you understand that he has been stealing from the locals and would like to give you some of his loot. Yes! <laughs> the ogre holds out his hand and with a single gold coin, uh, holds out his hand with a single gold coin and a piece of armor offering them to you. We could accept the gift and thank him, or we can tell him that it's dangerous for him to remain in the Nalos, in Nalos. He needs to stop stealing and head home. Man, I want to take the loot. But then again, we're not helping him out. So do we keep pushing it and keep helping this guy? Is there mm -hmm. is there more to keep pushing forward? We'll get better and better the more we keep helping him. Like, well, I'm sure it'll have an effect later with our favor. Oh yeah, right. Hi, news here. Hey all, how are we doing today? Mel and Rob look chipper, so no disasters yet. No, <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're so only far. on adventure two so far. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, tiny. Uh... Joe Lev, Joe Lev, Joe Lev, Joe Lev. I'm begging you, please. Don't take my hand. I feel like it should. It's like a song. Every time I hear you say it, it sounds like it should be Jolette. a song. Uh, okay. I would be fine with either, but I'm wondering if we. Bond just says it's a sling and a stick. Stick equals more leverage. Ah, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Like the the step up from a slingshot before going to a catapult, right? It's like in, <laughs> in the middle. Dan, Dan is here, says hi. And the first thing I hear is, I want to take the loot. Feels like home. I know, right? <laughs> it definitely is. Welcome to this familiar place. I do Rob wanting take, all the goodies. I do want to take the loot, but I feel like if we all right, warn gonna, him. Yeah, I'm down with keep pushing our luck on this yeah, one. Yeah, because I feel like it'll increase our favor. Maybe he'll still give us something anyways for, yeah, you know? I, I feel like this is one of those things where, like, if you keep just being helpful to him, there's a bigger payoff down the road. Yes, yes. This if there's not, gonna... that's hilarious, too. Yeah, <laughs> we already helped him once, and he's willing to give us a dollar. So we're going to tell him coin. it's too dangerous for him to go alone. Take this. No, I'm just joking. Uh, too <laughs> dangerous for him to remain in Nalos. He needs to stop stealing and head home. Uh, we're going to Adventure 2-28. Tog seems disappointed that you will not take his gifts. He tells you that he is indebted to you for life and that he hopes to find a gift worthy of you one day. Yes. To your suggestion uh, that he leaves Nalos, he says that there is nowhere else to go. The Dragul city-states have been destroyed by plant planar rifts, and Nalos is the only safe realm. He thanks you again for saving his life, then sneaks back into the woods and is gone from sight. So we could rest, or we can move to the next location on your path. I think we keep moving, right? But now what direction do we want to go? Because we can either go towards the beach. Well, there's an ancient chapel here, and it looks like it splits before you go there. Oh, so we have to go there first? Oh, well, no, oh no, before no. we go there. No, no, look. Oh, it, yeah. It, it's, so if we go to the beach, we it, don't, we it, skip it that. It splits. No, no. So it splits. We either go to the ancient chapel B, or we continue on to see the beach. Do mm -hmm. you have a preference? I don't really care, I don't think. It did talk about her being at the beach, but do we have to do something first? 
Or is this a test where, like, bumping into the Ancient Chapel first, maybe we don't need to be there yet, maybe we find someone to help us? I'm cool with skipping the Ancient Chapel for yeah, now. Yeah, going towards the beach first? Yeah, let's go towards the beach first. Okay. So we bump into another one. Uh, number three. So this is... No, no. I need to go back this way. It's 2-3. Okay, uh, Adventure 2-3. On the side of the road, you see a series of large hanging cages, all empty save one, which contains a disheveled human calling out for help. Get me out of here, he cries. It wasn't me, I swear. He shows you a few gold coins he somehow managed to keep with him. Look, he says, they're all yours if you let me out. As King's Guard, it is within your duties to dispense, in, uh, dispense justice, so you ask about his case. He claims to have the son of a noble heir to the lost city of Carleval, wandering disguised as a beggar. A plump, gray-haired farmer lost her prized pig. It had a black spot shaped like a swan. And suspicious locals blamed him for the theft. Claims to be the son of a noble, heir to the lost castle of Carleval, wandering disguised as a beggar. So he's supposed to be some amazing guy, but he looks like he's a dirty old thief, I guess. Uh, a plump, gray-haired farmer lost her prized pig. It had a black spot shaped like a swan. And suspicious locals blamed him for the theft. I ask you, why would I steal it when I have gold to pay with? But he dresses and smells like any no... He, but he dresses and smells unlike any noble you've ever met. Is he a lying pig thief or a noble that stinks? Does it say that really? Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Sometimes you make things up, I'm not sure. Yeah, I know. I didn't there. No, it's like rereading it because I'm like, man, what's happening here? <laughs> nope. Is, is he a lying pig thief or a noble that stinks? <laughs> Declare him innocent and free him from the cage, which oh. is a strength and dexterity check. Which, that's your best thing and that's my yep. best thing. Yeah. Or find him guilty and let him rot. So this is like uh, our chance to let Jack and Hagar out of the cage, right? Yeah, but you gotta let Jack and Hagar Which Jack out and of Hagar cage. is like the coolest ever. Is yeah. this the same? I'm willing to I risk mean, it. We can we can try. It's our best stats as well. Let's try. Let's do it. Yeah, let's try. Uh, I'm going to two dash eleven. Maybe we can have more people on our side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, yeah. For later. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Tiny says, sling is what David hit Glide with. Sling shot is what Dennis the Menace uses. <laughs> not, to, not to be confused with a sling blade, which requires french fries and a lawnmower. Oh, oh, oh. sling blade, yes. All right. Let's go <laughs> 211, right? Um, no, I got to make sure I'm going to the right place. I get distracted and then I'm like on the wrong thing. That's what happens. Uh, 211. Yeah, yeah, 211. Yeah, you're right. Breaking the lock is not as easy as you first thought. It is of a sturdy dwarven make. Skill check. Force one. Force? Force one. All right. Oh. Is, is the force with us? Hopefully. It's just a red and black test, which we as could assume. Yep. Okay. So and these we're, are we're, best getting, we're getting how the game lines up with colors and stats now. We're just figuring it out. <laughs> well, took, sometimes, took they, have, sometimes they throw <laughs> other ones, right? Where they might throw a white I, I in know, there know, or something. Yeah, yeah. But makes sense okay like, well look at eventually we'll start throwing a green in but still it's mainly strength even on like level four mm -hmm. it's like a, only adds a green but it's all black all red and then like a, a variety i have to say i'm excited to get to one of these kind of tests my god no <laughs> it's gonna take like 40 minutes just for us to figure out all this crap <laughs> or we just failed or, them a lot or based on our rolls okay so, so our dice limit is four yeah i'll spend <clears throat> hold on let's check what i can turn things into i can turn anything into a black so I got one black covered. But then again, if we can reduce spending cards, we can play other cards that allow us to manipulate dice. I can turn a red into anything. I can turn but... a three, which we need a, a two, four, and a three. I can turn the three into any color so I can get it to be a red or black. I can so flip blacks. Three. But again, as a bonus play territory here. And then you have the new one that we got. But it, uh, we need a six, and there's no six, of course. No, but then we can maybe manipulate it from there. Maybe. But uh, okay, I I can put in for a red, so I'll put two in for a red. I'll do two for a black. Okay, and then we'll take our chance on the other one because yeah. we can. You yep, said yep, you yep. can change it. Okay, and then we get two more. Sorry, not one more, two more. A blue. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. And a black. Okay. The path goes to be. Uh no. 
It does. I think if we went this way. Yeah, yeah. 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 So let's just clear it off so we can see. Uh, just remember to put these three XP back on. Yeah, and these are like this. Yeah, whatever. It'll just be better random anyway. So there's like a fork in the road after the encounter. Yeah, so see right here, this, this fork. So if it was meant to take you to B, I would hope that the artist would have drawn this dotted line to connect to B or come off the side here. But this obviously forks off of a path before you reach B. So I would say we could skip B and go to C. Because I, I think it would look more like this, right? It would come right out of the art, which yeah. they decided to only put this coming out and this side coming out. So yeah, I think that's intentional. And if it's not, I, I didn't see it in the FEQ, but maybe it's there. If anyone knows the official answer to that. But I, I'm going to go with how it's it's drawn, and I would think that's intentional. If not, the playtesters suck. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so these are our dice. We did get a second black, so that's oh, not bad. Nice, nice. So roll them up. And roll them up. All right. We did get a four, but it's a blue. You can turn that into a black, right? Yeah, but I'm worried about the... We need a red to be a two which flipping this brings it to a one if we have a way to flip. Uh, and then the black, if we just change this black up one, it becomes this slot. So do we have a way to reduce a red and flip I a can, red? Uh, I can re-roll a red. And I can flip two reds. Or I can turn, hold on, I can turn a red to any color. I could turn that to a red two. What? No, but then that won't Doesn't work. make any sense. You just because said you, you can turn a red to any color. So don't look at these oh, dice. Oh, sorry, yeah, look yeah. At the red. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wow. That was a brain fart. Sorry. Um. So let's just talk it out. We'll work through it and then see what we got to spend. So let's put our cards we're playing here, but do not put them here yet until we work out everything first, because we're allowed to work it all out. Yeah. All right. So I could easily just change this. Uh, the full blue four to a black. Wait, what was it again? Yeah, blue four to a black if we wanted to, and that would cover this. And now we need a three black or red and a two red. So let's see. I mean, we have re rolls on reds if yeah, we want to take a, a gamble on it, but but we don't have a re roll on the black, right? So we have to figure out. Uh, oh, the black? Uh, we can't. But I, I wouldn't work on the black yet until we get a red to cover one of these things. To know what we need? Yeah. Okay, so you want me to re-roll the, the red first? Start there? Well, no, maybe not. One sec. Um, <laughs> if we can turn... I can... If we can add a pip to a black, which I think I can do... Yep. I could... So is, we're working this out. I know this costs more. We need a bonus play, but we might have to do it. Uh, so I could increase this to a three and turn it into. Oh, no, a three would be fine. Yeah, three. Would oh, be no, fine. no, no. I need to turn it into a red. I see. No, nope, never mind. Never mind. We already. Well, this we this red, I could flip to a one. And then can we increase a red by one? Uh, I can't. No. That's a problem. I know. We need, we need to be able to put... We need red manipulation. Yeah. It's like, uh, we're going to get combats that seem to use strength, and yeah, I, sh I don't know. We got to buy... Like, we didn't even have a chance to buy I cards. Can, I can re-roll the red. At least we do that, right? Because then we have more knowledge about what we need to... What we need to do. Sure. Okay, so this is a for sure happening. Rerolling this red. A one. So... Oh, so I can't... I can flip it, but then it turns to a six. This is like frustrating, seriously frustrating. Um, wow. I mean, I can reroll oh, the red, hold on. but uh, no, that just flips it again using that. Oh. Uh, oh, I don't even have. Oh, yeah, I would have one. Uh. Yeah, I can increase this no problem with a card. Like, so like I could do dual dagger, make this a three, and we cover this. Okay. Yeah. That's done. Then we have these two to work with. You which, could do your reroll on your red. Yeah. We'll play the bonus that's play. So lame. I know, and we just hope. 
But I could flip. Oh, I could still if it's flip a four, it. If it's you a, can flip it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we don't get it, I mean, we just try. So a bonus, so a bonus play. play for you. Yeah. So we'll say I. Uh, yeah. Do yeah. yeah. Put that in there, and then re-roll the red one. So these are here, here, and here. Okay. Re-roll. We need it to be a three or a two. No, a five. A five or a two. Five or a two. A three. I don't think I can do anything with a three. Nope. Because if I flip it, it goes womp, to womp. four. Yeah. All right, whatever. We yeah. fail. Okay. Let's just move on. That's annoying. We do collect our rewards. We do get one XP yeah, from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, one XP. Now I got to remember where we were. 11, weren't we? 11, yep. Yeah. Uh, fail, you must leave him to his fate. 2-25. Uh, yeah, we might be able to have done something, changing it to another color, bumping it and changing it back, but I think because I already spent all my cards. I don't think cards. we could have changed it back. That's the problem we had last time, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's color. right. That's and right. then this discarded card goes back in my hand. Do you have discarded cards? Uh, sure, is that how it all the order? Gain rewards, return all dice and modifiers, return all cards, okay. Uh, the token was already set on that. Okay. And review, okay, well, now I don't remember where I was. 11. Oh, no, no, I was already 20, trying to go to the next page, 25? but... 25? 25, yes. Just, yeah. Sorry. Okay, uh, the man screams, you incompetent fools! He spits in your direction as you walk away. Reveal title card 5 and 68. 5... Sixteen. Five is Duntum's Abandoner. You meet a man hanging in a roadside cage who claimed to be a noble falsely accused of stealing local pigs. You left him to his fate and he was carted off to Colback Prison. Oh, this is going to be bad. We wanted Here, to help it. him. No, not necessarily. Because uh, maybe we didn't want to let him out and that was a poor choice, but we got lucky. Uh, Duntum's Acquaintance. You meet a, meet a man who claims to be a noble son and the rightful heir to the throne of the Lost Palace, Castle Carlevel. We met him, at least. Uh, we could rest or move to the next location on our path. Oh, which we were here. Oh, sorry. Uh, did you want to rest to get the bonus playback, or you think we're okay? That'll get your it card back. It would cost back. XP. We would only spend one. We could spend none, right, and roll no dice? True. But yeah. I don't want to spend XP for that. Okay, so I let's wait. Skip it, just okay, go. let's wait. Okay, we're going to the beach. We'll close up this book. Go to this book. Where's that? C. C. The beach. If there is no XP at the location, C one. Collect uh, or collect XP from this location. If you have any of the keywords lost, bruise, or blood, we have zero keywords. Otherwise, keep continue reading. A small fire burns on the beach, but there is no one in sight. You find no sign of the giant troll and no sign of Esther, the missing Dungrass girl. Suddenly, you hear rough voices belting out a ballad of the Dro Dragal Dragul invasion. Following the song to its source, you uncover two stinking drunk halflings lying in the damp sand beneath an overturned rowboat. They must be fishers by trade, for they smell equally of drink and of sea. Hey! Don't you know there's a troll about? One yells at you. Then he whispers, you ought to be less conspicuous. At which both halflings burst out laughing. They seem to be enjoying themselves, but they are also vulnerable here. It isn't safe to be intoxicated when Dragul stalk the beach. As King's Guard, you have some duty to intervene. Then again, the beach appears empty. What's the harm in letting them have their fun? So options here are challenge them to a drinking contest, which is strength and constitution. Okay. Uh, a test, skill test, or sing them a song, which is a skill test of wisdom and charisma. Uh, okay. Or the beach is not safe. Help them get home, which is a skill test of dex and charisma. Oh. But story-wise, what would we want to choose? So either drink with them, help them get home, or what was the middle one? I'm sorry. Challenge them to Challenge. a drinking contest, sing them a song, oh, sing them a or song. the beach is not safe. Help them get home. <laughs> Help them get home? Help them get home. Yeah, okay. C5. You introduce yourself as a king's guard and instruct the fishers to return home. They don't seem as impressed or as compliant as you'd hoped. Who are you? One of them asks in a challenging tone. The immortal knight? 
We fought in the war too, you know. The halflings quickly rise to their feet, eager to show you their strength. Come on then, one shouts. For Teron, for Nalos! They throw surprisingly quick and powerful punches. Skill check, quickness, one. Quickness, one. <laughs> Quickness one. So it is. Oh. Quickness one is a black six, purple one, black or purple four. Okay. Um. So we probably should add a die of some kind. Uh, so I can change to black, and that's all. Okay. Or a three and a one to any color. So the one could okay. Sort of, yeah, but if I wouldn't we pull, count on that. If we pull a red in our random, I can change it to any color as well. I can't manipulate much on this so one at all. Should we pull a purple? I think we should pull a purple, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll spend, I'll spend one. one. Yep. And you spend one. Get a purple. Spend a purple. And what about the black? We just you can change things, right? And we don't worry. <laughs> I, if we pull a red random, I can change it to any color. So Yeah, but we, by uh, some manipulation. Maybe, maybe do it. Uh, yeah, we can do black. Do a black. Okay, and then two random. Yep. Red, okay, that's good. Red, okay. Well, uh, did you want to roll this one? Sure. Okay. Okay, uh, we do have, let's just look in at what we got. We do have a Purple six. So can we need flip? a purple. Oh, I can flip any color. Uh, oh, only if it's a one. Ah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No. So I can change. I can change that three to any co color. And then if we can bump it up by one, that covers the four. Uh, which I can't really do I mean, much I on this it, one. I can do it with this. Except for the reds. I could change any color to a black. I also, if it's helpful, I can turn any of those reds to any color if then you can get them to what they need to be. Man. So. Oh, that might be helpful. But. Or maybe we, maybe not. What if I were to turn. What if I were to turn this to a black? Can you up it by one? Yeah. So you could up this to a black six. Let's just but pretend. I also can just do the black up one without you wasting card to change this color. So that would cover this one if I did okay. this. I can flip. Oh, I can flip. Oh, I could flip. I could flip this one. This red could go to a four. Then you can. Then I can turn it to black. So I can make this one. A black four. Okay. But, but then... Oh, yeah, then how are we doing? I, I, yeah. Oh, I can, can also bump flip... a red? Oh, no, I can't. Uh, can I bump a red? No. Hmm. Like, we could re-roll reds again. Oh, my ability can also... Yeah, you're right, Sajat. I can return any amount of stamina from my strength, so it's only one, to, oh, flip, to flip an equal number of oh, dots oh, the face. But I can only do yeah, one. Yeah, which is a purple to a, a okay, one. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so that goes here. I forgot about that, thank you. Okay, then you're doing this one. And then I could move this one up to a four with this card. And then can we make... I can re-roll a red, and then we can see what we can do with it. I can turn it to any color, still. And I could also re-roll... Or I can flip. I can... I can... Um... I mean, we could. Uh, how do we do this? Yeah. We don't have a bonus like, play, so you we can need only to make play. it black. But I could flip it if it became a one. Did you already use this one as well? That was to do this, but I can undo that if needed. Well, I don't know because you can only play two cards. I know, I know, but I haven't played this one this turn. I'm I'm putting oh, all cards I here. Oh, I see. I see. We should both do this. Put all cards here, yeah, and, and somewhere invisible, and then move them to our piles after, so we don't get confused at what we previously played before resting. Okay. I'm no, yeah, to... you can do this one. Sorry, yeah, go ahead with that. That's happening to a four. But this is more important because it has an XP. I don't care if we fail skill checks, really. I just want to get XP. I think we just... I think we can re-roll it. 
I can okay. re-roll a red, then I can flip and or change or change it to a And there's also this play where I can pull a random and it becomes a six, which we could get lucky and it's a black, but the cool part is I can change anything to a black. So I could Oh, then just But then, but then, that's then you can't not do that. doing this. So then this is back to a three. So you need to find three. some way of bumping that. You know what I mean? Oh, well, I can't. Yeah, exactly. But if you but this, can... this red... So lame. Uh... Not... Oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do I can do it with this red. Because I can flip the red... To a four. To a four. And then I can change the red to any color. So okay. I can change it to whatever so color. So with two cards, you flip this, and this covers this. Yeah. And then you do that ability. So we pull out a random die, and it's a six. Okay. It's red. So that red becomes black. a black. Okay. There's my cards played. Done, done, covered. And these are mine. Yep. Bent and so we get two XP. Two XP. Put all these dates away. Okay. This goes back to hand. Uh, this would flip, but don't need to. Okay. okay. And then we were in. Twenty-five, I think. Oh, never mind. We're that's a long time ago. Uh, we were in five. Yeah, five. Uh, so pass. You dodge the blows and stop them. C10. C10 says, you catch hold of the halflings before they can land a blow, and they yield to you. My apologies, says one. I may be a bit slippery at the moment, but I can assure you that I served Nalos with dignity. Then he pr produces a map from one of his many pockets and hands it to you. Here, he says. This will get you to Longtooth Island, he tells you. Oh, we're going to add an island, I bet. Uh... We were out there today and saw shiny things <laughs> uh, floating in the air. Take our boat if you'd like. The King's Guard should investigate. You inquire about the troll and the missing Dungrass girl, but the fishers say they haven't seen either. But to be fair, one says, we have been under the boat. Reveal discovery card two and place one XP on it. Discovery card two. Yeah, <laughs> nice. A little long tooth island. Uh, which is going four. There we go. And one XP. Use an item, rest, or move to another location. Uh, do you think we need to use the sling here? I don't think so. I mean, we can try. We can try. It costs, it's, no... it costs nothing. Sure, so it's ninety three. C ninety three. C ninety three. Yep. Okay. The empty cradle of your staff sling flaps in the wind at the beach. It makes a nice sound. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. Okay, do you want to rest? Are you interested in resting at all, or no? Are you still okay? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can still rest. Because it'll get me back all my dexterity and stuff. And yeah, yeah, Do sure. you want to just spend one? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just spend one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this will go back. Goes back. Three here. One here. Oh, yeah, I got to roll dice. Roll it up. Five. All right. All clear. Bonus play. We'll go back. Two. Okay, so I still have three. Okay, this is now reset, so we can't do that. Okay. Those are refilled. So okay. now we're going to move to another location. Yes. We're going, going to yes, yes. Long Tooth Island. I think so. Uh, which is E. We should use our sling here because maybe we can hit the birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like where you're going. <laughs> Longtooth Island. If you have the keyword muck, E2. If there's no XP at the location, E1. Otherwise, collect the XP from the location. Continue reading. The halfling's boat is small but sturdy. You row your way out to a sandy island topped with a bit of grass and a few palm trees. There is a strange stillness here. No gulls overhead. No crabs scuttle across the beach. Even the wind seems still as you step onto the shore. At the island's center, a shiny ball of elvish silver floats in midair. Ooh. <laughs> I want it. All right. We could grab the ball, which is a fight. Go to E3. Okay. We could rest or move to another location. So it gives you a chance to rest before... Before we... you fight? Yeah, so let's grab the ball. Okay. E3, we're good with a fight? Yeah. Reaching for the floating ball of elvish silver, you find something thick surrounding it. Thick enough to stop your hand before it reaches the prize. You try to push forward, but the strange... Oh yeah, we couldn't use an item yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the strange substance surrounding the ball drips heavily around your arm and begins to squeeze, pulling you inward and sucking away your weapons. 
Reveal the ooze enemy card, which is 43. So what I think is this ball, if we can get it, is going to work with that sling. Yeah, and then we can use it to fire, it fire something. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Uh, all right, ooze enemy card. It's the ooze. Oh, okay. So uh, oh, we can get purple some... one, black three, red ugh. red four, and a green or black five. Thanks, Edgar. Sorry, I forgot about that. I reset my ability. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, no modifications on this one? Uh, nope. Awesome. So okay. if you just want to grab a green token to start oh, yeah. on our start round. That. Each player, place one weapon card from your hand or spent space under the ooze. Uh, well, I have two. I guess I can choose. Yep. So I'm going to choose this one that manipulates blue dice, which we don't even need anyways. Uh, yeah, I'll keep the jewel dagger. We'll put this under... Oh, you stole my weapon. Yeah, that's what oozes do. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. We're, so we're just doing a combat. Okay. And I need to. I need like a. To stay where we are. Yeah, I'm just gonna put one of these dice like right there. Okay. Remember to read that section out. <laughs> okay, I can put in two to gain a red die. Mm -hmm. Or do you think we don't do anything right now? We see what we pull, and then no, we need to block counterattack so we yeah, can like right. not be like destroyed after. You're right. Well, red counterattack is probably one of the most important, right? Because yes. it does three. So I'll yeah, I really two. should have buffed my strength stat. Like I'm realizing this. So gain a red. And also, extra combat dice is like a priority. Yeah. I'm now realizing yeah. even so more. If we, uh, I'm going to get another red. But again, we could get another red on the next attack. Yeah. See but what getting happens. a red now increases our odds of seeing the numbers we need. Yeah. I mean, I can turn a red into any color. So if we did do another red, not technically. Uh, yeah, I'm down if you want to do it. Okay. Let's get another red in there. Let's not play games. And we can get one more, or we just let it be random. Uh, I'm good with random. Okay. Oh, it's all red. Oh, okay. Well, we have good odds. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't even know how many colors uh, each of each color in the game. I never even thought of that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Like I assumed it. it was only two of each color, but now I just was. Uh, yeah. There's definitely two more reds I can see in here. Maybe it's probably five. one of each. Five. Uh, four. Uh, sorry, four of each. I should say. Nope. There's. Oh, I mean. Dump them. There's definitely two more reds in there. Uh, oh, there's it's six, six of each. each. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So it's probably good to know that. So when you're like, how? What are the odds of seeing? Uh, another red after you pull two reds are not very, are pretty, like, still pretty, like, still a good chance. Okay. One, three, three. None that we need. Damn four. And we change the value. No, I can just read Or we can flip. Can you flip a red? Yes, you can, right? I can flip a red, yeah. That becomes a four. Uh, so that covers that. So I have to use... I can change that three to a black. I have to use my ability to do... Oh, I can't. I don't have any strength. Let me see. It's a one or a four. Oh, you suck. Hold on. I can re-roll. No, I thought you had. Okay. I have with my ability, but I don't have any stamina. I have to spend for my strength. Uh, sorry, I don't have any strength. Oh, okay. Spend any amount of stamina for so your strength. So you need to save strength on ability. So maybe we should have done something like spending three to get the red die instead of you doing that. But okay. we didn't, so who cares? Do you want me to just re-roll a red? Um, so good. <laughs> Lame. These reds are gonna kill us. I know. As soon as I see something. Oh, the... I can do this. I can do this. I'm so sorry. I do have. Yeah, you do. I, do I have. thought so. Sorry, sorry. I can flip two of them if that matters. Uh, uh, do we need four of anything else? No. Oh, we, but I can, I can use... turn the one to a black. Okay, so I can flip this. Yeah. So boom, that's flipped. And that's that. This sorry. covers that, so we don't take three counter attacks. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Then what I'll do is convert something to a black, which is this becomes a black and covers the two counter attack. Okay. We need a one Do we want purple. A... Hold on. Oh, I can change a red to any color. I can also change a one to a uh, purple, which is okay. Could work, right? Yep. That covers that. Okay, so that's not bad. So I see what also is happening here is kind of cool. Is we're using up reds to cover things that aren't red. So like I can see in future tests, where then we know we're not drawing what we need. <laughs> so like if we keep using miscolors to cover others, then it's like yeah, it could be yeah. A... 
So uh, obviously we don't have a die to even cover the last one. So okay, these ones. Is the mine. the play limits for the whole combat right? No, it's each. It's each round of combat. Oh. Oh, good question. I think it's. Never even thought of that. Because what happens when you have multiple enemies? You I can think only it's play each like... round. But is, the is the bonus sure? play is only. Let me read. Let me read. Maybe the, maybe the oh, reference yeah, maybe card has it. On here. And bonus play token. Yeah, it doesn't say on the reference, but maybe in the rules. Each round, says Janet. Oh, it's each round. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. I Thanks, Edgar. Say, when you have a handful of like 15 cards and you only play a two in the whole combat, that's kind of rough. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. So do we want to try for... So now we take one oh, yeah. hit. Okay, one counterattack. And then we also lose uh, an XP. Okay. Okay, we're on round two. Um, do now, we want to put in a green? Or black? Because it's green or black. Oh, yeah. But black is better for you, right? Well, I, I only have manipulating a black up or down one. Uh, I have flipping a black. Yeah, well, and we grab a random six, which I could, if we have, uh, yeah, if it, be, if it, it was a random six, I could manipulate it down to a, a black five. So let's see what we get, I guess, before you play that one. So do you want to get a black? I'll put one in, you put one in? Yeah, or sure. do you want to put two in? Because I have two, four, six, seven. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Okay. And then pull two other rando. Hopefully one's a green and one's a black. Yeah, just for more odds. Yep. Oh, there you go. In green. Oh, ah, there, there we, we go. go. Okay, roll a five. Or a two. Or a six Can you flip? On oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's reduce. lots of options here. Uh, five. five. We got black. it. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. We beat them in round two. Yay. Okay, so then okay. we go to victory you destroy it. E4. Well, let's do, I do oh, yeah, the reward rewards. first. Uh, two gold. Two gold. And two XP added to our thing. Okay. Two XP. That goes away. These go back. This gets reset. Any discarded cards go to your hand. Yep, I yep. don't have any. Boom. I'm assuming we'll get these weapons back. Maybe it'll be covered in slime and become new versions or something. Uh, E4. You pull your weapons free from the ooze, ripping it apart in the process. There's nothing left of the creature except the ball of elvish silver floating in a stinking pool of muck. Revealed discovery card 85. And then record the keyword muck. Ball of elvish silver. 85 costs one stamina each to use this uh, tinfoil ball here. <laughs> oh, but this ball's gonna go in our sling as we decide. That's discuss. what I'm saying. Yep, yep. Okay. Or what I hope, what I hope is gonna happen, is we can find all the pieces around the map to build a pinball table, <laughs> and then we can use that ball in the pinball table and play pinball. That would be more fun. That would be definitely cool. All right. Uh, return any cards under the ooze to their owner's hands. That was mine. And we could use an item rest or move to another location. Do we want to use the item here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have to spend one. Um, one stamina each. One stamina each. each. Uh, and it's for, oh, you just take mm -hmm. one to your pool, yep. right? I keep thinking eight, you have to spend six, it from here. Seven, eight. Uh, so eight, we're going to use both together, right? Two, three, four, five. Yep. Sorry. Uh, yep. So it is 85. 85, 93. E85, 93. Does that exist? Yes. The ball of elvish silver fits snugly in the pouch of the staff sling. There's nothing to target here other than the waves in the trees. You fling the ball at a palm tree and it lands with a satisfying smack. A tree crab falls to the sand and gives you the stink eye. Okay. <laughs> uh, use another item or rest. Move to another location. So here's not where to use it. Maybe it was on the beach. Where did it say? I thought there was stuff. Maybe it was on the beach, yeah. But here we had to go to get the ball that we needed. So now we got to go back so to the beach. So do we need to rest yet? Uh, I have... Oh, you're at eight. But if we rest, it'll also fill our stats. So it's up to you. Sure. Yeah? Are you okay with it? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Just one is Just fine? One. Sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, roll a die. All right. Here, we'll just roll one die. Oh, yeah. We each do it, whatever. One. So, oh, wow. One. Awesome. Four. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'll just take so this we... away, put one. Okay. Flip your stuff, flip that token. Oops. And oh, then spent fill cards, my spent cards. Spent cards. Did you fill your stats up? Yep. One, two, three. Uh, okay, so we are moving okay. to another location? Yes. 
go to C? Yeah, because I think we maybe we try. Inside? Yeah, it's going to get expensive to keep using that ball at, I'm fine. at the set so every I'm going to spend it right now. And we're going to C85. You spent one? Is it C? So use, is that the first option? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes, sorry. yes, we can't just use it automatically. <laughs> no, I, there is an option yeah, here. Yeah, we but... always got to start at the beginning. I'm getting excited. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there's no XP at this location, C1. So it is C1. If you have any of the keywords lost, bruise, or blood, no. C12, but we don't. The beach is quiet and lovely with its curling surf and sun warm sand. The fishers have gone home, but their boat remains. If you'd like to sail for Longtooth Island, use an item, rest, or move to another location. Use, use an, an item. item. One. So we'll take one each, and we're going to C8593. Yes. Uh, you look at your staff sling and a ball of elder silver, and you look over the waves. You are tempted to hurl the ball as far out of the ocean as you can, but then it would just end up in the belly of another beast. Oh, no. And that would be no good at all. Each player, return one stamina from your fatigue box to the supply. Yes, they're like, you idiots. So, like, nice try, guys. <laughs> nice try. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. I think we move. This is... I feel like we yep. need to use it, like, somewhere around here. Okay. I was trying to hit go. a seagull, but... I know, I thought we could hit a seagull, but no. Yeah, let's go this way? Yeah. Boom, what do we hit? One. Number one in two. Adventure 2. 2-1. Two Adventure 2-1. One. You hear a horrible squeal and run to discover a pig lying in a ravine. It must have fallen and broken a leg. It writhes in pain and fear. The pig is pink with dark spots, one of which resembles a black swan. You cannot see the whole ravine clearly from where you stand because of a rocky overhang that obscures most of the ravine floor. You hear a rustling sound coming from beneath it. Option one is see if you can help the pig, which is a fight. Or option two, investigate the overhang, which is a skill test of dex and constitution. Uh, Bomb hat? Help the pig? Sure. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, advance to 2 I think we get better rewards from that. Yeah. Advance to 2 29. I think. You reach the bottom of the ravine and discover no broken leg on the pig. Instead, there's a massive, angry welt on its abdomen. The poor animal froths at the mouth, clearly, the victim of some horrible venom. You turn around to see a giant scorpion crawling towards you from under the overhang. Combat. The Venomous, so we need Venomous modifier, and the Scorpion number 19. So, Venomous, after rolling the dice pool, return a black die from the dice pool to the bag for each three result rolled. Oh, okay. And then... Giant Scorpion... Is one green, four black. It looks like black's the most important, which is the one it's returning, which is annoying. Uh, and then white five and a white six. Yeah, I can manipulate some white dice, so that's good. We just need to have them. Yeah. Uh, okay, we are. Shoot, twenty nine. Twenty nine, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna say twenty nine. Yeah, I think so. I just see the same thing on the page, but... Okay. Uh, I can put in for a white. Uh, I can put two yeah, in. Yeah, I'm down. You want to do one and one? Or do you, you want to get two whites? Let's do two. Okay. Okay. And... I'm going to return blacks Only if on you threes. roll a three. Yeah, yeah, let's put a black in. Okay. Okay, so this is all the die. We don't have any additional, so I'll roll up these ones. Ah! Okay, so we can... Uh, oh, so we gotta re return one black because we roll for each three we roll. Okay, okay so... but it's okay. I can convert. Uh, where is it? Mm, this one. I can convert this to a black to cover this three counterattack at least. Okay. Do you want to? It will get us an XP. Do you want to use your extra die and then we can? And it comes back as a six, or comes in as a six, or no? But it's a random color. It's a random so color. Do you so... have a way to change it to white? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll do that shirt. Okay. Domesticated. So pick, a, pick a random die. Random die coming in as a six. Green. Okay. A six. Oh, but if, oh, you have a but green if it's flip, green, it's two counterattack on this one might be more important. I can flip. 
Uh, oh, no, that's a six. Can't. I keep on way wanting to. Okay. Okay. I can use my ability. Flip any. What is that? That'll flip to a four. Yeah. Because like this one counterattacks for two. This one only counterattacks for one. Yeah. So it'll be less fatigue we take. Uh, and then do we have any way to flip a oh. white? If you can flip a white, it becomes a five, which covers this too. I can. So if you just flip both with two strength. Yeah. And then I can up a white. Uh, oh, no, 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 the, we want to cover this one. But it becomes, if I flip it, it becomes a four. Oh, sorry. But then I, I can use three, this to, yeah, yeah well, so I'll use my ability, and I'll return two, two <laughs> stamina yeah, to yeah. flip both die, so to a one and to a four, so this will fill in there, and then I'll use my war lance to up this one to oh, a five, five. Yep. and then put that there. All right, so now we get, for the next round, we get counterattack by two, so we're going to take one, uh, you need? just... Clear out four and put a five in there. Actually, I'm at ten. So let me just put it all there. Boom. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So we go here next round. All right. So we just need, need a white, a white six. Die. I'm at two, four, six, eight. I'm at eight. Let me do five, one, two, three. Hmm. And we don't have any whites, eh? Nope. I can turn any color to a white, so maybe we don't go for a white. Yeah, and if it happens to be a black, a white, I can, f or black one, I can flip it. Uh, if it's a black two, I can reduce it, then flip it, and you can change it to a white. Yeah. Uh, I can manipulate a black also twice if needed. I can re-roll a white or a red, and then you can change it. So maybe we just let it roll and see what happens. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, so we're just Three trying. Three dice. Okay. A red, a black. Angie says, look at the strategy. They're right. loving it. <laughs> I just hate not having the cards them. we need. <laughs> and rolling dice is annoying, but I love the mitigation on dice. You know that. We also do really love puzzles and things like this yeah. are a puzzle. That's what we like role player, right? Yeah. It's just role player with a story, right? That's what it feels like. Oh, a six red. Okay. Here I can just do a straight. Uh... Boom. It's white. Covered. Boom. Yeah. We win. Yeah, we're better at combat than we are at and skill checks. And there wasn't a black. Oh, we would have had to return this one, actually. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Because the three was rolled. Uh, but we're still good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so victory. Re reward. Well, let's do rewards here first. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Two XP, right? Two XP. Okay. Let's flip this over. Discarded cards go here. Let's go back. These go back. 19. And that's been flipped, you're good? That's been flipped, yep. Okay. Uh, all right, so now we're going to read the goodies. Uh, you tear the creature limb from limb. Uh, we're going to go to 2-17. Uh, you put an end to the giant scorpion and turn your attention to the wounded pig. After a few more moments, the venom seems to wear off. Its squealing stops. The pig struggles to its feet once again. Looks you in the eye as if to thank you, and then runs off into the hills. We can rest or move to the next location on your path. How's your fatigue? 10? Yeah. We can rest. Yeah? Yeah, I have 8. You have 10. Okay. 1 or 2 dice. That's why I think we should spend more of this stuff more sparingly if we're going to keep getting options to rest. Yeah, it feels like you rest almost every option. Yeah, because if we just keep spending this stuff, and then we just go heavier, like, I, I we don't just know. lose Maybe XP that's every time we rest. Oh, but, that's right. It's but, all the extra XP. Never mind. Scratch that. Do you want to? Do you want to just do one, or do you want to do a two and try to? I say we do two. Two. Okay. So let's roll two. You can reroll these same ones. Yep. I'm just gonna get my cards back and flip all this. Flip that rest token. Uh, so I get seven. seven out of here. So I'm gonna just put three little cubes in my fatigue. And I get also seven, five, six, seven. So I only have one left. So that's good. Uh, that's flip that, and then I'll just fill up my bars. And two down here. Okay, I feel like we're better now. Uh, okay. To go into the next. And then. And then I think it was the moving. Move, yeah, right? yeah. So I guess we're gonna move to D. I'll get out of this book. And go to this book. Uh, D. Dunegrass Farms. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no XP at this location, D1. Otherwise, collect XP from the location and continue reading. At the farmhouse door, you're greeted by a note. Gone to look for Esther. We'll return with her or not at all. They've left a shovel leaning against the porch railing. Perhaps it will come in handy. Reveal discovery card 74.
Uh, Edgar says, Robbie, you should keep using your... Oh, oh did I? yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, Edgar, I know I should do that, and I keep forgetting it. Yeah, yeah, we can just say I did it. Yeah, whatever. because you would have had, we had yeah, definitely yeah. more cards. Because, so yeah, our play limit, if it's every single round, like, on the round we win, like, if, you should just if, do I, it before. Yeah, if I don't use two cards, then I just use it, right? Yeah, especially because it's a discard, right? You get it back? Yeah, thank you, Edgar. Yeah, I keep, I keep forgetting it is in my hand, even, as, like, a thing, because it, like, doesn't really do anything in the combat. It does buy us extra plays, probably. Okay. 74. Thank you, Edgar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Steel shovel. Oh. 74 costs. Some uh, stamina to use, obviously, or oh. fatigue to use, which makes sense to this, dig. This would probably be helpful at the beach. To find all our pinball machine parts. We're going to dig them up. All right. Uh, as you turn to leave, you are met with a startling sight. Startling sight, sorry. A muscular, 20-foot-tall woman in thick green skin and protruding tusks is grabbing pigs from a nearby pen, snapping their necks and, and with a flick of her thumb and tucking them into a massive leather sack. Oh my God. Looks like you found that troll, so we could attack it. We could attack it with a fight, D2, attempt to frighten her into submission with strength and wisdom, or a uh, skill test, or a skill check. Keep a safe distance and see where she goes. I mean, we are good at fights. No, let's follow her. Let's follow, okay, let's follow her. I agree, okay. Keep a safe distance, see yeah, where she goes? Yeah, that's probably a better idea. But do we have good constitution and wisdom? Uh, yeah, we're okay. Yeah, we're okay. I have two and two in both. All right, let's keep a safe distance, see where she goes. D4. You duck behind the corner of the house and watch the troll do her work. After she collects nearly a score of pigs, she hefts a sack over her shoulder and begins to tiptoe away. It's strangely amusing to watch this giant's outsized attempt at stealth, yet her pace is quick and her stride is long. You'll need your wits to read her movements and guess her destination guess and guess at her destination. If your dragon head favor, uh Dragul's favor. Yeah is one or higher. It's one. Each player adds one stamina to their wisdom attribute row, ignoring the usual limit. Nice. So if we keep pushing this, helping out the trolls and not being jerks to trolls, then our Dragul favor stuff, like we could we could really go like kind of like push Heavy one and, way, you yeah. know, like but maybe, is, I don't know. Isn't maybe? the goal of this scenario to get a troll's head? Doesn't mean we have to listen like, <laughs> man, screw the king, man. We'll just drop all the king's favor. Like, <laughs> You're not the boss of me, King. True, true. Okay. We're working with the other side here, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so D4. Uh, skill check observation one. Observation one. So we need a green four, a white five, a white or a green five. Okay. All right. Uh... So, I can manipulate the whites, which is good. Uh, here, we'll put a white in. Yeah, one and one. Okay. And I see. Do we want to do a green in too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm down. So, a white and a green. And we could just do another white. Yeah, we could, because we only have one shot at it, right? So. Yeah, I'm okay. down. And yeah. then the other one will be random. Okay. Grab a random. Oh, it's another white one. Okay. We have four, fives, and fives. Okay. Okay, we got five <laughs> and five. Okay. Uh, oh, if we can just reduce a white or a green, we can cover. Oh, I can. Let's see. Sorry. Uh, okay. Can we? Can we? I can manipulate a white. But that's not helpful. No, it is. It is? How? Do we... uh, oh, because then can we can well, change. One, one covers here, like a white five is covered. A white five is also covered. Hold on. Uh, but we could manipulate this to cover the one with the XP, which is kind of more important, I would say. If we have a way to change it. it to green? I can change any color to white, but I can't change any hold color on, to hold green. Hold on, let's, let's figure this out. What's a flip to? Hold on. Is this what side it was on? Yeah, yeah, I haven't touched any of that stuff. I haven't flipped anything. No, no, I'm just checking. Okay. But we definitely have two covered if we want to go for it. If we can get a four somehow out of these other two, then it's good. But I, I don't know if we can. But maybe we can turn one of these to a four, and it's easier to get one of those to become a five. Because we, if, we, if you can manipulate a green, we can cover this five. And then we just need some way of manipulating a white. I can't really manipulate green, but I can manipulate the white. Like for this one, I can flip it to a six. And then I could, but that doesn't matter. I can turn it to some other color first. This one? 
Oh, this the one. white. How do we then? But then you already have a six green, so that wouldn't make any sense. Uh oh, is a pickle. Okay, hold on. I can also flip with my ability, mm. but flipping them would only become like these would become what? Two, Four is twos. right. Oh, is it twos? Oh. Mm. Okay, so we have rerolls of whites. I only have manipulation of white. Oh, you know how? One oh of these yeah, two? I do. I do have that. Yeah, I do have that. So we have rerolls. Worst case. So let's do what we're do. Let's put these two in for now, and let's reroll this. So oh, we, we need this. We need rerolls of green. Oh, unless you can change it to any color you said, right? Uh, not a four. Oh, you know what I can do? Nope, that doesn't work. If if we if I manipulate this to a four, can you make it any color? Uh. No, you can only... make it black or blue. Yeah, I can only make it blue or white. This is useless. This is maybe useful. That's yeah, that's useless. Like if I change it to black. Well, let's think this. So I can if you. I can change. Let's see. I can change. Hold on. I might be able to do some trickery. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to. We need it's this one we need to manipulate. So if you turn it to a black, then you can. If I turn it to a black, I can lower it to a five and lower it to a, a four. But then we have no way of turning it back to a green. Back to green? No, because I can turn it to. Uh, no. What can we just. Uh... If you flip it. If we flip it to a one. Then I can turn it to a green or a black. Then. <laughs> Uh, doesn't make sense. Uh, then, yeah, I don't have enough plays. <laughs> I don't know. This is annoying. No, no, no. It's fine. There's, there's a way usually. Oh, uh, it's annoying. No, there's not. We our card, our card quantity is hurting us. We don't have stuff. So reds and greens are like a bane. Uh, let's see. So if I flip it to a one, you turn it to a black. Maybe we. Then you, then what? Then you re-roll it? No. And then we can't turn it back. Get a six of any color. Like if I pull this, depending on what it is, then we get a six. But depending on what it is, we might be able to manipulate it. Well, only like a black, really, or a pink. Or a red. I could reduce down to five. But not four. But then I'm doing the same thing of like, I change this green to a black and move it down. So with three plays, I can get us a black four, but then we have no way of turning it to a green, right? No. Oh, this is crazy. Mm. That sucks. I think we're just failing it. I'll turn green to white and then turn it to a five. Yeah, with your ability, I think, is the way. But then we have no way to turn it back to green. Your ability can flip this to a one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not. That's not good. But if it becomes a one, I already can turn anything into black. Yeah, and we just can't turn it back, which is the problem. I can if it's a one or a three, but that doesn't make sense either. But now here's the thing. I wonder if you did try that card, this card, based on the color, yeah, maybe if it's red. We can do some shenanigans. But how do we put it, it on the slot? Wait, I don't have a way to turn to green after. You're right. You're right. Oh, if it's red, I can turn it to any color. So if we can manipulate it by re-rolling mm. it or flipping it, then I can turn it to green. That's the only play I think we might have. Random die? Yeah. A random die and this becomes a six. Yes! Yes, okay. Becomes a six. 
So I can now roll it, <laughs> right? Sure. Or I flip it. I could also re-roll it if you need more manipulation. Let's let's roll it. I'll just roll it right here. A two. Okay. So if you flipped it, it becomes a five. And then it has to be. How are you? Oh, you can change it. I can it. change it once we get it to. I guess I could re-roll yeah, it. Yeah, you re-roll it. So we need it to be a three or a four. A five. Oh, we need a four. We need four. We need a four. And I'm I, I could bonus play. I don't have a way of manipulating the number. Yeah, that's silly. Hmm. And if I flip it, it just goes back to two, right? Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Dang it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sucks. You know, four green. There's no way for you to turn a white into any color. Only if it was a one or a three. I can make that white green, yeah. Oh, but then, but then we then need to yeah. flip it and reduce it twice or re roll three a green. Is, or... It would be a four. Oh, hold on. Uh, do you have this card still? No, I don't have any like that. Oh, I thought you did. Only for blacks and purples. Oh, because I could up it to a two. Uh huh. Then I could flip it. It would be, but it would be a five. Yeah. And you do that twice. But if I did six, five, oh, both ways don't work. Five, six, five goes down to a two. Wow. I know. It's it's frustrating. Wow. We'll get there. We'll get there. Let's just take our beatings until we get more XP buy or more gold to buy cards. Oh, on. there's a hold on. I have another another option. You have two cards left you can play if you use that bonus play, because you already played this. Because I can turn that red into a white. But mm -hmm. we can't get that. If I manipulate the white to be a four, we can't turn it to green, right? I don't think so, no. No. I can only turn a one or a three into a green. One, Once I see the like three. turning a four or a five or something into any color, I'm taking that card for sure. Because, yeah, I could put this to a white and then turn the white to a four. That doesn't help. But us. that doesn't help us get it back to yep. a green. We need to find red manipulation and green manipulation, like up and down. That would okay. help. Okay. But we don't have that. Doesn't entrap let you flip any die? To a one to a, or a four? Oh, I thought it was a one or a... I don't know. Uh, oh, I thought it was flipping a one or a four. Let's find out. Let's find so maybe out. maybe I was misreading that card. Let's find out. What does that symbol mean? Oh, no. It, it just says a die of a specific value. Flip a die to its opposite side. So that first symbol, here, here, here. I just go to the very end of the rule book. So that symbol on the top of the card, right there on the top left, is flip a die to its opposite side. No questions asked. That's what that symbol means. And then this dotted line around a die means die of a specific value. So if we look here, this means flip a die to its opposite side. And then it's the specific value of one or specific value of four. So that's how that card works. In trap, flip one or a four. Yes, correct. Yeah, that's how I would so think So if you have it. a one or a four, you can flip it. I, th I feel like this should be on the top of the card and the flipping should be on the bottom. So it's like take a die of this or this and then do the flip action to it. But again, it's like upside down, so it's a little weird. That's what I think, but. Okay. Flip a one or a four to its side. Gotcha. Okay, well, I think you're right. I think we're just failing this. I don't think there's anything that we can do. Yeah, because you can flip this to a six. That doesn't help us. I can flip this, that you to can flip a to one. a one. Doesn't help us. This, you can flip to a two. I can flip to a two. And if you can add two. No. I don't think that's happening. Nope, I can only flip it back. Yeah. 
So let's just not. Yeah, I think we just lose. Okay, we just lose. Get an XP. Put all these dice away. Yeah. Before I go insane. Yeah. I just hope we get a good market draw this time that helps us with these reds and greens yeah. and stuff. Oh, I'll flip this because now we can rest. Get this back to my hand. Okay, so we fail. She loses you. D6. Uh oh. Uh, D6. The giant, the giant troll strides are long and incredibly quick. She is gone with her sack of pigs before you can gather enough of your wits about you to track her movements. She went east. That is all you know of her whereabouts now. Record the keyword lost. We can use an item rest or move to another location. Do you think there's any use for using a shovel here? This costs one. I mean, we can try. We can try. Is the sling used here? I don't know. Oh. Nothing has, like, told us that it's, like... I think it's going to be obvious when we use things, but, I mean, I'm down with trying to shovel. Yeah, we can try to shovel. It's so one. one. That's six. Uh, which is item number? 74. 74. So we're at D, 74. Oh, right here. The only thing you can use the shovel for here is cleaning out the pig's pen. Is that how you want to spend your time? <laughs> option. <laughs> Look at the option. Oh, no. Yes, please. Choose the player to do the work. D12. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. That might not be bad, yes, though. Yes, please. Yes, please. D12. We might get something from Choose that. the player to do the work. Who's doing the work? Uh, I'll do the work. I have less fatigue, just in case it makes me have... Advocate. And you have good strength? Sure. Yeah, I'll do the work. Okay. E twelve. Uh, you find an empty pig pen to clean out. The shovel doesn't seem well suited for this task. It takes you quite some time to improve the Dungrass Farm's manure heap. They are sure to be grateful if you ever make it home again. Good work. Choose a player. Add three stamina to your fatigue box from the supply. Oh, for the chosen player. Oh. Three three fatigue. If your entire party is exhausted, mark the death track and read the corresponding entry in the Tome of Encounters. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. Okay, so that gave us nothing but fatigue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, bad. So we can either rest or move. Do we want to go check out the chapel? Yeah. Like, we know we know the troll went east, but this is east, and so is all this. Yeah, we might have just went the wrong direction. Way. It's fine. Okay, well, let's go towards the chapel, yeah. so we Do want we want to go through this encounter, or do we want to go around, because we can? Hmm. Encounters haven't been terrible. It's just maybe another check of some kind. Uh, we can go to the encounter. Okay. Yeah, let's Flip go to the encounter. It is number two. Number two. Where did I keep that other one? Uh, so adventure two dash two. Uh, you make your way along the well-torn dirt road. You hear a cry for help in the distance. You race to the sound and find a hapling couple pinned beneath an overturned cart. They beg you for your help, saying that a group of bandits attacked them and stole their pony and all their gold. They identify themselves as the Dungrass family and mention that they are eager to get back to looking for their lost daughter. Oh. A few feet from them, you spy their weapon, an expensive-looking short sword lying on the ground. Please, don't take that, they plead. <laughs> it's the only defense we have. Oh no, oh no, Rob wants to take it. <laughs> Does it shine blue when orcs are near? Because I want it. Uh, if you have any of the titles hated by trolls, troll foe, trolls ally, or Troll Slayer. No, we have no troll titles. Okay. Uh, nothing there. Okay. So we could assist the halflings and chase down the bandits, which is a fight, or leave them and take their short sword. Oh, I you want to take it? Tiny's like, we take, can it, take, take it, take it. KJ says loot. Maybe we get it if we still help them. Uh, Jana says, Did you rest? Mel's stamina is full, but yours is not. Damn did enough. you fill yours, your bars? When did we rest? Uh, before, I don't know, it was... Before that fight or that check we did. And then didn't we buy a bunch of dice? What's my stamina bar? What, like, these are all stamina bars, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't, we didn't buy green. Oh, and I didn't use my ability, you're right. Yeah, yeah, we'll pretend oh, that yeah. I played it. Here, thanks, here. thanks. I gotta put it in there. Move silent. I don't think you, maybe you didn't fill your bar. Whoops. Because we wouldn't have bought white dice in that. Best, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, maybe we yeah, did. Yeah, we bought a bunch of greens and oh, whites. Oh, and I used one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used one and one. We didn't rest after the fight, though, on purpose. I don't know if we should have, but we didn't. No, we didn't yet. Okay, okay. so we're going to... You want to take it? We can take it. Or you want to fight. Assist the halflings and chase down the bandits. Let's do the, the good thing. Okay, let's do the good thing. You're right. It's probably better. Are you sure? Yeah. What would you want to do, Mel? Be honest, without my influence. 
You want to steal? St the family is no, looking for their them. lost daughter, and you want to steal their only defense? No, I want to help them. That's why I cleaned okay. out the pen for them when they get back. It's going to be nice and clean. All right. Uh, so we're going to advance to 2-7, and we're going to have a fight. After freeing the Dungrasses, you easily catch up to the bandits in a shallow veil among the hills. They outnumber you, and they are ready for a fight. Combat. Gang of is the manipulator, whatever, modifier. And bandits, which is card number one. Oh, bandits. It's the bandits! So we need a one, two, or sorry, a white two, a blue three, a red three, and any color five. And it looks like they're going to steal our money as the longer we take. Oh, that But they have fun. lots of money we could gain. Okay, that's good. But what the gang of do, during the first round of this combat, the combat dice limit is reduced by one. Oh. So it's only a two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. So we're definitely fighting them for multiple rounds. Okay. At so least get one two. These. All right. Yeah, so this is a problem. So without resting, this stays oh, here. No, those cards would be back. They come back? Yeah, okay. just, just your This stays one. here. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So. Blue. <laughs> Uh, all right. Blue I can manipulate, white I can manipulate, red I can manipulate. Okay, this may not be terrible. May not be terrible. And it's only during the first round we lose a die, so... Yeah. I don't know, what do you think we pull? Yeah. I say we kind of just let... We like, let it... let it roll this turn. Yeah. And then we see what Because we have a wild, and we just see what we pull with these things. Since we know we have to go at least two rounds, maybe we get lucky. Yeah. Then in the next round we start buying what we need that's left over maybe is a good strategy? I don't know. <laughs> a black? I, I was looking at the elf characters, but then this hobbit sounded cool and I thought I would try something different. I, I wanted to pick an elf character, I did. I had them like laid out and then I had this assassin and some of the other ones that had sneaky cards and stuff and I was like, yeah, this one just looked cool. I, I just want to play this one based on like the art and it's a halfling and it was just kind of neat. And walking through life as a very tall person, it's nice every now and then to role play as like a little person. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of cool. I gotta be yeah, out they don't of my know how element. tall you are in real life. Yeah, 6'4". Six, six, <laughs> if, if anyone doesn't know, 6'4". Uh, so yeah, I bang my head on a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's fun to play different things in games. Okay, so I drew two black, which I guess is helpful for you. So I'll roll these. I did think, Kanji, of the one that you guys say I look like the art. Oh yeah, you do. I, I was gonna joke, I was gonna set up one with that as a joke and like not play it, but just like with that art that you guys say that looks like me. Uh, or find some way of bringing it up on the screen uh, over my head for a minute, but I, I forgot to do that. But yeah, I saw it in the box and was like, oh, there's that art from the side of the other box that they always say looks at me. Okay. Two black ones. Okay. Two and a three. Well, I can convert uh, anything to a blue and can cover this three counter attack. Yeah, that's a great idea. And if somehow we can get this black to a white, we can cover another three counter attack. I can do that. Boom. Let's play both those cards. And cover okay, them up. That's good. Okay. And that'll get us four gold total. Okay, so this, we get counter attack for three fatigue. Each. We lose one gold as we move to the next round. Okay. And then we just, oh, do we want to? That goes to your pile. Oh, yeah, sorry. And then now it's three dice. This doesn't matter anymore, the gang stuff. It says during the first round of this combat. So I'm thinking I might put two in for a specific red, and then we let the other ones... The only thing is don't spend all your strength whenever you can flip dice, so remember that. Or do you want to spend one, I'll spend one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Because I feel like we need to make sure we have a red. So I'm at eight. I'm at three, six, nine. Okay. And then the rest we can just be random, right? Cause... Yeah, this is a wild... So, it doesn't matter what it is, we just need it to be a 5. Oh, I also can convert a 3 to a red if that comes up to make this match. Okay. Okay. Uh, hmm. hmm. Okay, one sec. <laughs> I think the reds are going to be a, a pain in the butt again. So, uh... Well, I can... I can turn... Nope. I know. Okay. Wait, it's four goes oh, to I a can, three, right? Or yeah, I yeah. can make the four to a five. Or white. Okay. But let's just see. Just... But the reds, this is the problem with the stupid the reds. reds. I can flip it to a six. We can re-roll the reds as we normally do. Yeah. 
Okay, let's let's re-roll re the, the red. Oops. Six. Oh, it's not helpful. Want me to re-roll it now? I don't know. I hate red. Let me re-roll it now. Go ahead. Oh, remember you can flip, right? Yeah, yeah. but it still flips to a yeah, one. Yeah. Two. So, of course, you probably don't have a way to manipulate that up or down one. And if I flip it to the other side, it's a five. So annoying. Okay, hold on. No, but I can do... Okay. Can we? Can you manipulate this to a red? If it was a three? Yes. Okay, so let me use this to change this one to a three. That's my... Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then I change it to a red, and we cover this. Okay, and then... You have a way of making this a blue increasing it, or a red flipping it with your... Yeah, string. red to flip it. Yep. Spend one. And then it becomes this. And then it becomes that. Okay. Whew. Boom! We did it! And then these go to piles. These go here and here. Okay. We didn't need okay, so we get uh, one XP and five gold. Three. And then these four, are put away. Five. Okay, one XP and five gold. These go back to hand. Number one. What else happens? This uh, flips. This we is going to flip. Yep. Your cards uh, my go back cards to go hand. back. I don't have that card to play it again. Okay, I feel like we do need to rest though when it's sure. a chance. Oh yeah, I didn't cover the right thing. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, King of Bandits, the only yeah. one on the page. Okay. Uh, victory. You best them and place them under arrest. 2 nice. 9. 2 9. Even though the bandits outnumber you, you dispose of them quickly. You return to the site of the overturned cart to give the Dungrasses back their coin, but they have already gone. Gain one gold. Gain one gold. We could rest or move to the next location on our path. Do you want to rest? Let's rest. Okay. One or two, just one. Uh, one or two. Uh, one? I'm good with one. Okay. One. That's going to go there. That's going to go there. I get one oh, back. No. Amazing. Three. <laughs> okay, so now we put cubes back in our little bar yep. to fill it up. Uh, we get spent cards back to hand. Okay. I flip that. I flip that. Yep. Okay. And All right. This move was the next one. Yeah, move to the next location on our so path. Want to go to the chapel? Sure. Okay. Which B. is B. B. Need to be drinking. Oh, they're saying how tall they are in the chat. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Edgar's five seven. Uh, Matt's five nine. Kanji retracted his message. <laughs> Pandas is six five. Kanji said four four nine and, and deleted it. Obviously, <laughs> no, just check it. Pandas uh, said, said six five. Um, oh wow! He's taller than you. Yes, but not by In much. both directions. Oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah. No, understood. 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 <laughs> I'm like Kids are funny. I'm like five five. Pandas is six five. You guys are funny. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Rob's like a foot taller than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello down there. <laughs> Could you roll some dice, please? <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know how oh, we're Brian going to S be. Brian S says he's 6'11". <laughs> oh, yeah? Somehow, I don't believe Brian. I don't, I don't think what, I believe you either, whatever Brian. Whatever Brian says, I don't believe it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, Tiny. All right, B. Ancient Chapel. If you have the keyword discover... Nope. Nope. If there is no XP at your location, B1. Otherwise, collect the XP and continue reading. Ancient buildings of Nalos are held sacred by law. No trespassing is permitted and looters are imprisoned. So you are surprised to hear sounds coming from inside. Colorful splashes of light filter through fractured stained glass in the chapel's vaulted ceiling. A dir dirjolium bell hangs high above the marble altar, which faces rows of stone benches. Rounding the altar, you find a muscular gnome, wooden mallet in hand, standing over a door in the ground that has no obvious lock or latch. You can see that the door is made of dergolium. I keep saying that all different ways, I know. Uh, just like the chest at Black Lake. The gnome speaks in a low voice. Just in time, he says, give me a hand with this door. As he has guts inviting the king's guard to help him loot an ancient site. The gnome stands to offer you his mallet, and as he does so, you notice a branded mark on his arm in the shape of an eye. It seems that he is a member of the Starlit Door. Perhaps he can teach you the secrets of this chapel, or perhaps he conspires against the king's peace. Arrest the gnome for trespassing, or offer to help 
him open the door. Offer. Well, you know which op option I want to do. Offer to help him. Offer to help him. B3. The gnome smiles and hands you his mallet. I knew it. Adventurers after my own heart. Gimlix is my name. Uh, we increase our starlit door. Oh, I didn't realize that was a faction. In by one. He bows in the traditional gnomish greeting and steps aside. You bring the mallet down with great force upon the door, which rings out with a lovely tone. As the sound echoes around the chapel, you hear a faint resonance from the bell above. Hear that, says Gimlix. Bell and door are both made of Durgolium. The secret of one must lie in the other. If any player has the Grey Matter Object card... No. The hell is... Is that like one of these? No. Okay, I don't know. Uh, B7, otherwise B8. Okay, B8. Uh, Gimlix takes a mallet and adds it to his pack with a sigh. Sadly, no one knows how to make Dragolium anymore, he says. The closest thing we have is Elvish Silver. But even the elves can only produce crude imitations of work like this. Ding! Let's ding the bell with the ball! <laughs> yeah, but I was thinking that as you were reading it and you said that it was high up there. Gimlik stands and shoulders his pack. I have an appointment to keep in Undercity. I'll leave this mystery to you. If you do solve it, look us up. We can tell anyone in my order that you know Gimlik as a friend. Oh, you can tell, sir. You can tell anyone in my order you know Gimlik as a friend. He shows you the branded mark on his arm once again. The eye watches over us all. All right, Lord of the Rings called, and, uh, yeah. It's a different kind of eye. Sure. He says cryptically, then bids you farewell. Uh, reveal title card seven. You don't have it. Tarlick Nolan took it with him. Oh, oh okay, that's okay. that, yeah. That's what oh, I okay. thought. That's what I thought, Janet. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Friend of Gimlix. At an ancient site in Joville, you discovered a gnomish member of the Starlet Door. Instead of aggress arresting him, as Kingsguard should, you let him tell you about his quest to unearth powerful ancient artifacts. Of course. We're a friend with Gimli. I mean, Gimlix. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Where was I? Oh, no. We got the title seven. The... Oh, no. Real title cards. Oh, I maybe flipped the page. How do I do that? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Bids you farewell. Reveal title card seven. Mm, no, I don't know which one we're at. Sorry, I have to read. I flipped it and forget. Uh, open the doors, B3. B3 led to B8. And B8. This happened, man. If anyone no, watched King of Grail, like, <laughs> I edited it out most of the time, but there were so many times where I was like, wait, I forgot where I was because we went into a combat and then like came back and I'm like, I don't remember where we're at. And there's like seven entries on the same page all talking about the same combat. We can use sticky. I know. That's what I need to do. <laughs> but I will forget and we'll do it. Anyways, uh, B8. So we can now use an item, rest, or move to another location. Use an item. We're using two together, Two right? items. Yes, we're going to use. So this is going to cost us only one. Let's do it. Uh, because the sling is free. 8593. 8593. With your staff sling, you fling the ball of Elvish Silver into the Dragolium bell above, which rings out a crisp and lonely sound. Immediately, the Dragolium door slides open. The earth quakes and the air above fills with crackling green energy. You hurry through the door into an underground chamber. On a pedestal there, you find a gauntlet carved from a single piece of jade, and you slip into one of the chainmail Dragolium sacks that Tarek gave you. The quake ceases. Uh, the quakes cease, sorry, and the air above is quiet. You take a moment to admire the chamber's walls, which are carved with the scene of the arrival, when Azima first brought together many worlds thousands of years ago through the gate at Brizor Wall. Brizor, Brizor Wall. The gate is powered by six artifacts, and this gauntlet is one of them. Record the keyword discover and reveal... Our first rare card, number 28. And rare card, the rare cards are the ones with the, uh, the, the gem as the background, the background art there. Yes, precious. precious. Uh, real card 28. Oh. The Jade Gauntlet. We can convert any color die to a six. Okay. So far, I don't feel like that would help us very much, but but I mean, it's still, something. it's still something. We can know. never sell this card because it does not have a cost. And if Mel was ever stopped playing with me, or I was to stop playing with Mel, uh, this card would be handed off to the other players still playing the game if a player left the game. Okay, but we don't know where this goes yet. Who's taking it? Is that they put it in a player's? It just says reveal it. I don't know what. 
Yeah, just okay, as reveal it. Okay, so we get it, to choose then in, the, in this case. I'm assuming we get it. Because it looks like better. a card you play from your hand. It has yeah. the spent symbol and stuff. Whose deck is this better in? I don't know. With your ability, can you play as many spent cards or just one? Uh, I play a card from hand and I can treat it as though it were a different card in my pile. So it's not like I just spend three and I get to fire the ability off. I actually have to spend a card out of hand also. I see. And then you just play it as if it was a different yeah. card. I feel like these spent cards are good for you. I don't know. Yeah, Jan says one of us gets a card. Yeah, but I got would... the last card. You can take that card. Okay. I don't know. Any any color too? Okay. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. We could rest or move to another location. Uh, we're not we allowed can't to rest. rest. We can move. Okay. So where do we want to go? We didn't find Esther. We can go back to the beach. Yeah, I feel like we do need to go back to the. Or beach. we can go back to Jovel. I wonder now if we went there and the family's there. I don't know, though. Yeah, because maybe we would have done A, B, and then we could have went there before. Yeah. So let's go back there. That's fine. D? Okay, D. Yeah. No, we need, like, like all these games, we always forget. Like, we're always like, we should note things down when we see the entries asking for things. Like, we should have done more in Tain and Grail. Oh, yeah, because someone... To remember where to go back with things later when you're like, oh, yeah, now we have that keyword. Let's go back there. Yeah. Same with Sleeping Gods, Somewhere right? did ask for the Discover keyword, and I just don't remember. Yeah, I know. Same. Uh, Dungrass Farm. If there's no XP, D1. The farm is noisy with pigs, but empty of halflings. Use an item, rest, or move to another location. Just move? Yeah, that's not helpful. Uh, let's go to the beach. Sure. C. I feel like this is where we need to be. Uh, if there's no XP, C1. If you have any of the keywords lost, bruise, or blood. Lost. Uh, C12. You, as you arrive at the beach, you smell cooking meat. Gigantic footprints. Oh, yeah, because we were oh, on yeah. the hunt from yeah. the, the orcs. And she went east, yeah. The troll, the troll. Gigantic footprints and a trail of blood lead up to the coast to a cave, from which drifts the smoke of a campfire. Reveal Discovery Card 31 and place 1 XP on it. Oh, we got a location. If you have the keyword lost, erase it and record found. Okay. There's an XP for that, and I'll do that. The Shadowy Cave, which goes on 3 goes down here. Messy writing, because I can't write that far, but... Three. Yeah. Three, but is it here? Nope, it's that one. Oh, I see, there's a symbol. Oh yeah, duh, it's over there. Yeah, because the other one was a circle, and yeah. that's why I was confused on the other one. But I keep forgetting there's... Uh, but what is that connected to? Uh, off the beach. Oh, off the beach, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and we're here. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. Put an XP on it? Uh, yeah. Uh, then, if you have the keyword bruise, erase it and record trail. No. If you have the keyword blood, erase it and re record stain. No. We can use another item, rest, or move to another location. I feel like maybe we use a shovel at the shovel. beach, yes. yes. So let's spend one. Sure. Yeah. I'm up to nine. Am I uh, fatigued? Is that a 17? I'm at eight. Okay, so this is C... 74. C74. Oh, that's the next one. You dig around on the beach for a bit and find no treasure, but plenty of crabs to eat. You strike a fire and have a quick snack. Each player returns one stamina from your fatigue box to the supply. We could use another item rest or move to another location. Hmm. I feel like we already tried this combination here. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. When we yeah, came yeah, back. We did, we did. So we need to move to... Let's move to... Shadowy Cave? Shadowy Cave, yes. Right. Which is e, uh, F. Sorry, F. F. If there's no XP at this location, F1. Otherwise, collect the XP from this location. If you have the keyword talk, no. found, found, F3. The sandy beach transitions to hard rock and loose stone as you approach the mouth of the cave. The troll within is likely distracted, preparing her hogs for the fire. It should be a quick battle after which you can enjoy a feast of roast pig. You could look around first to better assess the situation, but you would risk losing the element of surprise. So we could charge in an attack, which is a fight, or explore the area first, which is a dexterity slash wisdom uh, skill check. Well, I feel like it was hinting to explore the area first. Well, it's our choice. Well, it's Do our we choice. want to just jump wanna... her from behind or explore? Yeah, the prize might give us a key. Uh, what uh... I, I also think is checking the area. We may not have to fight her. Maybe we find what she's doing is actually good, and maybe we still help the troll. Yeah. And we say, screw you, king. Surprise might also give us a modifier that will be beneficial to us. 
Oh, definitely. It'll be like have an extra die or get some extra stamina or something or change a die to a number you want or something crazy. Who knows? It's probably really good. I know. Explore? I'm with Tiny. Tiny in the okay. chat saying explore. explore. I think we'll find something good. It yeah. kind of hinted at it. I'm down. Because again, I, I, we're playing the role of like we're, we're helping trolls, the people that we are supposed to be killing. We've been helping. So I feel like we keep rolling with that maybe. Yeah, let's explore. Because things might not be uh, as they seem, right? And it, we have a shovel, so maybe that's helpful to explore. And maybe we can hit think... it over the head with it later? No, we might be able to explore here with it. Could build a trench and fight, <laughs> fight war from a trench uh, against a troll. All right, F10 is the explore the area first. You sneak up to the mouth of the cave, careful not to make a sound. The hard rock and scatter of loose stones present a challenge, as a, any small sound will echo throughout the cave. If you're playing in legendary mode, add the fleet-footed modifier to the skill check. We're not. No. Uh, it's a skill check stealth of one. Stealth one. Stealth one. Okay, so for this skill check, we are looking for a black two, black a white. white one, and a black or a white six. Okay. Um, any... We should probably throw in a white, right? Sure. Let's do a black, and I'll put one in for a white. So I'll put so one So I got black one. covered and half the white. Did you put... Okay. So I just need to put one? Sure. Okay. Black and a white. A Let's black go. and a white. And this, I can remove five, put a ten, so I'm at eleven out of seventeen. Okay, so we get two more die, which are just random. Stealth one, Rob zero. We got a red, <laughs> which I can change, which is good. Nice. And a green. Green was not good. Okay. Jamos is here saying, how's the game going? I just set up my copy, would watch, but do not want to spoil. Yeah, get yeah, out of here, Jamos. No problem, Understood. no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, going well. It's going good. I, I don't know. We're having fun so far. Yeah. It seems really cool. I like it so far. I'm excited to keep playing. But yeah, get playing. Get caught up. Yeah. We'll be back Wednesday playing episode or adventure three, three and four. And so Jamos, you gotta like pull an all-nighter and play the first three <laughs> adventures. Four, uh, the first four. First four. I actually have tomorrow too to play them. Yeah. So. <laughs> two today and two tomorrow. Let's go. Hurry up. <laughs> okay. And then you can join us and then laugh at our our mishandling of them. Oh, okay. Lots of threes here. Okay, I can flip. With my ability, I can flip die. What is that? Oh, that's a four on the other side of that. I can... What's a three become? Four. A four. I can flip, and I can turn this into any color we want. So I could put it... I can also grab any six, remember? Uh, so we might grab a white or yeah, black. Yeah, maybe we see that first. And maybe we can convert whatever Because maybe it I is. can also turn this just to a white. You want to do that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Or do we figure out first... Well, this I'll turn to a white one if you do that. And then but depending I, on what I have color a way of reducing is. this to a two. So that so covers then, these two, which get us XP. Based on the six you pull, you might pull black or white or a color that we can convert. I can convert um, I can convert any color to a white. I can convert any color to a black. Okay, so I think we got it. Yeah. Let's do it. Purple. So the purple, purple six. six. Putting this in my discard. Done. Okay. So I will make this white or sorry this red into a white one sure and then that one. i will uh thieves tools the second card sorry i should be doing this to reduce this down to a two cover this okay and do you want me to play do you want to play your uh i already played two so i don't oh. use a bonus play yeah so but i'll do you can convert... i can convert any color so i'll convert this purple into a white sure got it so gain 2 XP, put these into our little piles. Gain 2 XP. Do I do my bonus play just to get the uh, the fatigue out of our thing? If we plan to rest. If we plan to rest, yeah. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay, so that'll be on yours. So bonus play over here, Two. and I'll drop down to nine. These all go away. You got two out of your thing? I did, yep. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, oh yeah, we get these back to hand. Uh, yep. Uh, pass. You approach undetected, F-16. You carefully avoid loose stones and tiptoe your way up to the mouth of the cave to peek in. A halfling girl lies unconscious on the floor and two giant troll women sit nearby. One tending to the halfling girl and the other spitting pigs on the fire. They appear to be car a caring couple of trolls and seem to mean the halfling girl no harm, as I assumed. <laughs> Perhaps you could speak with them, but it also crosses your mind that the king would be truly impressed if you returned with... 
true two troll heads oh my God. in a cart. And he'll be angry if you return empty handed. We could attempt to speak with them, which is strength and charisma or attack. F12. I want to attempt to speak. Yeah, let's do strength and charisma, though. I have one. You have one. Strength. I got charisma, one. You got a whole bunch. Two, yeah. So we know it's going to be a purple and red is the focus. Okay. Do we have purple and reds and stuff? Uh, this is what I'm worried about. Red automatically scares red, me. Red, yes. I have purple manipulation. Purple, not really, but I have the red, red manipulation-ish. Except for changing the die. Like, up or down one. 16. I have 17. Was it 17 or 16? Uh, F16. We approached undetected. Oh. Yeah, right here. 16. Sorry, 16. It's oh, okay. Strength and uh, charisma. Strength and charisma. Hey, do we want to do that? Yeah, we want to talk to them, yeah. Attempt to speak with them. Uh, F11. F11. You present yourself to the trolls, introducing yourself as Kingsguard and offering to parlay with them for their lives and the life of the halfling girl. The trolls have no idea what you're saying. If you're... Dragul favor is one or higher. Each player adds one stamina from the supply to their charisma it is attribute one. row. Charisma. Okay, so okay. get a little one. So that's down helpful here. to get a purple die. Uh, F11. Ignoring the usual limit. Skill check. Persuasion two. Oh, we're leveling uh -oh. here. Uh oh. Persuasion two. All right, so Persuasion 2 is a purple 3, a purple 5, a red 1, and red 5, and a white or a blue 1. And this is 6 is the dice limit, actually. Oh, okay. This is exciting. So I think we're going to do a purple for sure, right? Do you want to do... Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll do definitely a couple purples. Remember, so you've got to keep your strength. So i got to keep my strength, so let's do two. But you can still buy... Let's do two purples, right? I'll do one and one. You do yeah, one I'll and one. Yeah, I'll do one and one for my purples. Two purples. Oops. The reds. Hmm. I'll spend one from red if you spend one from red to get a red. Okay. And, and then white or blue. Do... I can convert anything to white Hold or on, blue. Hold on, let me count my stuff oh, yeah. before I keep going. Uh, hmm. I'm at 12, so I have five spare. Okay. Which is fine. Three, six. I'm at nine. I, yeah, I can convert any color to white or blue, so... Potentially okay. for that one. It's just the other red one. Uh, I can convert no, any so color good. to a red or to a six. I don't know. Six. That's okay. just me. So now so, get three random dice. You don't feel good about this? No. I think we gotta get super lucky here, but we got a green. Persuasion Blue. Two. Rob ah. <laughs> Get the Black. rest token. Oh, I because I just forgot. To, I always forget to flip it because it's over there. But I did. Okay. Yeah. Flipped it after I last check. Okay, you go ahead. No, you roll. No, are you sure? Yeah, you roll this time. Ugh. Oh. Okay, we got a purple five. Let's just do this just so we can see what we yeah, got. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I can okay. make a one red. Uh, one green to a red. Okay, let's just think about that for a minute. We yeah. haven't done it yet. Uh, and then the purple. Two or three. Okay. I can turn any color to a red. Or, I mean, sorry, a red to... Oh, no, 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 sorry. Where was that? Oh, this one. We need this to become a red, but again, we don't have ways of making red, which is, like, getting us every time. Yeah. So we literally Four. don't have enough red dice. There's, like, literally no way we can pass because we're limited on reds, right? Unless we change, unless I use something like this to change. Oh, I already did change one to a red. Oh, we have enough red. Sorry. If we need, we oh, just yeah. need to increase this. We just this. need to increase that or re roll it yeah. so I can flip it. We could re roll. Because if we re roll first, then I can potentially flip with my ability flipping more than one if needed.
a purple, I can move a purple up or down one. So if I flipped it to a one, then you can make it a two, but that's still not good. Make a three. Five to a two. Okay. Hmm. Or remember, I can play like one of these. Like, if I use a spent, I can do it again. So, I could like I can get us a six that is a random color, and hopefully, it's a white or a blue, and we flip well, it. Well, I could also use my ability flip. We need this to be a five though, right? Or we have to re-roll this first before we do anything to see. Yeah, because we don't have a way to add one or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you want me to do it because you already spent a card? Just in case. Yeah, we have no plays, like bonus plays. So I literally have two card plays. That's it. Yeah. I, I, I think it's way too out of the realm, but... Because even... My if, ability can flip, yes, but I just want to know what this is to know if I need to flip this one. So it, it you know, like... Like I can turn this... If I flipped, oh, I would need two cards, though, to get this to be a blue one. And I also can make this a blue one instead, but then, like, I, I think making it a red is, like, it gets us an XP even if we fail. If we make it a red... It is a red Then right I now. could technically re-roll it. But why, why don't you just re-roll this one when I already have a red matching this one? You know, like it's right there, it's covered. And yeah. it's an XP already. This one isn't as important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need to reroll that red and see what happens before I use my ability. You want me to do it? Sure. Or... Okay. Two. Okay, so now I'll use my ability. I can flip it, I to, can a flip it to a five. So now I'll use my ability. I'm definitely going to spend one to flip this. I can spend, that'll fill in that one. And then that one's filled in. That's two cards, so we can one. play two more. Hold on, I'm just debating if I want to flip another yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, if you, I have a way of manipulating a purple, but can we make a purple? I can make it a one. But then you can only manipulate it to a two, right? Yeah. Oh, hold on. What's this? What's this three? Okay. So then. I also can make any color to a blue to get in on here. So if you were to flip another one. So if I flip this one, yeah, I could make that a blue white, and then I can. If you make it a blue, I can. Wait, what? What did you just? Because oh, I I'm... see the purple. Yeah, but it's the purple, six. the one that we can't. Yeah, this is not enough. This was a five. That was a five. Yeah, take it back. We're not doing that one. I don't think so. Because like, what does it help us with? It would fill in this, but yeah, you're right. It's not going to give us any. Can you convert anything to a red? No. You can convert a red to anything. Yeah, but I can't convert anything to a red. Uh, unless it's, I guess I can convert this purple six to a red. Oh, and then I can flip that one. But then that green still doesn't help, right? But then you can take... But then, yeah, I don't play this card. And I could just convert this to uh, one of blue or white. But then we still don't have it. We still don't have the purple three. Yeah, it's the purple three, I think, is the problem. Yeah. So I think either way, because that but will fill in there. If you flip, you never flipped this one, right? This was just brought in? No, that in. was just in. I'm so confused now. I only flipped... Um, this one, right? Yeah. 
And that was with this re-roll? No, that was with this, but my ability. But I still have one more that I so can So you play. did re-roll and then flipped it, right? Yeah, re-rolled into so a two. So if I don't play this still, mm -hmm. there I is... still flip. There's this that I could play here, which covers this, okay? I could There's flip. There's a five purple. I don't know why I moved that one off. Maybe because we were talking about flipping it? Yeah, Because you it. can flip it. Oh, then you can cover it. I then can you can up it. Up it. Okay, hold on. But then we still have this one. Y yeah, no. No, but you can also flip this one and you I can, no, I can only flip one more because I only have one more that I can flip. Uh, I know. You have three total or no only two? No, only two. Oh, okay, okay. Unless I use this for the red to flip the red. You already did once. But I, instead, I haven't, so oh, let's yeah, say yeah. I haven't used my ability yet. I use this card instead. I've used all my cards, but now I can flip two with this. So I could flip this, the, but I don't know what, if that would matter. If you can make this into a red, it'll at least cover all the XP. No, it won't. You, you won't have enough cards. Yeah, I don't think we don't think we have this one. I can make anyone white, but that's not helpful. I can manipulate this this one, but only by and, one. And what if I brought Oh, but it counts as a card play. I could bring a six in of a random color. But again, it doesn't really... No, I don't think it matters. Because we can't... Yeah, I wouldn't have enough cards. I put that there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But if, uh, if I brought a six of a random color, it could be one of these ones that we could flip and put in. One of these one spaces. Yeah, it could be. Because I have my, I haven't used my ability have yet. A purple three. Yeah, you're right. We still don't have. But if we had a way of I could of changing this to purple, which I don't. No. Yeah, only have a manipulation of one. Okay. But I don't know. We just need to cover the XP stuff. So this one's covered. And yeah, we're just gonna get, we're gonna fail and get one XP out of it. Yeah, those are mine. And those are played? Yep. So I'll play this one just for the XP, I guess. And then we just get one? Yeah, this feels so weird, like... Uh, flip. And I don't have enough to play. Like, I can yeah, flip this one to a two, enough, increase it to a three, and then I could play this card to change to a purple, but then we don't have a one red covered, so... Yeah, I think we're just good. I don't know, there might have been a way out of it, but oh well. Okay, uh, so we get one XP. I got Clear it. all the dice. Well, that's what. And then I read, they tie you to a roasting spit. Oh no! Oh, that sounds bad. Could have been they welcomed you, but we suck. Uh, Alright, F18. It seems the trolls would rather eat you for dinner than listen to any one of your speech. They quickly beat you down and tie you to a roasting spit. Before they can end your life over their fire, they are stopped by the cry of a halfling girl, aroused from her slumber by the sound of battle. Somehow, Esther's attention unnerves the trolls. They release you in an attempt to calm Esther, but she will not be satisfied until they agree to leave her with you. Giving you re resentful looks, the trolls reluctantly leave the cave and run off. Somehow, this young halfling girl has saved your life. Turning your attention to Esther, you find her very ill. She is burning with fever and draws shallow breath. So you rush her back to town. On the way there, in her fevered state, Esther speaks of the trolls fondly. They are my friends, she says. My dearest friends. Record keyword Esther.
Malicious twice with Rob's ability? Oh, yeah. But that still doesn't... That would just... We could flip and cover the one, which that I had. But we didn't have a way of making a three, right? No. No, because even if I flipped it, it's only going to flip to a one. You could have flipped a black five we had to a two. Mm -hmm. I could increase it with a card, but I would have already played this twice and I've hit my card limit. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think not having the bonus play Yeah, there. the bonus play could have probably done it for us, but we didn't rest. Yeah. It's okay, mm. we're learning now. Yep. Yeah. We're realizing we don't have enough cards. That too, yeah. Reveal title card eight. Title card eight. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're starting to suck. Uh, we've ticked off the king, and we've ticked off the trolls. Oh, so there's title card. So I have to move this down. Yep. In the Dragul favor, unfortunately. Oh, so now we're at zero. Yep, that sucks. Ah, dang. There's title card eight. Title card eight. Hated by trolls now, all of a sudden. Oh. Just like that. Oh, my gosh. You discovered two giant trolls in Jolev, but were unable to slay either of them. You have disappointed your king, and your trolls still walk the earth, hoping for opportunity to finish you. Wow. Wow. Uh, move your party marker to location A. Read entry A5. Move our party marker to location A. Oh, we failed the mission, everyone, I think. <laughs> you find the town healer and leave Esther in their care. Grateful that you have returned the Dunegrass girl, the whole town turns out to celebrate. There is wine and song and good cheer and ham. Many, many varieties of the finest hams you've ever had pleasure to taste. The townsfolk celebrate you, and you are begged by all to tell the tale of your heroic victory over the troll that plagued their town. You give them a story. Their bards can sing for generations, full of daring deeds and more than one untruth. Your celebration lasts late into the night. The next morning you wake early and prepare to wrap your adventure in Jolev. With the town's troll problem addressed and Esther Dungras returned to her kin, your mission here is complete, leaving you free to explore the area at your leisure. Your quest is complete. From now on, when the choice indicator gives you the opportunity to move to the, another location, you may instead turn to the end. If your entire party is exhausted, mark the death track and read the corresponding entry in the Tome of Encounters. So, uh, we have the option of look around Jolev, A6, or move to another location. Mm -hmm. I say we look, look around. around. Yes, let's look around. A6. You stroll through Jolev to the town square. Town is much busier today. Everyone has come back out of hiding and returned to their normal work. We can use an item, rest, or move to another location. Rest? If we rest, we're losing XP, but maybe we go find some XP. What do we still think we need to do? We have a shovel we have not oh, yeah. found where that works. Uh, I would like to find that out if possible still. We never got a chance to use it at the cave. Yeah. But we could go back there and maybe use it. Which I would like to try. We know not to use it in the pig farm. Well, did, we, did we try to use it on the island yet? No. Because uh -huh. we didn't uh -huh. have it on there and then we didn't go back there. <laughs> Let's go on a treasure hunt. Okay, so we can... What was it? Look around here? We could here. use an item. I don't know if we used a shovel here yet. No, we we were we started on this with nothing. Let's use an item first and spend some, or I don't know if it's better to do it before or after. Mm. I don't know if it'll bring up the skill check. Let's just rest, I guess. Okay, let's rest. You want to do one or two? Uh, two? Let's do two. Mm. Now again, all that juicy XP could be getting more combat two, dice. Four, six, eight, ten. Or getting um. Getting a getting better, play, better limit. play limit. Yeah, maybe we increase our play limit. Yeah, this would still give us 10 if we spent these. Two, four, six, eight. And hopefully 10. we find more. All right, let's do two. Let's do two. So, two this, this. this. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Only three. No. That's so bad. I got seven. Three, so I have nine out of 17. Six, seven. Yeah, maybe I didn't need to remove that much because I still had quite a buffer. Yeah, maybe that was a waste of XP. All right. Uh, okay, and then fill up your stamina bar. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Please go back. Okay. Uh, we could use an item. Let's dig. We can dig. A74. Okay, so one. You attempt to dig in the cobblestone streets of Jolev. Your work draws the attention of a local halfling man who comes out of his house to lecture you on the history of cobblestones in this region. Apparently, these stones come as a ballast aboard trading ships from southern Urtep. 
and each stone has its own story, which he promises to tell in great detail. You thank him and move along as quickly as you can. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. We could try some of these other things. I don't know. Oh, I didn't take a thing for using the oh, shovel. I did. Okay. So I'm at 10. Again. Um, we can go back to the island now that we have a shovel on the island. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, where was it? Uh, yeah. Let's move to another location. Yeah. Do you want to move right to the island? Sure. E. Okay. Uh, E. Uh, if you have the keyword muck. Yeah, we do. E2. Uh, the palm trees of Long Tooth Island sway gently in the sea breeze. As far as you can tell, it is uninhabited now. Use an item, rest, or move to another location. You want to try this? Use shovel? an item. Yeah, let's okay, take so another one. Up to 11 out of 17. Uh, so we're going to E74? Yes, sorry. <clears throat> After digging for quite some time here and there in the sand, you've covered the island in holes. Just as you were about to give up, your shovel hits wood. Widening your hole, you cover a chest. You uncover a chest, sorry, and work to bring it out of the sand. When you finally have it open, you find it filled with fish heads. Among the heads, there is an empty flask, a book of body poetry, one halfling-sized silk stocking, and some golden coins, all wet and smelling of fish rot. Gain two gold. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. We just have to move your bonus play. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Bonus play, That yeah, was the, one of the reasons there. that we rested. Yes, 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 yes. Um... We did use these items here already. I see we moved to the shadowy cave. Okay, let's move here. Let's go dig in. F. So shadowy cave, if there's no XP, F1. All right. The cave is empty now. Save for the remnants of a large cooking fire. Use an item, rest, or move to another location. Use an item. Use an item. So this is F74. Yeah. Take another one. one. Yeah. Up to 12. <laughs> oh no. F74. F74. You scrape your shovel against the hard stone ground. It makes horrible sound as sparks fly. It seems like the shovel won't do much digging here, but you might be useful in some other way. Use another item, rest, or move to another location. Boo. I don't think the slingshot and the ball is going to do anything. I don't know what we're supposed to do. I guess we go back to the Dungrass farm. Maybe that Maybe is... the shovel is just a, uh, the only thing at the island finding the two gold. I mean, yeah. that's all it is. Yeah, but even... Um... But again, remember, we could have had so many other choices, options, fails, passes... That we could have got us so many other cool things, that maybe other items and stuff, and maybe a treasure map, maybe a new location would have been revealed, you know, and maybe that shovel would have worked somewhere else. I think we go back here at least, talk to them now that they're there. We did we save think them. There. D. D, yeah. Okay, move to D. We did save them. I thought we already went back there. Not after they were back. If there's no XP, go to D1. The farm is noisy with pigs, but empty of halflings. Use an item, rest, oh, maybe or we move did. to. Yeah, we did. We did. So the only other option is we go to the chapel or. Jolev. Hold on. Let me just look. Uh, Jolev. Do we have the keyword Esther? Yeah. Let's go back there, though. Okay, let's go back here. A6. You stroll through Jolev in the town square. Town is much busier today. Everyone... Oh, we already read this. Yeah, everyone's gone to the normal work. Use an item, rest, or move to another location. Have we exhausted everything? What was the ancient... Ancient chapel. Ancient chapel... B. We have Discover. Yeah. Okay, so let's go here. B10. Combine shovel with what? The sling? Yeah, Pawn says, tell us. If you want us to combine it with something, we'll do it. Yeah, tell us what and or, where. Or the, the silver ball, the pinball, or the, so the Elvish ball. Hit it like a baseball? I mean, it's probably got funny things for all those, but who knows. <laughs> uh, we're on, sorry, we're on. It does cost, though, to do all that, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, B. B. I don't remember. What Just B itself. Yeah, and then B10 oh. was for discover. We oh. have right. Yep. B10. The ancient chapel is cold and empty. The open dragolium door sits in a multicolored patch of sunlight that filters through the fra fractured stained glass. The chamber below is now empty. Rest or move to another location. Maybe we just uncovered everything we need to uncover here. Yeah, we're just throwing everything at the wall. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Paul are we just throwing everything at the wall? Okay, we could um, use an item. Do you want to use a shovel here? Oh, this ancient chapel will probably dig up some. Did we already bodies. use the shovel here? No. No. Okay, let's. Uh, well, we can't. It's only rest or move to another oh, location. Oh, we can't even use item here. <laughs> I feel like we've exhausted everything, right? Well, unless we go back to the beach now that we have Esther, because I feel like that's new. The uh, lost, bruised, or bloody is really, um, or I guess C one. No, we already did this too. Okay, so maybe we've exhausted everything. Sure. Let's just end. 
Okay. I don't know. There might be combining items we could have done, but... But they're all they cost. But I don't fine. know. We have, we're, if we're going to end anyway, we probably lose it all. We don't have an option to do that, Kanji. We already talked to the blacksmith. You have money to buy stuff. We, uh, we I, have... Was that this scenario or the first adventure we saw the blacksmith? I don't remember. Joel Lev. Hold on. Joel Lev. I think that's where we... I, and like the problem I think is here, unless I'm misunderstanding. So we go to Joel Lev, we do Esther, it kicks us out. But if we had the keyword market, do we have that? We don't. Yeah, so I don't think we We haven't could... found a market, so we don't know how to get there. Yeah. I don't think so. I think because we found Esther, we can't do anything more in Jolev. Yeah, I think we've just exhausted all of our options here. So it's all good. She is there. Yeah, well, I think I think we, we missed our chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. It's okay. So let's go to the end. Uh, with your mission resolved, you make preparations for the journey home to Sebek, the capital of Nalos. After breakfast of ham and eggs, you prepare to make your way south. Which titles did you earn? So we're going to read the sections. Oh, oh man, there's separate? so many. Uh, uh, well, we only had the two after the first one. Smith's so. Hammer. Um, Smith's Hammer, yes. Okay. Uh, before leaving town, you drop in on the blacksmith's shop, but Rose is gone. A new smith works the forge. Yes, she left last night, he tells you. Took only a small pack with her, headed south. She uh, said she wasn't coming back. You reason that if Rose headed south, perhaps she has business in the capital. Maybe your paths will cross again in Sabic. Okay. Both Duntum's Abandoner and Captor of Gimlix. I don't we think have so. only the one. Duntum's Abandoner? Yeah, but we don't have the... Cap oh, we have Friend of Gimlix, I see. Uh, only Duntum's Abandoner. Yep. Uh, at the outskirts of town, you're passed by the Jailer's Wagon, hauling local convicts to Colback Prison. From within, you hear a familiar voice pleading his innocence and claiming noble blood. <laughs> uh, we tried to help Duntum's you. Return? Uh, nope. Friend of Gimlix? Yes. The gnome you met said you could introduce yourself as his friend to any number of the Starlit Door. You take this as an invitation to join their order, though you are not sure it is one you can accept. Can members of the King's Guard dabble in the ancient mysteries? You can't imagine that Commander Zalek would approve. Even so, you can't help but wonder what else you could learn from exploring ancient sites and uncovering their secrets. We have Trolls Alley? No. Ally? Sorry, Ally? Mm -hmm. No. Troll Slayer? No, no, obviously not. Troll Foe? Hated. Hated by trolls? Okay. Yeah. It is a quiet journey south as you anticipate the king's displeasure. You return Sabek with no trophy to offer. In truth, it was young Esther who saved you. For the trolls would have ended your life if she hadn't stopped them. They may kill you yet if you should meet them again. You arrive that night to an eerily quiet barracks. Only Commander Zalek remains to greet you. And he is not at all impressed by your failure to retrieve a troll's head. <laughs> Rest well tonight, he tells you. Tomorrow we march back to war. Conclusion. Just as you are drifting off to sleep in the quiet barracks, Commander Zalek storms back in and calls you to attention. Change of plans, he says grimly. There has been an outbreak of vampirism, vampirism in Undercity. We need to stop the infection before it gets above ground. Vampirism, or vampirism, however you say that, outbreaks to uh, where an ugly sight Vampir vampirism outbreaks were an ugly sight on the battlefield, you remember. The King's Guard turned on one another and spread the infection while the Dragul cut their way through your ranks. You only imagine in uh, you only imagine what Undercity looks like tonight, with its encampments of outcasts and thieves clawing at each other's necks. But your duty is clear. With no other soldiers present, you must take up your weapons again and follow Zalek to the gates of the Undercity. Little P, thank you for subscribing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Welcome. Each player may now advance your character. Then we clean up the adventure and save your characters. Okay. We have a lot of XP and gold, so hopefully we can get better cards. I'm just going to start shuffling while you... Okay. Uh... Yeah, make the market. Yeah, we had some unfortunate checks on that one. Oh, you could just done a little shuffle, like whatever. Oh yeah, I guess it doesn't matter too much. So our armor we got is a runic crown. Play any number of additional runic armor cards. 
Cost seven. So runic is a whole other set of armor. These do not count against the play limit. So this is reroll or increase or decrease a blue die by one. Okay. Our scroll is clarity, cost three. Add one stamina to one of your attribute rolls from the supply, ignoring the usual limit. That seems good. That seems good. What is it though? I guess it's. I don't know. I don't, yeah. We'll have to see what other options we have, but it's not terrible. I'm just going to count up the gold while you're doing The weapon is a steel net, which costs five. It goes to your, your uh, spent pile. And it for red or white dice, we can yes. bump up or down. Which red bumping up and this, down this is, is like a, is a must uh, Yeah, buy. that's like I want it so bad. Oh, oh. Uh, constitution. I have one, you have two. two. Uh, so this could cost you only six to buy. You can flip a green or red to its opposite side. But I think you already have the flips on reds, which never really help us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a dwarf. Which I'm a dwarf. You're a dwarf? Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm a halfling. Uh, but this can be only four costs. You can convert any color to a, a blue or red. Red is what we're missing. Yeah. And if we could get convert to green would be really good too, I think. But We have 14 gold. So I think we buy the net for sure, which is five. Yeah, but not yet. We gotta, we gotta spend XP oh, yeah, first because that could first. change our You're discounts. Right. So if we, if we do upgrade constitution, uh, you know, you get one more in constitution, you get like a three discount on it. Two, four, but I say we buy a uh, play limit. I say we upgrade play, parties bonus, either bonus play limit or play limit. Let's I see. So parties combat dice limit is current combat dice limit of three plus five XP, so that's eight. Or we increase the party's bonus play limit, which is current play limit, which is two, plus current bonus is three, so it's also eight. Plus five, yeah. It's eight. Or increase the party's mastery. I feel like we do either one of the combat or the party's bonus play limit. I like the bonus plays. So we can play more cards and to really get out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or an extra die in combat to get us out of trouble. But at least the bonus play helps us in combat or skill checks. Yeah. Maybe for this one, we do the bonus play. And then next one, we try to, yeah. if we have enough. I'm down. So I'll spend eight. Two, four, six, eight. And then we you still need to change the number in that box, and then we get two tokens. And then we still have two if we want to increase our health or if we want to save it. It's up to you. I, I don't, I'm not worried about health. I say we save it. Save it. Okay, so we're going to save two. So just because yeah, we, we are, are going to save but we're not save, today. I'll just put even that I, there. Even though I do want to play the next one like right now, but I don't think we can get eat dinner quick enough. I don't want to make everyone wait and, and all that, but... Yeah, we'll play again on Wednesday. We have a stream scheduled Wednesday. It's down in the playlist section if you want to set a reminder so you're back to catch uh, Adventure 3. And I will schedule a stream, I think, for Thursday, another one for Saturday. So we're just going to keep playing all week uh, for this. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I just wrote that in there just so that we remember if it gets bumped or something. And we have no gold to save? Or, well, we, oh, have, we haven't spent it yet. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the only thing we're going to do with our XP. Okay. Um, okay, and then spending... I think we buy the we buy the net for sure for five. I don't know who wants the net. Uh, I mean, I could do the manipulation twice from my pile, but I get we can't keep always doing that without. I know. I mean, I do have a lot of red stuff, so it does kind of go with. Well, you're gonna buy this one because you have the dwarf discount. Yeah, I'm gonna so buy that I'll, one. I'll take this one maybe. Okay. And then I'm gonna spend so four. Five. Yeah, and I'm gonna spend four because of my dwarf discount. Yeah. By proud, and we still have five, which we can save. Or you can spend three on clarity. Do we want to save? I would save. Okay, so we're going to save these five. Big, these big money cards are like what we want to keep grabbing. I think. And then just in case anything gets bumped around, I'm just going to... Yeah, yeah, write it all in. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll save we it up. Are. We're on zero. Because we do need to clean the table off. We are playing uh, tomorrow night and assuming everything oh, yeah. works out with Kyle. We will be back streaming tomorrow starting our campaign playthrough of Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle Earth. Uh, the Haunting of Dale uh, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, or no, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern, it I think it's scheduled for us. So we can, like, set up our oh, characters yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's tomorrow evening, so if you want to tune in for that. So I definitely need to clear all this stuff off the table. I forgot we had to do that, yeah. Or I could put the table toppers on, but I, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's this that This game bad. is pretty easy to put away and clean up, I mm -hmm. think, uh, and reset up. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so now we need to save it up. Which is erase all keywords. Oh, yeah. 
Return all map cards and discovery cards. I'll throw them in order. Okay, let's go in the deck. Uh, oh, and item cards. We'll put these with those. They need to go back in where they gotta go. Okay, store the party. Uh, store each player's hand separately. So we gotta put these in like little baggies with our little character cards would probably be the best way. All these cubes don't need to go back in. Oh yeah, because we can refill that. Correct. Okay. Record the par party's current gold and XP in the spaces. You've done that already. I have. Return all bonus play tokens to the box. Gold and XP tokens. Sorry, I can get that. Okay, those are returned. And then mark the box that contains the favor marker on each of the three tracks. Oh, done. yeah. Done. I've done that. Okay. Yep. Oh, you did already? Yep. Okay. And so then you just have to mark off that we finished that. Back over in that little container. Yep. And, or, or these ones, whichever one. These go here. Those other ones go there. Whatever. Uh, and, then, and then mark the box on the campaign track that corresponds to the adventure we just played. So we okay, don't so accidentally just... play Adventure 2 again. <laughs> okay. So it's, fail it's foolproof. Okay. Uh, then the adventures are linked, yada, 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 side quest, yada, yada. That was cool stuff. That was cool stuff. So far, so good. It definitely is pretty fun. And it feels like, yeah, just like I thought. There's like a little game to it. There's like, it's it's role player, dice placement, thinky, manipulating cards. But I like the way it's co-op. We're working together on it. So it's got that sleeping gods. It's you're playing a solo game, but you spread out the resources amongst players and you're all working together cooperatively, mm -hmm. which feels this feels like we just played Sleeping Gods. I'm getting the exact same vibe, exact same vibe. Like, yeah, it feels like they were like designed this the same person, but just kind of tweaked because it's like the r running through the books, going to different chapters, getting keywords, yeah. pulling cards out, uh, like running around on the map in, in the book, just like the other one. I don't know. It feels like we're playing Sleeping Gods. Like, it, it feels so much like that. It's been a while since I played Sleeping Gods, but I, I just keep getting those same vibes. And I love that. I love the discovery. I love the treasure. Collecting loot. I like the more light nature of it, too. Like, it, it, my head is kind of hurting a little bit, but it's more from being frustrated. We don't have the oh, tools yeah. to help us. Yes. Like, I would gladly pay all the costs if I could have succeeded at some of those tests. But because we're early and we're still, like, young little... Knights in the King's Guard or whatever. We're not super OP powerful, you know. Yet. You know, mage knights or whatever we become. Uh, so we're not able to crush everything yet or have all the options. But I see the game scales with skill tests. And obviously combats are going to get crazy, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it's definitely cool. I like adventuring around these little adventures. I like how they're cut out into like adventure books. So it's not, I mean, the encounter book is huge. But I do like, even though there's no app with this. Which, I mean, an app would clean it up a little bit. Because uh, I do like the app hiding things and you're choosing options and stuff. Yeah. That's the future, right? But Yeah, it also helps with erratas in the future too, right? Because you can just fix definitely. it right in the app. Yeah, yeah. and af after playing like... Uh, 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 what's the one with the... We're open, Lands of Galzir. Oh, yeah. Lands of Galzir, which is eventually coming out, which was on Kickstarter recently... Uh, that one we played and has the web app, but I love the way it hides everything. So yeah, like, until you make your decision, you, you make have a no decision, idea. boom, here's the test you're doing. This does hide it on other pages in most cases, but again, you're still flipping through books. I'm still putting down a book, picking up another book. Again, if you played it properly, one person would have one book, mm -hmm. one person would have the other book. So I can't, I can't knock that. Which we can try in the next one, but I mean, no, it's there's, fine. there's not, it's fine. That ton of, like it's, it's mainly fine. from the adventure book. But yeah, but. I just feel we need more dice mitigation. And then I'll feel like we're making combos happen like crazy, but I'm, there might have been ways. There might out have been of something some... that we were missing there. We did things Maybe. inefficiently, and if we had yeah. done them in, in different orders, yeah, we would have been able to. But then you're sitting here, analysis browses for like 30 minutes, trying yeah. to figure out if you are going to pass or fail. Yeah. So. But I see, I see the replayability. There was a many paths, many title options. You can even see at the end of an adventure book, do you have one of these like 10 different things? Oh, we only have three of them. Well, you could definitely replay and find other things, which is cool. Um, so yeah, so I definitely could see another playthrough of this as being a possibility. Yeah. But again, I don't know later chapters if they're that good or if the finale kind of like, okay, I get it. I don't need to play all the way through. 
And I know you're supposed to play in order. So you definitely have to start over so you get some of the cards from the previous ones, but... Yeah. Yeah, I do like the way it's 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 set in the bite-sized chunks of the adventures, uh, which I like a lot. I like the way you can play just one adventure, put it away, save it up. The sheets all work well. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see as we go. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, because you have to see if it gets boring, right? Or very repetitive. It could. Which it could, it, but it, but it again, might be short enough that if, it's If fine. you're only playing once a week with your play group, yeah. the problem is we're going to like jam through it all in like a week. Yeah. But you just said... Maybe. We'll see. You just said <laughs> that you would have loved to continue playing. So uh, right that now, in yes. a game, if a game can do that... But That's this literally is my oh my first day playing it ever. I know. And so far the intro is good, but there's some campaign games they start off hot and, and then, then you realize it's not really progressing good enough to yeah, keep you hooked. That's true. And the gameplay gets boring and you know it, you kind of get it. And it, and it has to either be the story that carries you or the theme or the play group you're playing with or you know that kind of thing. Something has to keep pulling you going, right? Mhm. Mm like, you know, so like Gloomhaven didn't keep pulling me because of the story at all. It was the card play mechanics and the upgrading of characters and the the enemies, the difficulty curve creased, like going up. Uh, and the challenge, the challenge was there. The combos were, it was just so fun. Uh, but yeah, not everything hits like that, right? Not everything has all those pulling. Some people, the story pulled them, right? Um, so far, I want to see where the story goes. I'm interested. I like this little fantasy story. I like their little, you know, fake... Lord of the Rings, D and D world kind of thing going on here. It's fun. Janet says my husband said this was his most favorite game. Oh, he that's has already talking about what we'll do next time we play. Amazing. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Janet, did that's you awesome. guys play Sleeping Gods together? Because maybe this is the type of game. The only thing is Sleeping Gods, setting up like all those cards. I think I feel like it was more to manage. It was. There was the whole ship, managing the spaces on a ship, managing, like, I had a bunch of characters, you had a bunch of characters. Yeah, because you had to play all four, I managing think. Managing all the cards under all or the all characters and, and all that stuff. There was more game to that one, though. Yeah, that's true. This there was more... much more game to that one. Yeah, that is very true. And that, Sleeping Gods felt like more like you needed to take notes. This game doesn't feel as deep as that because you're, it's chunked into chapters. And Sleeping Gods is, like, literally so open world. You can like just wander like all over the place. And every time you play, you can wander in a completely different direction. But this, it's like, here's one area of the world. You have a handful of locations. Go nuts. And you're only remembering those keywords for that specific yes. spot. They yes. get erased. It would be yeah. like in Sleeping Gods, you have to remember for the whole entire playthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Jan says, no, Sleeping Gods will be next after Christmas. We usually play every day and the game will stay set up. Yes. Nice. That's awesome. Exactly. That's the best way to yeah, do it. I want to do it with way. this. We but, would have if but we But Kyle's ruining it for us and showing up to play Lord of the Rings with us. So <laughs> annoying. So annoying we have to play Lord of the Rings. Ah. But yeah, we could just put a lid on the table and play on top, on the toppers. Uh, I might do that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that was fun. That was very fun. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks again to everyone supporting the channel. Click that like button. Of course, if you like what you watched, again, the next episodes will be down in the video description. There'll be a playlist link. If you're interested in the trays or anything, you're curious, the information should be down below uh, to link you to that. And yeah, make sure you guys subscribe. Find your way back. Hit the uh, alarm bell so you get notified when we go live. And feel free to drop any feedback again. If there was any suggestions, anything down below, anything cool, leave it in the comments below. And any mistakes you point out will help us in future playthroughs, possibly if we're still playing, or help other people learn from our mistakes. Anyways, thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you tomorrow for some Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.